um, who's going to join us right now and say hello. Hey, Richard. Hey, Mary. How are you? Oh, I can't hear you. Can you guys can't hear, hear me? me? I can there hear you, go. you just okay, fine. I got you now. Yes. How hey, are how you? are you? I'm great. It's how are you? you? It's you awesome. This incredible. has been so much fun. It's what an incredible, incredible day so far. Honestly, I cannot believe it's been 18 hours of pure <laughs> education, nonstop education. I it's incredible. I know. And how it's been it, all free been to you? everybody. It's been so How's much been fun. I mean, yeah. I think the thing that's been really great for me is, you know, there's all these different countries that we're used to seeing, but then to see Lebanon and to see, you know, the Middle East, to see Asia, like that's just been so special because I feel like some of those countries are not as strong um, in social media. So for us to be able to see all these social media people growing everywhere, but then to see this wide array of incredible artists in color, cutting style, all of it, you know, what a great we, group we of had artists. Honestly, we have had and still have an incredible lineup of super talented artists, educators from all over the world. There's really been a great sense of community, hasn't there? Everyone has been donating their time by investing yes. in each and every person in the audience. And it's just been nice to be inspired, to be motivated, and just to see all the different people from all around the world doing hair their own way. And that's what it's all about, sharing that variety of creativity, isn't it? Oh, I mean, no question. And I think that the idea is, is that just to get inspired, I mean, at some point we're going to go back to work. And I think that the most important thing that we can do is, you know, is it, we're in a powerless situation at the moment. So the only way that yeah. we can feel power is through knowledge. Right. And so That's right. it's just a great opportunity to inspire and to educate people to just feel that much, you know, um, you know, we're dangerous in a positive way. Like I can get out there and I can just make you know, I'm not going to let the world happen to me. I'm going to go out and happen to the world. You know? Abs absolutely. There's been great uh, initiatives with this cause and obviously raising money for charity. And hopefully uh, we're going to attempt to break the Guinness World of Records. So it's ex really exciting. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? So 24 hour stream, you guys, and that will break the Guinness Book of World Records um, to have the, mo the longest continuous stream. So Richard, um, you are actually going to be the one that's going to be like, you know, New Year's Eve where the ball is going to come down in your court. So are you excited? Right. You're going to carry out the rest of the day. Absolutely. I got six hours ahead of me. I'm super excited. I'm also excited how we're also raising money to help make a difference, to especially hairdressers that have been struggling through this season, because there's a lot of people that have lost their jobs. So one of the initiatives of today is also raising money to help people and help create a vaccine for this crazy pandemic that we're facing. But I just want to say, Mary, right. thank you so much for the for what you've done here thank in you. the last six hours. But also, I also want to say, on behalf of the industry, thank you for believing in the local hairdresser, sometimes the uh -oh. one that's forgotten. You always stand up for the industry and you've helped really create a platform for us as educators to share the experience and the education with everybody. So on behalf of the industry uh -oh. and myself, thank you very much. Give thank it up you. for thank Mary you so much. from and behind the Thank chair. you to everybody and Hankel, the production team. You guys are awesome. And to everybody at Hankel, this was amazing. So thank you guys all so much. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Good luck, Mary. Richard. See you later. Thank you, guys. I'm so excited to be here. I want to go straight into the next artist. It's uh, her name is Josie Villay. She's from Canada. She has over 300,000 Instagram followers. She's Schwarzkopf Professionals Digital Artistic Team Member. Please welcome Josie Van. Dealing with clients who are sitting between a level two and a level five. Sometimes I don't get enough drive in the pigments to um, neutralize what I'm trying to do. Because remember with Demi, um, they're made up of both pre and unoxidized pigments, which is why um, they need lower developers. So essentially, um, they just kind of sit on the surface of the hair and they don't penetrate deep enough into the, into the hair. Does that make sense? So when you're doing um, permanent, when you're toning with permanent, you need higher developers because permanent color has unoxidized pigments. So it needs developer to push oxygen inside that, um, and it needs to unoxidize pigments so that they can develop and they can grow and expand into a balloon. 
So the pigments start off like small little little dots and when you put developer inside it pushes its way through and then it kind of lightens it. So I feel like it's more sometimes permanent is more pigmented than a demi color. Does that make sense guys? I know I'm like geeking out on you really hard right now um, but uh, so that's kind of like the science behind it. So I'm going to start off with doing my 7-4 in the back here, place my mannequin and um, let's see. so I'm just using Igora Royale from Short Scott Professionals and I'm using it with 10 volume. So I'm doing 10 volume because I want to do, a, I want to slightly deposit and I don't want to, I maybe might give you like that slight lift. So remember when you're using the higher developer that you're using with permanent colors, the larger the pigment gets. So that's more light that passes through that makes the hair lighter. I hope that makes sense. So let's say if I wanted it a little bit deeper, I could go as low as a six volume or a three volume. And um, I might not have time to show you guys the finished result on this live, but I promise I will post it up on my Instagram if you guys want to um, take a look after. Oh, and look at that, I just made a boo-boo. I just put nine four instead of seven four. So I'm happy I caught myself there. So everyone likes a good color mixing. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm using seven four from Igora Royale, their permanent line with 10 volume I want to slight I want to um, deposit it but I don't want to lift it causing it to oxidize and be too light so what would you guys say her hair lifted to like an eight a nine somewhere around there right so she's not quite sitting at um, a level nine ten which I feel that that is a lot of our clients when they come into our salon and we're toning them and they want to go blonde. I often feel that sometimes we are toning with the wrong levels, which is why we aren't getting the, uh, the deposit that we need. And remember when it comes to color theory, which we'll be talking about in a bit, you want to use colors um, that really cancel out the pigments or else you're not going to get good coverage and then you might not get the result that you want. So for example, if your client had was only a level nine and you use, let's say nine and a half dash one, or let's say she was a level eight and she, you use nine and a half dash one, which will, I'll show you right away. You're not gonna get enough deposit from the tone directions that you need to cancel out that brass. So I just want to make sure I get that in really good. So reasons why people may be sometimes using permanent colors instead of a demi color is um, because they want longer lasting colors maybe. Maybe it's someone with a solid color. Um, it's someone who's maybe 50 to 100% gray. Um, or they want, you know, when you're, you're sometimes your clients want three levels of lift on their base and you don't need lightener to do that. Okay, so that is seven dash four and you can see on her right side there, we did seven dash four with a demi and using um, Igora Vibrance. Oh, that light, Let's see if I can get out of the light. Move this back a little bit. There you go, you guys can see a little bit, at least the demi side. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and we're gonna do her nine dash four. Now this mannequin's base is actually perfect for a nine dash four because what is a nine dash four? Nine dash four is a level nine and then it is a beige. So dash four is a beige and it's made up of cool and warm tones. So if your client is really um, warm, let's say she's really yellow or she's really orange, it's going to um, harmonize with that orange and make it more of, an, of a beige. 
but or beige but on the warm side sorry so hold on i'm gonna put this color away before i accidentally use the wrong one again so 9-4 and then you can see on this side how well that warm from the beige is complementing the four but the cool is neutralizing it just enough to give you that nice soft beige color All right so i can't wait to show you guys what this looks like after and how there is just um a slight difference when you tone when you're when the hair is like sitting at a level eight or nine and you're toning with a permanent so i like to tone with permanents when i am dealing with clients that i'm lifting from a level two to four and they want to be like that platinum perf like that platinum blonde sometimes i find that permanent gives it a little, makes it just a little bit more brighter. Um, if your client doesn't quite hit a level 10, then a, uh, then a demi would. All right, so does anyone have any questions so far? Because remember, at the last five minutes of the slide, we will be doing a question and answer. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to get them all in now and then we will answer it later for you is dash four green no dash four is a uh, beige so it's made up of warm and cool tones so depending on what your hair has lifted to um let's say it goes warm your beige might shift slightly more to the warm side um or if it's like let's say really light um and it's over depositing the the ash or the coolness it could appear a little bit more cooler but a four is a beige in this line and you can almost see on the right side there the this one is actually 8-11 so it's a little bit more on the silver side from the sandre but you can see that the beiges are so beautiful um, there's no green or blue undertones to them they are true to, um, they're really true to tone. So right now I'm doing 9-4. Okay. 9-4 is such a pretty color for summertime, especially for um, clients that kind of just want to look a little bit more on the natural side and they don't want to be too bleached blonde. Is nine and a half dash four different from nine dash four? Yes, it is. Um, I would say it is because um, nine, nine and a half level series are, are meant to be from level nine and um, and up, and up right so anything above a nine is almost considered like a ten so that's for like really 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 light um, when you lift your hair really light and then nine I would say almost kind of falls in between a high eight and a low nine so they are a little bit different okay I have so much working space here I'm trying to get into the camera um, without trying to get that light shining in our faces okay so you can kind of see it oxidizing right now this is the 7-4 and you can see because we're using a 10 volume and with our demi we use the 6 gel and remember with demis they kind of just sit on the surface they don't really go into that hair shaft and so with the permanent because we're using 10 volume which is a couple um, percentages higher in developer it's depositing but it, it's kind of like it's kind of it's reflecting light at the same time i don't know if that that kind of explains it and then this is the 9-4 so you can see that there is they're the same tone families but there's a slight difference when it comes to the demi and the permanent so i like to tone with permanent when i'm dealing with someone who's like um, our mannequin betty here and she's not quite a level high nine or a 10. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and we're gonna do 8-11, which is 
one of my favorite toners. I love to use this on clients with level two to level four and we're doing like a color correction and she only lifts to a level eight or a low level nine. So the Facebook page that you can go to to see everybody's lives is Shortscall Professional USA. So you can see everybody from the last like 12 hours that have gone live. And again, we're using the 811 to kind of match the other side that we did there. And the reason why I love to use level 8 um, dash 11, that's the double sandre there, is because I'm getting double sandre. So sandre in this line is made up of purple and blue tones. So it's not quite violet, like a dash 99, which is a little bit stronger. So that's why it doesn't give me that purple underlining pigment when I rinse her out. But more so on like the cool silver side. If I wanted a little bit more purple, I could add level 8 dash 19, which is your Sandre Violet. If you wanted a little bit more purple to show. Okay, and with the 811, we are using um, 10 volume, and we're using 10 volume because it's going to deposit, but it's not as low as the sixth um, developer on, the, on our right side there that we did with Demi. So it's going to give us, reflect us some light and just make it look a little bit brighter. almost done here and I'm just obsessed with the way that the permanent colors are oxidizing the 7-4 and 9-4 on the permanent side. So if you just joined in, what I, might, what I am doing right now is I'm demonstrating the difference between demi and permanent colors and when I prefer to use them or um, when you can use one or the other over each other. So when you're doing demis, um, it's more for glossing, it's more for shine. Remember that demi permanents are, are um, made up of pre and unoxidized pigments so that when you use lower developers, they kind of just sit on the surface. They don't really drive in and penetrate into the hair. So um, right now I'm using I'm sorry, right now I'm doing the permanent side. This is the demi side and you can see the nice sheer shine. And then on this side I'm doing permanent. And right now I'm about to do nine and a half dash one. And you can see here, because demis, I just wanna quickly show you. Because here when you're doing demis, see how the nine and a half dash one isn't quite white? That's because Betty isn't quite a level nine. She's, or sorry, a level 10. She's not past that level nine and a half yet. So when I'm using um, a nine and a half series to tone her, she's not gonna be bright white. It's just gonna be enough to neutralize those warm and yellow gold tones. But this is my trick when I'm toning um, people who are kind of just sitting at the level nine, eight. I like to tone with permanent because the, because permanent colors are unoxidized. So the second that they have developer with them, what they do is it pushes into the cuticle and it essentially drives it and expands it and it, it makes it expand into balloon and it grows. And that's why I think it gets a little bit brighter because it's more pigmented because the molecules are just a little bit smaller. Okay, and so nine and a half dash one is made up of um, level nine and a half. So that's anything that is a really bright banana yellow or um, a level 10. So I'm just going to do this quick because we're going to move on into our toning theory right away. I just want to make sure we have enough time. And if you guys want to see the results after, you can head over to my Instagram and I will post everything there. Okay. So as I'm like applying it, as I'm applying it, you can already see that because the pigment, it's more permanent colors, more pigmented, 
it's already canceling out that warmth really good. Okay, so we're just gonna let her sit for a little bit, and again, I will show the results on my lot or on my Instagram after. So I just want to quickly show you here how the back is oxidizing. So you can see that it is true to tone from the demi, but it does look slightly just a little bit lighter because it's really getting to that hair shaft and it's not just kind of sitting on. No, with the permanent side, I did 10 volume. And I'm using Schwarzkopf Professionals. Agora Royal. Okay, so we're gonna put our mannequin to the side here. And we're gonna move on a little bit to, sorry, that sun is kind of just in my way. We're gonna move a little bit on to color theory, which is my favorite part. Whoops, I'm making a mess here. Okay, so remember, if you guys have any questions, you can ask them. I'm gonna do a question and um, Q&A at, at the end of the live, at the last five minutes. Okay, so let's just do a little bit of basic color theory right now. I'm gonna move this guy a little bit closer. I'm gonna process her for the full 20 minutes. So as soon as I'm done this live, I will probably be rinsing her out. So now remember our levels here, we, we are level, um, you know, some levels are from one to two, or sorry, from one to four, I would say is our darker colors. And then we have our mid colors, five to seven, and then we have our eight, level eights to tens. So level twos is going to be level one. We obviously know level one is black, right? Maybe I'll bring this a little bit closer so you guys can see. Oops, sorry. So we all know that level one is black. Two in short spots doesn't exist because the difference between two to three is just a little bit too close. So then we have, um, oh wait, those are underlying pigments. Sorry, I just saw that. Um, so we have our two, three, okay? And then this is gonna be our four. So four is gonna be just slightly, a little bit lighter than your two and ones, okay? So then you're gonna have your, um, your level fives to seven, which is gonna be five. So as you guys get more to the middle of the numbers, it's just gonna be, maybe I can turn this on, does that help a little bit? It's just going to be a little, it gets a little bit warmer as you go into the middle of the color spectrum. So you have your five, and then you have your six, which is a little bit warmer than your five. You guys can see that. And then um, you're gonna have your seven, which is going to be made up of your six and eight. So as you can see, it kind of gradually gets lighter. Let me see if I can somehow make you guys can see the color a little bit more. And then your eight is more of a beige, you guys can see that. This is your nine. Oh, I guess I should change my paintbrush. Your nine and then and then of course your level 10. Okay, so that's your levels. Just ignore my underlying pigments right there. Okay, so we know that anything from level one to four is going to contain a lot of red, okay, and orange tones. So, you guys can see that, right? So anywhere from level one to four, because it's darker, it's gonna contain more of those warm tones. 
And then we have our mid-tones, um, which is gonna be your levels five to seven. So that's gonna be, um, it's gonna have your red. It's gonna have some red in it. Uh, it's gonna have some orange, some orange and red. And then it's gonna have yellow. Okay, so as you get higher into the levels, your red, your warm tones drop, okay? And then as we get into even higher levels, hold on, from anywhere from eight to 10, you're gonna lose those, you're gonna lose more warm pigments and you're gonna gain more um, like, like more orange. You're gonna fall more between the orange and the yellow stage and you're gonna drop the red. So you're gonna have more orange and yellow tones, right? Okay, so again, when we're dealing with our levels, you have your level ones to fours, which is gonna be pretty dark. And then you're gonna have more warm pigments. As you move up into the scale, you'll have level fives to seven but you'll have, you're gonna introduce another tone in there, which is like your orangey tones, but you're still gonna have a lot of red right there. And then as you get higher between your eight, your level eights to your tens, you're gonna drop the red because it's gonna, there's less red as you get higher, but you're gonna gain some orange and yellow tones. All right, so now we're gonna move on to tone direction. Let's see here. It's hard to kind of get everything in the screen. Okay, all right, so now your tone directions. So this is crucial to know when you're toning, um, what your tone direction, what you want it to be. It can either be on the cool side or the warm side. So usually when you're dealing with something that is between one to four, you're dealing with a lot of reds and a lot of oranges. So um, you're going to use in, um, and Schwartz got the tone directions for cool tones are Sandre. Let's see if I can wipe this off. Sandre, which is going to be made up of purple and blues. And then you're gonna have your ash, which is mainly blue. And then you're gonna have your um, dash three, which is going to be a matte green. So that is great for when you're dealing with um, levels between one to four that have a lot of warmth. So remember, if you want to cancel out colors, you want to use cool tones to cancel it out. And if you want to enhance that level or harmonize you with that tone, with, with the level, you're going to use warm colors. So then you're going to use colors like, hold on, I'm going to just change my paintbrush here. So then that's when you're going to use colors like your beiges. So this is our beige, okay? So then if you want to kind of just neutralize it, you can use a dash zero, or you can use a beige. Or, um, you know, this is a really pretty color when you're dealing with your, your uh, level fives to seven because it's already in your chocolate family. If you use a dash six, which has a little bit of red, it's a warm chocolate, which is right here. See how these colors will kind of harmonize nicely and um, add to your warmth so you get these nice warm colors. But again, if you want to cancel out any of the warmth, your tone direction is going to be on your cool side. And then again, if you want it, now we're moving on to our level eight and tens, which have a lot of orange and yellow underlining pigments. I just want to put a little bit more yellow here. Okay, that was that did not work. Just ignore that. <laughs> um, okay, so if you're dealing with level eight and tens, um, these are our additive colors in the line. So you have your orange. Wait, oh, I gotta change my paintbrush. Sorry. Okay, so you're gonna have your orange. That does not look like orange. Sorry. Here, how do we make orange? We add just a little bit more yellow. Okay, so there you go. So there's your yellow. 
or sorry, there's your orange, and then you have your red, and then your violet, which is something you can use also to cool down your um, any levels between one to four that are that is a little bit more warm have more red and orange that you want to control, you can definitely use the 0-9 Violet if the Sandre isn't, um, isn't, uh, the Sandre isn't strong enough for you. So that's why I kind of recommend using permanent colors when I am toning with, uh, when I'm dealing with tones that are kind of in between the seven and eight, I like to use my permanents. So, um, Maybe I'll just kind of go through this again. So you have your levels. So your levels one to four are gonna be really dark, okay? And they're gonna be made up of a lot of red and orange tones. So if you want to harmonize with those tones, you can use your additives. You can use your oranges, your reds, um, or your beiges to kind of harmonize and keep the warmth or your chocolates here. But if you wanna control these colors, those tones right there, you're going to have a cooler tone direction and you're gonna be using your Sandre, your Blue Ash, and your Matte Green. Okay, so then when we're doing clients who are level five and seven, they're gonna be made up of, again, more warm tones, but instead you're gonna see a little bit more, um, you're gonna have another color added, which is orange that you don't see in the um, in the levels one to four because it's, I mean, it exists, but there's just less of it. And in the middle tones, you're gonna have a little bit more of those colors. And then again, if you want to harmonize and make her warm or keep your client warm, you're gonna use your coppers, reds, chocolate, chocolate reds, or your beiges to harmonize. And if you want a cooler tone direction, you go to your Sandre, your Ash, and your Matte. And then with our level eight to 10 clients that want to be really platinum, I would stick with your cool tone directions. And then with clients that um, you want to keep warmer, I would suggest going with your dash four beige. Definitely if you wanna keep her a little warmer or add a little bit of copper into that. So, um, oh, I do have another chart here. And it's really important to know, just give me one second. Okay, it definitely helps having a cameraman. A one-man show is really hard here. Okay. So I made up this chart here. Let me just take this down. And I'll... You know, I can take a picture of this and kind of screenshot it to you guys later if you guys want to see that. Okay, but I made I made the um a permanent or like just a color tube in general so that you guys can kind of know because now that you know your pigments and um the levels and your pigments and your tone directions of what you want, um this is a this is what a basic color tube looks like. So let's say for example, this is a 8-19, which is a level eight. Uh, your first number is going to be your level. And then the number after the dash is your primary color. And your primary color is, after the dash, is going to represent your tone direction. So the dash after, sorry, the number after the dash is going to hold the most um, pigments. So this is what's going to essentially tone your clients, like uh, cancel out any of the brass, or it's going to neutralize, or it's going to add warmth. And then your last um, number here is your secondary color, which is um, the second number after the dash. And although it is here, it, it is not in charge. It is meant to kind of enhance or complement the first number here. So it'll reflect some light, but it doesn't. It's not in charge of that color of the first one so again if this was your color so you got to remember let's say your client you remember that our mannequin she was sitting at a level eight nine so um 
I decided to go with the level 8 because I'm going to get the most deposit, the most coverage. I'm not going to quite get that from a level 9. And then I did my Sandre, which is a um, that light, um, the lighter violet that you saw there. It's made up of purple and blue hues. And then my Dash 9, which is going to be stronger. It's going to kind of complement this one here. I give it a little bit of a boost, but it's not in charge. So you're not going to see a lot of the purple undertone. I hope that kind of makes sense. We had a lot of color theory to go through today. I could totally geek out for like even way longer. But I just want to show you guys quickly how she's doing. We got about two minutes or so before our question and answer. So I hope you guys have been saving them um, because I'm so excited about today actually. I do love to tone with permanent colors on clients that don't quite hit a level, um, pass a level nine and a half series. So on, um, so hard to get good lighting during golden hour. It's only good for selfies, that's about it. So remember, demis are great for glossing. Um, they kind of just sit on the surface because you're using a lower developer, so they don't go in a lot deeper. They kind of just sit on the surface and you need to be at the right level in order to tone with that level. Does, excuse me, does that make sense? A little bit, and it does give it great shine. However, when you're using permanent on the permanent side here, you can see how that the colors are kind of matching up with the demi, but they're just slightly a tad lighter because um, the, the pigments need a developer to push through so that they can expand in the hair. And we're using 10 volume so that it kind of just gives it a little bit more lightness. Good morning, Australia. That's amazing that you guys have been tuning in and watching all day long. Let me just put that to the side. I am going to add someone to our live here, Richard. Let's do this right. This is my first time adding someone. So hopefully um, I did it right and he's in. Hey, Josie, how are you? I am good. How are you? I am great. Yes, you're right. There's people watching you from all over the globe. We have been going on for 18 hours. That's How insane. That's awesome. It's crazy. It's really crazy. You know, the whole concept is hairdressers united and uniting and really sharing the education. What you've just shared with, shared with us has been incredible. Do you often... Um, uh, combine colors on paper to see how the colors turn out oh yeah I do like usually it's like visually all in my head but I do let's say like one day I want to I have all my paint swatches and paint colors here I love that. and these are pretty true to tone too so that I kind of like to play around with that but I feel like once you understand your you know your what do I have up here once you understand your primary colors, yeah, you can see kind of up there. Yeah, then you know what colors harmonize well together, what creates warmer tones, what enhances more warmer tones, what neutralizes, and then you know you kind of think like back to photography or makeup. If you want things to look darker or have depth, you're going to add more cooler tones. Absolutely, so that's going to de our yeah like desaturate the hair and kind of give it more of that moody look absolutely i have another question for you i can see with your work and on your social media you're obviously incredible and you, you do some incredible beautiful colors how do you um share your new ideas with your clients what's the best form of consulting with your clients in terms of if you want to do a, a sneaky change oh what i like to do is kind of say you know I'm kind of tired, like we do a lot of bleach and tones where I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and they love cool tones. I'm like, let's try and steer away from that. Let's just move on to something a little bit more trendy. Let's yeah. maybe go to the, the nude or the warmer sides and um, I'll show them pictures, yeah. mostly celebrities. They, yes. you know, everybody wants to be a celebrity. Absolutely. So and, as soon as, and as, soon I think as we see that, I think it's so important to show pictures because we can sometimes get so technical and they're like, what? But you show them a picture and they'll know it right away. Last question for you. Actually, they already opened yesterday. Salon's already Are you opening? Yes, we're opening tomorrow. So the last 
week has kind of been crazy for me. We've been prepping. Um, you know, I just got off with a Zoom meeting with my team this afternoon. Just finished my PowerPoint before I got onto the Zoom. Yesterday, we had to go in like zoned out and um, um, section off areas and then create like a sanitizing station. And it's just crazy. It's so make sure you guys are prepared now. So that when you're governor or prime minister or whatever announces the reopening, you're ready to go and you're not panicking like I was slightly. <laughs> of course, it's going to be nerve wracking. It's going to be a change. Please share with us any tips because you're one of the few that's opening up much sooner than the rest of the USA. So any tips that you can share with everybody, it will be much, much appreciated. Absolutely. I'm going to share. Do you want me to share now? I have like so much We have. <laughs> we have 15 seconds. Give us a 15 second spill. Safety protocol, make sure you have hand sanitizer, proper mask, uh, make sure you have briefings with your team so that they know the safety protocol so that when inspectors come, they have the right answers. Zone off your areas, make sure you're in contact with your clients and also make sure you have a game plan on how you're um, structuring pre-bookings and then future bookings beyond that. But don't go too far just in case we go into another shutdown. That is brilliant. Thank you, oh, Josie, so much for all you, of that guys. information. You're like a walking Google. We love you. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for sharing from your heart. We all appreciate it. And I'm sure a lot of people learn a lot from your session today. Thank you, Richard. And make sure you guys donate. Click the link below. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> See you You're later. Welcome. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, that was amazing by Josie. If you're just tuning in, Welcome to Hairdressers United Global Digital Hair Festival. Thank you for tuning in to our Henkel live stream, Hairdressers United Digital Hair Festival. My name is Richard Manor. I'm going to be your host over the next six hours of this incredible 24 hour online education. Today, there are three objectives of why we're doing today. Number one, we want to put on this incredible education for you at home so that you may be inspired, motivated, and educated during this quarantine season. The second reason is we want to raise money to help with the pandemic and to find a great vaccine for that. But in addition to that, we're also raising money here in the US uh, with Professional Beauty Association because they're going to be giving 100% back of their proceeds for those who are in the hair industry, um, who are in the hair industry and who's going to be uh, helping those who have been, uh, I guess, struggling through this season. Next up, we have someone very, very exciting. Uh, I've worked with her before. She's very, very humble. Her name is Low Wheeler. She's from the USA. She has over 100,000 Instagram followers. She's Kenra Pro Artistic Ambassador. She's a color specialist. And today, she will be sharing her signature three-dimensional balayage technique. Let's pass it over to Low Wheeler. It's now time to get into our 3D blonding class. This is something that I've worked really hard in perfecting and I can't wait to demystify balayage for you and help you to understand maybe some hiccups that you've seen in your own balayage work over the last you know, year, two years, however long that you've been behind the chair balayaging. So the big thing that I love seeing in a balayage or any color, blonde, brunette, whatever the case may be, is a ton of dimension, meaning a variegation of highs and lows. And if you're anything like me and all the hairstylists that I've worked with in the past, um, you can start to really get really locked into that pattern that you're creating and your results may fall short from what you're expecting. I see this a lot in my workshops and I would like to go through each of these kind of five things that end up happening with balayage and work with you through that so that when you set intention and go back into the salon and create that balayage, we get a lot of contrast and a lot of dimension. One of the first things that I see a lot with balayage is this beautiful handwork and then the results are very ombre. If this is you and you want to switch it up and get a little bit more multifaceted result than an ombre, something to consider is switching up your saturation when you get into your placement. 
Ombres happen when there's not a lot of saturation and then as you work down the hair, full saturation. So that gets you that effect. The next thing that happens when you're balayaging your heart away behind the chair is that you put all this fancy handwork in, into your application and then when you rinse out your formulation, it looks all like, almost like there's not enough to mention and it's one solid color almost. So when that happens, be very careful to not be so heavy handed and saturate from root to end. That's going to translate into one kind of like solid medium tone and to your client, they might see that as maybe being brassy or orangey-ish. So definitely something to think about. Another case scenario, we just said it, brass. If you keep on running into brassiness with your balayage, that could mean that there's a couple different variations that you might want to look at when you're moving forward. One is you might be not saturating the hair enough and not letting it lift enough. This has everything to do with your products, the temperature of the room, and then also the volume that you're using. With me today, I'm going to be using my high lifting lightener plus 30 volume. My room is nice and warm, so I'm expecting a lot of lift. If you're working in a very cold environment at work, you're going to need to lift your volume up, maybe have a little space heater next to you, or perhaps use saran wrap or foil to enclose your balayage. This will help you get brass out of the way. And then one of the last things I wanna go into before we jump into application is the scenarios where you are so delicate and light-handed with your application and it looks so impe impeccable, but when you go to rinse it out, your work totally disappears. This is common too. I would just recommend that you get a little bit more confident in your placement, heavier handed, and do higher saturation. You're just not saturating enough. So these are some faux pas that I really wanted to go into as we begin our class because I would love to just integrate some of these things as I show you the video visuals with my beautiful doll head here. Um, and then walk you through why I'm doing it as I'm doing it, given everything I just said. Okay, so let's get started. One thing I wanna go into briefly is my setup. I have my lightener with me. I always keep my lightener with me on my station. That way I can work in really fresh batches. So today I'm gonna to be working with 30 volume Simply Blonde products by Kenra. The blue powder lightener that I'm using is one of my favorites because it has the ability to lift up to eight levels and it's really easy to control and the blue undertone in it helps to cancel out brassiness. So it's one of my favorites. I cannot get enough of it. I am so obsessed. Um, give it a try if you love everything that you've learned in this class. So I keep my developer with me because I love using fresh ingredients. So I, this is my secret that I'm sharing with you. I love keeping stacked bowls with fresh little powder in each bowl. That way I don't mix too much product, cause waste, and I'm not working on the same bit of lightener as I move through the hair. Because we know when we're on the last section of the hair and our lightener has swollen over the bowl that we're just not gonna get the results that we want. And then in the toning bowl, what happens is we have some beautiful blonde ribbons and then as we trail off into this area, it kind of gets orangier and then the toning color correction has comes into play or we just darken our balayage and that's exactly what we don't wanna do. So this is one of my best tips for you is to keep uh, stacked bowls ready to go. You're gonna want a brush for mixing your, pro your product and you're gonna want a brush for application. I never leave my application brush in my bowls because I would love to think that this brush can stay as clean as possible because 
accidents happen when you have a messy brush. So I'm gonna do my best today to keep really nice and clean and just move through this really easily so you can understand the whole idea around the placement. So that moves us right into our sectioning. Um, I'm gonna bring my doll head over and I'm gonna do my very, very best to move her in angles so where you can see. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit limited, but just bear with me and I'll do my best. Um, angles are everything with balayage and so is um, body positioning. So I might have to default to something that might be forced for me just so that you can see it. Um, I'll be more than happy to walk you through that and talk as we go through this. So I'm going to now go into our sectioning. So as you can see, first up I wanna say I have dozens of blonding patterns when it comes to balayage, but I always stick to the same um, sectioning more or less. This helps me to stay super organized and it helps me to get right to work when I'm done with my consultation. I already know what I'm gonna be doing and it's easier for me to remember one sectioning so I can remember all my patterns. So here is a little overview. I love doing a reef-like section here because I love working off the hairline underneath and around the face first. That way, when I do that first, that section is gonna have a lot of time to process and it's gonna lift lighter, which is gonna give you that beautiful money piece and all the good, beautiful dimension. Then I like to separate this section into a triangle and that's going to help me to really have priority over my partings. Whether she's a flipper or she stays stationary in her parting, I have two really neat pie sections to help me work at diagonals. And when I do that, it's going to help me to get into a really soft blend. And in the back, I have a couple triangular sections, and I'll go further into that once we just get the ball rolling. Are you ready to start blonding with me? I know, I'm getting so excited and so into this. So I'm gonna start with my lightener. I'm mixing 30 volume. It's my favorite volume working with open air. Um, I love using my really powerful lightener for balayaging levels six and darker, which is what we're working on today. And anything that's above the level six um, would be a good candidate for clay lightener. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I love clay lightener and um, I could spend a lot of time talking you through the benefits of it and also the drawbacks of it, but that's in a different class. So we're gonna stay focused on using our high level lightener today. And I'm just gonna mix this to like a really nice consistency. It's a little bit warm in here, but I'm gonna mix it almost a little bit with that in mind. So I'm gonna try to thicken this up slightly so I don't get bleed marks anywhere. The thicker your lightener is, the less chance you have of those kind of mistakes. I've definitely learned that the hard way. When you're foiling, that's when you want really nice loose lightener. When you're painting, you want it to be a little bit thicker so you can have more control. I see some of my Lux students on here. I love seeing you. This is so fun welcoming you into my home, sharing this time together. Okay, so this is more or less the consistency that I love working with. You can see it's not dripping off of my brush. This is gonna give me the most control. Let's get my gloves on. And also part of my setup is a wet towel to keep my hands clean because if your gloves are clean and your brush is clean, 
you're gonna have a better experience with keeping your application clean. Okay, so with this dimensional look that I'm creating, I'm gonna walk you through the 3D element conceptually. We want a lot of dimension here, so I'm gonna have a heavier placement around this whole um, front area, and then underneath the back, we'll play with positioning. And moving from that, we'll get into some different patterns to create that multiple dimension. So let's just focus on the hairline first. I'm gonna try my best to get my beautiful little friend in the right position for you. Okay. She's had a little bit too many cocktails, so I have to keep her propped up right. So when I am working on the hairline, all of my diehard hair besties who know and have seen my classes know that I love working in the front of the face first, specifically over the ear. Because with balayage, when you lay down a section, you um, are committed to leaving that section in place. So, if I were to start here, I'd have to move it at some point or the other. Okay, so I'm standing on the right side of my client. I have my application brush. It's nice and clean. Now I am going to start working in just off of the root. And I'm just like feathering in a pretty bold section and I'm a little bit lighter handed moving towards that root. And as I'm working towards the side, I'm gonna go in and start to fill in the placement. See, I would love to see something here. So before I lose the tension in this section, I'm gonna go ahead and add it in here. The thing I love so much about balayage is that no two balayage has to be the same. I have had so much fun creating, testing, and trying all of my patterns and they truly all get a really organic result. But since I'm such a beachy girl lover, they all have a little bit of that taste of like beachy, beach wash dimension. So now that I love this, I'm not fully saturating through here. I'm just kind of glazing it over because I don't want that ombre look. I want a lot of dimension from root to end and I want a soft transition. So I'm going to let that fall just behind her. And I'm going to start to go on the opposite side so I can get mirror image lift. So bear with me, I'm gonna to try to move this as gracefully as possible. Here we go. This is so fun. I can't believe this is my first time doing this here with you. So now I'm working on this side of the hairline. And again, I'm gonna stand behind her shoulder here. Clean up my sectioning. Here we go. Tension is such a big part of your hand painting. So for me to pull her hair, the amount that I'm used to, I don't wanna pull her off the stand. So I'm gonna go in just off of the hairline and just feather up into it. My saturation is... Is it possible to tilt it down because it's hard for people to see in the comments? Okay, oh, I see that. I'm 
gonna keep going. I'm starting to build this color. And I want symmetry, so I'm gonna come underneath this point. Make sure my tension is really good. to be a really good time to start working towards these temples and then the front of the forehead. I love standing just behind my client because if I'm standing in front, naturally I'd be pulling the hair in front of the face and then that's when you get lightener on the eyebrows, lightener on the cheek, all of those things that happen. It's just so normal, but try to watch your body positioning so that you can have the most control. So with this section, I wanna be very visual. So just because I did two points in the lower section, doesn't mean I'm strictly obligated to do that here. I wanna make sure that it has more of an aesthetic look that I'm going for than counting the strokes of color that I've created. This is so pretty because it just gives it more of an organic look, which is what most balayage clients love anyway. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Just right at that temple line, I'm going to create like a sister or like a cousin, not a twin sister to the section I just created. Also, if you have your sections pinned up and the clip gets in your way, I'm just gonna just move through it and move my clip. You don't want to hinder the natural fall of the hair. I'm gonna come in and softly Keep working. Again, if you are working in a really cool environment and you have a dark haired client, you can definitely use uh, saran wrap or foil to have some extra heat conduction. Some of the chairs in my salon um, are right under the air conditioning and it's kind of like, it's like a godsend when it's too hot, but then the rest of the year when they want their balayages to process, it's kind of like something they have to keep in mind. Whereas that my chair is right by a window, so it gets really hot, which is nice for processing, right? Now I'm gonna hold the hair straight up. And she's a little high, than, higher than she would be in the salon. She, her head would be more so right here, but for the sake of this Instagram Live, I'm working a little higher than I usually would. That's okay, because I'm really comfortable with this technique, so I'm not too thrown off here. So I'm just creating that beautiful, bold money piece. And gliding through the ends without oversaturating. And as I let this section drop down, I can see that it would look really amazing to have another peak here. So before I fully drop my section, I'm gonna add a soft ribbon.
back when I was earlier in my career, when balayage was just starting to get popular, I was so interested with just trying it, but I wasn't, I had, there was no education at this time. It was just something people started doing. And I literally started balayaging in the back underneath side of my client's head. And I just said, hey, I just want to try something new. Um, yeah, it's just kind of, I'm gonna try it. And it would be underneath and then I would measure my results and then try again and measure my results. And then I started to get my flow of what I thought looked um, good. Okay, now I'm over in this side of the section. And I'm gonna create just a nice pattern that goes really seamlessly with the one I just created. So normally, again, I would just be slightly behind and over my client, but for the sake of this tutorial, I am over directing it and just painting up towards my fingers before I drop my entire section I'm gonna come in at like a 3d angle and drop another piece in and I'm just have a really moderate tension and my pressure is pretty medium. And notice how I'm just gliding along the top of the hair in a horizontal way. Going in at this angle could lead to some bleeds because you're pushing the hair through. When you come in at this angle, you're more so sweeping the lightener along the surface of the hair. And for those of you who are history junkies, you know that balayage is a French word for sweeping. So we just want to sweep the color or the lightener onto the surface. Okay, so we're moving right along to the underneath of the net, nape. And this is one of my favorite areas to put in some angle work in. Let me just get my angles right. It's so good to see all you guys. Okay, so I like to separate this into two big pieces. And I always see people behind the chair painting on top, but what I like to do, what sets me apart, is I lift this and paint on the bottom. This is a signature thing that I teach in my workshops and classes. And what this allows is the hair color to come um, in front of the shoulders, giving me more dimension and extending that money piece. So I'm gonna come for the, on the other side just for the purpose of the angles that I need to create here. And I'm over on the opposite side. Okay, here we go. Doing my best with these angles for you. So I'm holding pretty tight and I'm gonna put in a nice bold piece. And then a soft one underneath here. triple here. And right as I am starting to go to the ends of the hair, I just make sure that my sections are clean. I like using the tip of the brush to kind of refine my work and give separation between what I've just done. And just kind of hit the bottoms lightly and do the same on the other side and let it drop. Feels so good to blonde. And I'm gonna come in and do the same here. 
And then we're gonna move right along to the top of the hair. If you have clients with curly hair, you can smooth out the hair for an easier placement. If you have clients with like really fine hair, you're gonna wanna take larger sections and make sure your product is thicker. Especially with those angel fine haired clients, you don't want to have runny product. Cleaning up my I'm trying to pull the doll. I'm not I'm trying not to pull the doll head off the stand, so I'm just doing my best. My tension. When I'm working on a client, I always talk about the fact that I'm going to be pulling on their hair slightly. Some of us have more sensitive heads than others, so I just don't like to catch anyone off guard. So that looks beautiful. Right away, we're gonna have a really beautiful placement when we pull our hair up. So now we're gonna work on the crown. So I just wanna get my position in a good place for you. Okay, here we go. This is really where a lot of dimension comes in. I like to joke that around the face is for your client and then on the crown and back is for her friends. So like, it's just one of those funny things. And that's why I start in the front because I wanna make sure that my client is still like super bright and poppy. This is the exact time where I would start to mix my second bowl so I'd have fresh lightener. So I'm gonna come in and take this top section, put it aside. I'm gonna do one deep V here and then some soft dimension along the top section that I just put to the side. This is gonna give us a switch up in our pattern slightly, and it's going to make our color very poppy, very dimensional. I'm gonna go right to it, and you're flying through this class. I'm so obsessed. But this is such an easy application, it's really easy to do quite quickly. So I'm gonna put this deep pattern in. here, how I'm doing it. And I'm gonna go and repeat on the other side. You can see the further apart the pieces are, the bolder they stand out in the finish. to make sure it's really cool and clean and together. It's a great time to cater your um, placement to whether or not your client parts a specific way. If you get a side flipper, you could just easily put in some more dimensional pieces along their part line. This is like such a great placement as well for even clients that are gray blend clients because there's not a whole lot of blonding close to the root. So you could tap as you go, or you can even just do a quick, rapid gray blend in the toning bowl. Okay, so for this, I left out just a slight section because I don't want to put two highlights next to one another because then it starts getting lost. So I'm gonna just try to not knock my doll. I'm holding her 
just has enough tension to show you. On my client though, I would be a little bit more uh, tight with my tension. Dust it right over through the end. Now, for the hairline to make it super dimensional, there we go. So, again, we're using 30 volume. And my mixing ratio is like approximately a little bit more than half and half. So this is a technique that I really love and especially it's a good time saver. I'm going in and I'm doing a really light weave pattern, setting that aside. I'm just gonna do a soft little tip out Go in for my weave pattern, and I'm going to just softly sweep the lightener over the pattern. Cool. And this is what I'm going to do on the front and side. And look how soft and beautiful that is and so easy. So I'm gonna do the other side and then I have a guest coming in in a few seconds. I would let this process in the salon for probably 40 to 55 minutes depending on my lift. And I would anticipate this client coming back every quarter for maintenance if they weren't a gray blend. This girl's incredibly low maintenance and she just values having nat natural looking hair so much. Okay. Alrighty. This is exactly my approach to the rest of the back of the head. I'm so happy to share this with you. So exciting. Let me bring in my friend Richard. I've had so much fun sharing this with you. Hey, love. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun. The time is just slipping away. I'm full effect into my blonding. We learned so I, I, many fun tips and tricks. Uh, tips look, and tricks. How are you? Look, I'm great, you look beautiful and the technique Aww. you did looks incredible, looks incredible. I wanted to ask you uh, a few questions on the technique actually, I just noticed your very last section, you took slightly finer ones, but the one underneath you took a V. Why, why is that? Why did I do that? Well, I love a little bit of heavier dimension through the crown because from what I noticed, the sun hits your crown and creates a heavier dimension naturally. So when trying to recreate this for my beach loving clients, I just try to stick to what I naturally see happening already. So I like the little soft dimension through the crown and then a little heavier just behind that. And I find that I really don't have a lot of issues with my clients that flip their hair because it just, there's so much dimension and so much yeah, negative yeah. space that it just looks really good. Absolutely, it looks incredible. The other question I had for you, was with freehand, because it's mostly just freehand, is it about perfection or is it just about a basic balance on both sides? I think it's a combination of both because right. you don't want to be so 
you know, particular with matchy matchiness because it just doesn't come across so natural. But with each piece that you do put on, it should be pretty effortless and well executed. With balayage, you get what you get. There's yeah. no like do overs. If the saturation and tension isn't right, if you're messy, that's gonna reflect in your work. So don't be so cautious about counting the placements, but when you do lay the color on, just do a really good job. Absolutely, absolutely. The other thing I wanted to ask you, sorry, so many questions have been coming through. By the way, you are such a patient and gracious educator. I could listen to you all day, believe me. You're so oh, good wow. at just sharing, you know. Um, the other question I had, I noticed you only painted downwards. You didn't go upwards. Is that part of your, I guess, technique in this particular look? Or is that how you do it all the time? So I'm so glad that you asked this. It slipped my mind, but I love bringing the color towards me because that is how the color is going to naturally fall. Um, something about sweeping the hair towards the um, towards the scalp gives a, almost like a little bit of a teasing effect. And I find for myself that personally, when I do that, I get little flicks of lightener that happen. Um, it's not every time, and I see a lot of talented people go up and down and sideways and left. I just like to play with what's right for me. And I really encourage people to practice your motor skills because you'll find it. I haven't found my way of going against the grain, but it doesn't mean that it won't get a great result. Cool. I'm just really um, encouraging you to just find what works for you. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. It's about sharing, not dictating and people just, I guess, uh, incorporating the different many techniques that they like and that works for them. But listen, on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much. We loved what you just did. You were such a delight to watch and listen to. Oh, thank you, Richard. I hope to see you soon. It's been so long and it's been such an honor to hop on here and catch up with you. This is so fun. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. I hope to catch up with you soon. Yeah, I see hope so. I'd love that. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, well that was Lo Wheeler. She is such a great educator. I hope you guys enjoyed that session. In the next session, uh, we have um, a, a fantastic stylist. His name is Antonio Estrada. I've actually had the privilege to work with him. We did a show uh, a couple of years together at Behind the Chair. His Instagram is Ant Estrada Hair. He has over 100,000 followers. He's part of the visionary team for Sexy Hair. He's a BTC team member and Salon Centric Ambassador. Today, he's going to be sharing with you some infinity braiding. So at this stage, without any further ado, let's welcome Antonio. As I'm braiding. So as you see, I'm making sure all this hair is going in the right direction because if it's not, that's gonna be an issue later on and you're not gonna be happy with it. So slow down, take your time and really focus on the little details because that'll make your style look the best at the end. So see if I just added it like this, do you see all that, all that? That wouldn't be good. So I just really want to focus on getting all the hair coming back in the right direction and adding it to my weaving strand. So now that I added, I'm going to do a full rotation without adding any hair. And as you guys can see, my hand placement is pretty tight. I wanna make sure that I'm always keeping my hands close to where I'm braiding. If you go too low, it won't stay so tight. You wanna make sure that your hands are really up in there. Also, I wanna talk about um, how I always leave one hand available to grab something. So see, I could control the whole braid with one hand. This hand is open to do whatever I want. So it's good, you know, to grab another section, to grab a comb, to grab some coffee, whatever you need. So I always use this part of my hand as an anchor down here. And then I use my pincher for this section and then I use right there, just like that. So I'm like free with this hand. You really, it's really important to free up that one hand. So let's add some more hair. Remember I'm always adding only to the, the weaving strand. Add some more hair on this side.
What I like to do as well is I like to brush out these sections as I'm going. I really like to use a boar bristle brush with some um, plastic as well, some plastic bristles, because that's gonna help the product distribute through the hair evenly. For a style like this, I would really focus on using like a spray oil or some kind of oil to keep the hair really shiny and sleek. You, you wanna avoid anything for texture because that's gonna add a lot more flyaways and with you pulling it so tight through here, you could start to get these hairs to pop out. So really, really avoid any kind of texture spray with this unless you're going for a textured look. Then you could go crazy. So now I'm gonna finish it up. Again, guys, this is one of the easier ones. The other one's gonna be a little more complicated. Um, I just wanted to show you the basic technique of it because I want you guys to feel comfortable and remember that this is gonna be something that you could do on your balayages, right behind the head. I didn't see where my model was, so I kind of did it off center on her, but you could do it right behind the back, right here, and have this really wavy. Really brings a lot of interest to the style and it also brings a lot of attention to what you're doing. It also could stand out online a lot. So. Make sure to try this at home and really, really try to utilize this technique. What's up, Lex? Hey, Ash. So let me ask, guys, have you tried this technique at home? Let me know in the comments. So to tie it off, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the weaving strand and one stationary strand. So I leave this free and I just grab those two together and I just kind of put those just like that. So that's the infinity braid. This is gonna be more of the bold one. This is gonna be the more simple one. Um, I love this. I think it's a crowd pleaser. I feel like people always love it and it makes a good impact. Remember guys, this could be used for weddings, editorial, on runways. There's so many different ways you could utilize this. You could use a string instead of hair. So just keep that in mind. So that's the first look right there. Let's break it down and I wanna talk a little bit about the next look. All right guys, so what'd you think? First technique is done. You know, I really wanted to focus on showing you guys more than just one technique because I think it's really important to Get as much as we can in this time that we have together. Um, that first infinity braid was again one of the more simpler ones and it's gonna be a lot more bold, right? It's great for half up, half down. If the hair is a little finer and shorter, you could actually just do the whole braid all the way down and then flip the braid on the side. Let me get my mannequin so I can show you. So just like this. So if you want to do it all the way down, you could definitely just braid it all the way down and then just flip it all and tuck it under right through there. So this is a great option for an updo at a bride, you know, a bridal thing or editorial. You know, they normally just want something really sleek and easy for the runway. So this would be a really cool option. It's also good. Remember, I was, uh, remember, you really want to have a lot of techniques in your toolbox. I was watching one of the guys from Australia and he really was talking about that and I could really agree with that. You know, I really try to know a lot about everything just in case I come, someone comes into my chair and I don't know, I'll know something, right? So if I don't specialize in, um, you know, really clean cuts or really, really um, geometric cuts, I still try to know something because if something, if a client comes in, I'll kind of know how to guide them and what to do and what not to do, right? Instead of just saying no. So I hope that's what you guys get from this today. Just a little refresher and something you guys could put in your toolbox, right? What a crazy time we're living in, guys. I've been off of work for like, I think it's been like seven weeks. This is, it's been really insane, but I just found out that in Arizona, we are going back to work this weekend. So a lot of emotions, really excited, but also pretty nervous, right? Uh, there's, you know, it's not going to be normal. It's going to be a new normal. So we'll see. All right, let's get into the next look that I'm going to be showing you guys. Again, the first one was a little more simple, um, like the beginner, like the intro, right? 
the intro into Infinity. This one's gonna be a little more detailed. Um, same, com same, com same concept though, because that's the most important part. The Infinity, the Infinity braid is the, it's the, same, the same rotation. All right, so let's get into the next one. So this will be the next braid that I'm gonna show you guys. It's gonna go into a low pony. And this one is also going to be a little more detailed and a lot skinnier in the actual braid, right? It's not going to be... Okay, so it's going to be a little skinnier and not, um, not so bold. So let's get into it. This time I want to make sure that my mannequin is set up correctly. There we are. All right. Okay, so let's get into it. So we're gonna go same rotation, the infinity braid, right? We're gonna make sure that we're always focusing on that rotation of going over, under, over, under. With any braid, you guys wanna make sure that you guys are doing that. Always know your rotation, never get lost. Okay, so here we go. Again, I'm really brushing and making sure that all the hair is going in the direction that I like. Keep everything really clean and nice. So you're still gonna have the same thing as far as two stationary, stationary sections. And then instead of pulling from here and creating my weaving section, I'm gonna pull from one of the stationary sections here and create a smaller weaving section. This will go under, over, under, over, just like that. We're gonna go one more time. Do you guys notice how my hands stay really high? They're really, really up there. Right, my hands always stay close to where I'm braiding. So I could even just hold it like that and I'm good. You wanna make sure that's really, really high like that. Okay, so what I did last time is I added hair to the weaving strand here, but I'm actually gonna add hair to the stationary strand. So right through here. Remember, same technique, just utilizing it a little different to get a different outcome, which is what I love. So see how I'm adding it to the stationary section? I'll go under and over, and then same thing on this side. Grab a little bit of hair. Make sure everything's going in the right direction. Adding to the stationary section. So this is my weaving section. We're adding to the stationary section. Just like that. So do you see how the strands are a lot skinnier? It's a little more detailed. It looks different, right? Same technique, but just the outcome's different. We're gonna do two rotations without adding hair to anything. And the reason we do this, guys, is we want to leave some room in between the next, the next um, hair that we're adding. If we do it all together, it'll kind of start to bunch up and not look right. So you want to leave some room in between here so it looks more balanced. So I'm sure you guys are wondering, like, uh, that weaving strand is going to run out of hair, right? So what I'm going to do is, see, this is the weaving strand. So to add more hair, we want to make sure that we just add a little hair from the stationary sections and start to continue the, the braid. Just like that. So now we have our weaving strand is longer. We're still keeping this really skinny and petite. And let's add some more hair. Making sure all my hair is in the same direction. You know, it, it does seem difficult, but when you get your hands in the hair, it is actually pretty easy. As long as you know the, the, the rotation, and as long as you keep your hands tight and close, you should get it. I would start off with that easier one that I showed. Um, that one's gonna kind of introduce you to this, but I'm always like a visual learner, so I can't really just read something and learn it or do it. I have to watch someone. 
So um, if you guys want to learn this, there's some you know stuff on my page that has this info already recorded and for you guys. You could also DM me. I'd love to help out, and I'm all about sharing my technique. So don't hesitate. So to prep the hair, um, what I would use is more of like a like a spray oil, something like that, or I would use um, just like an oil, something to really calm the hair down, something to add a lot of shine, and something to just moisturize the hair. We are doing a really, really tight braid, and if the hair is really dry or if the hair is really textured, right through here, you'll get all these little things popping up, and it won't be as beautiful, right? So you want to, it's all about um, just like shiny, healthy, beautiful um, hair for this braid. Sometimes even if you wanted to do a gel, you could do that because they'll keep it really, really clean. But again, guys, you gotta remember, you know, whenever I first started being a stylist, I would always get, I was never really happy with my styling because I was doing the same thing for everyone. So I was a beginner and I was thinking that everyone needed, you know, a texture spray, right? That's what we always think, they need a texture spray. And I was doing that on everyone. But what was happening, sometimes they didn't need a texture spray, they needed a shine spray. They needed to calm the hair down. They wanted more of a sleek look. So as, whenever I started to learn exactly what I was doing and why I was using product, not just using it because everyone was doing it or because that was just my routine, once I really understood why I'm using it, then things started to get a lot easier. My product sales went up, people were returning because what I was saying was working. So really, really understand what you're using and why you're using it before you put it in someone's hair. Do you guys see the difference? So that's the question, that's a good question. People, I think there was a, there is the, just like a, a saying that us hairdressers liked it when clients would come in with dirty hair. Hold on, let's, let's get into this real quick, guys. So I'm gonna add a little more hair to my weaving strand. See how I'm forgetting? I'm losing length. So I'm going to add a little bit of hair to that. That becomes my new weaving strand. And then I'm going to add hair to the stationary strand down here. It sounds complicated, guys, but once you get the rotation in mind and once you understand what you're doing, it is not. I promise you. So there, my weaving strand's here. I'm going to add hair to the stationary strand right here. And then wrap around. Just like that. As you can see, when I'm wrapping, I always tend to pull it up like this because I want to keep everything up, right? So the weaving strand, I'll pull up a little bit. All right, so let's get back into like the, you know, what is it called? Um, just that saying of someone says like, the hairdresser wants you to have dirty hair for your up style. I don't agree with that. I would like them to have clean hair because then I could build up my product the way that I want. A lot of times what I do is actually just sh blow, uh, shampoo, blow dry them before their style because I could get, you know, their hair clean. I could get the product that I want in there. I could build volume. I could build texture. Um, if I need to smooth it out or really focus on slimming it out, I could do that as well. So I would say personally for me, I like them just come with clean hair because I could do whatever I want to it. So yeah, so to make it tight, you just really have to focus on pulling it and pulling it up like that. Really focus on making sure your hand placement is really close. So my hands are always close to where I'm braiding. So see, I could hold on to that and it's good. I could hold on to that and that's good. You just wanna really make sure that your hands stay close to the braid and close to the head. So now I'm gonna add hair to my weaving strand or to my stationary strand, I'm sorry. Just like that. How many of you guys love styling? Is that your thing? Because I know for me, I love styling, but I do color. I do color and I also do cutting. So my specialty is, is uh, styling, but you know, in order to be a successful hairdresser, you kind of have to know a little bit about everything, at least to start off. I, behind the chair, specialize in color. But online, I'm known as styling. So I have two little gigs going on.
I'm loving it. Yeah, so question. I always get this question when I use this mannequin. So I made this mannequin. When I first started my Instagram, um, I didn't have enough money to buy a long hair mannequin. So I just glued synthetic hair to a bald mannequin and created this beauty. So if you guys want to know what to do, you could DM me. I'd love to share with you what I did. Oh, you lost the rhythm. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so remember guys, it's always going to be the infinity sign. So over, under, over, under, you know, just like that. Um, you want to make sure that your, your stationary strands stay the same and your weaving strand is the only thing that's going to go, that's going to rotate. So this is my weaving strand, stationary strands right here. Stationary weaving. This is the only thing that's moving, okay? These are never moving. You're just adding to these ones. So let's see, I just added hair. So I'm gonna do a full rotation without adding any hair. And you guys see how like I pull everything up? Just like that, okay? And do you guys see how it's already, the hair's kind of coming up here? I'm gonna do another rotation just to balance it out. I wanna make sure that when I pull hair, when I pull hair from here, it's going straight back and not up. So I'm gonna do a couple rotations. So when I pull this here, I go straight back. So let's talk about when you get to the bottom of the occipital, like close to the occipital bone, the head will start to round down. You guys know this. So it'll start to go down. So whenever you're in the occipital area, you wanna make sure that you keep your knuckles closer to the head. Cause if you don't, you'll get a little bit of elevation and then it'll create like a little bit of that softness. So let me show you guys how to do that. Hey Janice, yeah, you were one of my first one-on-one -on -one classes. Thanks for supporting. So as far as adding hair to the stationary, uh, to the stationary strands, you add it every other rotation. So you do two rotations, add, two rotations, add, two rotations, add. You wanna do that just so when you're adding to the stationary strands, this stays really slim, okay? This stays a little more detailed, it stays a little skinnier. If you add to the hair to the weaving strand, then you get the first braid that we did where this is gonna be a lot thicker. And what I'm gonna do now, what I recommend for everyone, I'm just gonna go through and just brush everything. This is another tip that I like to do, especially when braiding. Every once in a while, just kind of brush everything so it stays in the place that you want, in the direction that you want. Okay, so back to braiding. This is going to be my weaving strand. I'm gonna add a little bit of hair to that. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of hair to the weaving, to the stationary strand. So see, I'm gonna pull it a little tighter because I want it to go with the head. I don't wanna have any elevation on that. So I'm gonna pull it tighter. Pull tight right there so it stays on the bottom of the occipital and it goes to the curve of the head. I try not to do any elevation right here. I wouldn't be too concerned about the hair being break, breaking during this technique because when the hair is dry, that's when it's the strongest. Maybe if the hair is really, really fragile and you're trying to do this wet, that wouldn't be a good idea. But once the hair is dry, that's when it's the strongest. So you shouldn't worry about that too much. It is definitely, a, a, you know, something to think about. It's a good question, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. You, the hair would have to be really, really compromised to have this affect it. And at that point, they probably can't even do much with their hair. Oh, <laughs> I really love this angle, guys. I hope you guys like it too. It's like my point of view. So just picture this. So I'm standing right? And then I'm braiding and then my phone is on a tripod right in between my hands and my body. Right? So I wonder if I could show you, I'll show you guys after I'm done. 
Yeah, so just picture me standing, braiding, and then in between that little hole, that, like in the circle of my arms, there is like my camera right here. So I feel like this is where, how I learned the, the best. So um, yeah, I'll show you guys after I'm done here. Okay, so let's see, where am I? So the cool thing is I kind of got, you know, distracted a little bit, but I know that I'm just going to keep doing the same, the same rotation through the whole braid. And I still have a little bit of hair under there to add. So let's see. So I'm going to add a little bit more hair right there. And also guys, it's not, a, it's not, a, you know, it's not, you don't have to do this quick. So do you see how I kind of make sure all the hair is kind of where it needs to be? and what, where I want it to go. Uh, you don't have to rush this. You could, you could take your time, especially when you're learning it. Once you get it down, then you're gonna be able to um, rush through it. Like I could do this in no time, but when I first started, it took me a long time to understand it. And really just the hand placement is the biggest thing. Because I know when I'm teaching in classes, that's what everyone kind of struggles with. Thanks, Darlene. So as far as what I'm putting on the hair before I'm braiding, I would use some kind of paste, oil, um, some braiding gel, stuff like that. If you want the hair to look more wet and more skinny, I would say to do this braid on wet hair and use like a gel. That will kind of give you a whole different vibe. So let's do this a little more. I want to show you guys just how to do the infinity braid without even adding any hair to it or anything. Are you guys liking it? I always pat my hairstyles. I feel like it kind of like calms down any frizz and kind of just puts my stamp on the style. I don't know if that's a real thing, but I just always feel better once I do this. Yeah, also guys, let's talk about um, hair color. So think about this. Think about if this mannequin was all black, you know? You might not get the same effect. It really works well when there's dimension. So that's why I picked this one because it has a little bit of dark. Um, kind of dark. It has like some dimension in there with the lighter gray. So really, really think about that whenever you guys are styling. I always like to take my consultation, my consultations for styling just like I would for a haircut. So if someone came in and they wanted a line bob and had no hair in front of their ear, I would definitely talk about it and say, okay, this is not possible because of this. Same thing with styling. If they want a style that's not going to work, you need to be upfront about it. Let them know why it's not going to work and um, suggest something that will work. So again, we're just going to, this is going to be like the, just a regular infinity, not adding anything to the hair, no adding hair to anything. It's cool, right? And you guys should, whenever you guys do it, feel it. It's really strong. It's like, it's like a rope kind of. Okay. So let's go over hand placement really quick one more time. So I want to make sure that I have control with one hand, right? Always control it with one hand. Even with this braid, you can just control it with this one. It's kind of a cool picture right there. So you really want to have your hand placement be very, it's very, really, really important. So I'm going to divide both of them like this. I always hold one section with the bottom right here. And then you go over. You see I'm holding it over here again. Have my pincher. And then I go under, hold, over. I'm gonna add hair, pinch. Okay guys, I had a question about how to make your hair stronger. This is something that everyone always wants to know and you know, especially if you're blonde, you know, if you're doing highlights or balayage, your hair will tend to lose some moisture and get a little compromised. It's kind of, you have to, you know, use a bleach. So in order to get your hair stronger, I would say be nice to your hair. That's the biggest thing. I have some friends that are just really rough with their hair. And I feel like that's the major reason why you could um, create some damage. So when it's wet, just be very gentle. Try not to use any hot tools. Product is key. So a heat protectant, um, the proper shampoo, making sure that you're not shampooing your ends of your hair and conditioning only. 
um, masks, any kind of insulin treatments. If you really want to get your hair back into shape, you can do it. You just gotta, you just gotta put your full attention into it. And also getting dry haircuts. About every eight to 12 weeks, have someone cut your hair dry because they could really see what's wrong with your hair and really, really just cut what's needed. So when I'm saying cut what's needed, it's like, like that. You know, just a little bit, just really cut what's off. Um, and uh, making sure that they're not cutting too much. Oh my God, that's the worst. Whenever they rip through their hair when it's wet, it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? All right, guys, so here we go. Let's keep going. I still have some time. Do you guys have any other questions about the braid? I love this braid. Again, this is inspired by Nikki Welsh, um, Richard Mana. We did this together on stage in Chicago. I'll never forget it. I had my cast on that day. I broke my ankle, so we were braiding on stage together. Thank you, April, that's so nice. And again, guys, remember, I wasn't a braider. You know, I didn't start off braiding hair. So the salon I worked in, they really praised people that could style hair and I wanted to be the best. So I was like, okay, well, I gotta learn how to do updos. So I just spent six months perfecting it and then I was obsessed with it. I'll keep this, uh, hey Steph, I'll keep this um, on my live for a while so you can go back and watch it. For sure, I'll save it. Yeah, so as far as adding sections, you really wanna make sure you're, you're thinking about how you want the, the braid to look. The little, the smaller sections, it'll look more like this, right? So it'll be a little more detailed. If you want it to be fat, then you will do it. Let's get this picture up. Hold on guys, one second. I'm gonna get that other picture so I can show you. If you add hair to the, If you add more hair to the weaving strand, then it'll look more like this. Which is still so cool, it's different, but that's what's gonna happen when you add thicker hair to the weaving strand. This happens when it's thinner hair, this happens when it's thicker, okay? So yes, like I was saying, I wasn't you know, a styler at first, but just like in anything in life, if you really want to do it and you put the time in, you will definitely get it. Just like with me and my Instagram. You know, I didn't know nothing about Instagram. I just went in, it was fun and exciting, and I just learned. Asked a lot of questions, learned from everyone. So yeah. Let's keep braiding. Give me some hearts, guys, if you like this braid. Hey, Dad. <laughs> yeah, so remember again, this is not gonna be the perfect hair, the perfect style for every client that comes in. This is just gonna be something you put in your toolbox and you hold for that perfect person. I like to just bring in a model every two weeks and um, I just practice looks on her. So that's what I do. Um, this is, you know, this could be done on curly hair, but remember it's gonna be a very textured look. If you want it to be sleek, the hair has to be sleek. You can't put it on a textured client and expect these results. So for instance, if, um, so for instance, if, their hair was really layered and their hair was really curly, this would look a lot more textured. Cause even with it straight, you still get a little bit of texture. Again, texture is not a bad thing. Texture is not a bad thing, but um, it, it, it happens. So no, so I'm not, I'm only adding hair to whatever side that needs it. So when I run out of hair, so let's show you. So I keep going around and around just like that. So I feel like it's time to add. That's when I'll add hair. And you could add from either side. It doesn't matter, you just wanna make sure that your stationary sections are, stay the same the whole time. So if you guys really think about this braid, so when I first started it, when I first started it, these were the same sections that I started with. Hey Richard. 
<clears throat> these were the same sections that I started with, these two. These are my stationary sections, so these ain't going nowhere, okay? Um, this is the only one moving around. So just keep that in mind whenever you're doing it. Hey, Richard, I was just talking about that time in Chicago when we both did this braid on stage, right? When I had my broken ankle. Never forget it, man. Oh, yeah, you're styling here with me too. That's sweet. Yeah, so let's just kind of go a little more rotations. I'm here to answer some more questions. What do you guys got? Hey, Shayla. Marie, what is up? So I'm about two minutes, guys. So shoot me those questions. I'm going to keep braiding for these two minutes. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this time with me. Don't forget that we are streaming live on YouTube for, I believe it's like five more hours. So many heavy hitters coming up. You guys are going to love it. Yes, so if you wanted to um, if you wanted to make this more texture, you could definitely do that, but you make these thicker. So if, like, remember my first braid? I would do it that way and then pull it a little bit so that has a little more texture. If you go too far down, you won't be able to because they'll be so tight, so you could pull just a little bit. Oh, Lexi, my assistant. Yeah, so someone um, asked how long is my doll. This hair is pretty long, guys. So there it is. So let's finish this braid off so I can show you guys how I do that. So I do the weaving strand and the stationary strand with a clear band. Just like that. And there we go. Perfect for an Instagram photo. Hey, Missy, thank you. That's it, guys. Here's a little close up. Remember, this is going to be the braid that's going to be add, hair adding to the stationary sections, not the weaving section. The weaving section is going to be a lot thicker and fuller. Stationary section is going to be, when you're adding to the stationary section, it's going to be slimmer like this. Yes, the replay, I'll save it on my page. That'll be perfect for you guys. Thank you so much for the love. Hope you guys liked it. Hey, hey. how are you, man? Good, how are you? Um, Awesome. I'm really good. I'm so inspired, dude. That was so, so good. It was so good. And you oh, finished, you finished like perfectly on time. I know. <laughs> I set that up pretty good. Yeah, I was impressed myself. It was so good, man. I love that you talked about the shows that we did and we, we both did yep. Infinity Braids. One, one of the yep. questions that came through um, was you, you were with, with the rotating um, element of the braid, the ro rotating piece, you always took from the right side, not the left side. Is that something yeah. that you do always with infinity braids? So it just probably happened to be that way for this braid. I only, yeah. I always add whenever I need to add more hair. So for some right. reason, maybe it was just that, that way of the whole braid, but whenever you run out of hair, that's when you add. It's, it was, it was literally perfect, man. And okay. I got one last question because they're saying to me, the next person's ready. Um, the last question I have for you is, do you get many clients that actually request the Infinity Braid or different kind of braids? Yeah, so, you know, it's really interesting with the career that I have and the direction that my career went. I don't do a lot of styling behind the chair. I do wow. about 95% of coloring and cutting. Wow. And when I, do get some, when I do get some styling in my chair, it's more of like the, the prom styles, the boho looks you know, just like half up, half down. That's what I normally do, but I rarely get anything like this that's requested behind the chair. So, but I, it works. <laughs> it's so good. It's beautiful. I could see it at, you know, weddings. I could see it at balls. I could see it in different scenarios. And Tony, and like. thank you, man. Thank you so oh, much for sharing with us and the whole hairdressing community. I, and I'm sure everyone that watched you learned something and definitely feel inspired, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care.
Hey everybody, so I hope you guys enjoyed that infinitive rate. For those who are just joining, my name is Richard Manor. I'm Joyka's Global Artistic Director. A quick shout out to everyone from Joyka. What's up? Today has been great. We've been over 18 hours of education. We've seen over 30 different educators from all over the world. And we still have some incredible uh, educators that are about to share with you in the next segment. Today has really been all about giving back to the hairdressing community in terms of inspiring, motivating and educating you at your home and collaborating together to be able to share as much expertise as possible to inspire and motivate you. The other cause is to also raise money, to raise money to help hairdressers and people all around the world that are struggling through this crisis. In fact, you know, um, Henkel have already been, have given 2 million euros to a few different COVID-19 related foundations. Henkel North America has announced that the company will donate $200,000 to Professional Beauty Association. And with this today, they're going to be giving 100,000 euros to the charity which receives the most votes from you today. So make sure you vote either Red Cross, United Way or Professional Beauty Association. Also, we're attempting to break the record. So we're all in this together to have the longest live stream of education, which is going to be 24 hours. Next up, we have someone very, very special, someone who I work closely with. She has just joined us at Joico. Uh, her name is Gina Bianca. Uh, you might know her as I am Gina Bianca on social media. She's based in the USA. She has over 250,000 followers on Instagram. She's Joico's global salon business expert. She specializes in color and color corrections. She's an incredible educator. And today she'll be sharing some quick color power placement. So let's go over to Gina Bianca. I'm using the Joico Blonde Life with 20 volume. And I'm mixing one to a little bit more than one. Now the reason I'm mixing one to a little bit more than one is because I wanna make sure that when I'm blending these foils that the product is gliding and sliding for me. Now, if you mix it too thick, you might have an issue with it gliding. So lucky for me, Blonde Life, you can be a little bit uh, creative with your mixing as long as you stay within the one to two. So I'm gonna go in and just look at it and make sure it's like creamy, but it will still spread for me. So this actually looks perfect and amazing, but what I'm gonna do is add just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more developer so that it'll glide for me. And I'm going in with 30 volume because I'm working on a dolly. And if you like her tone, we use the Joyco Lumashine, uh, my favorite formulation, honestly. It's called, I call it NAG, so it's a natural ash and a gold. So I use 10N, uh, 10G, 10NG, excuse me, and 9NA. So I have all of the tones in there and it made it a really balanced, pretty blonde. I wanted it to be bright without it being brassy or anything. It lifted beautifully, but I love to add gold into my formulation to keep it bright. So that's what I use to tone her. And we'll of course share all of that with you guys. And I think I'm ready to go. Awesome. All right, guys. so we're gonna go in and we're gonna start in the back. And I'm gonna explain this sectioning for you guys one more time as well. I have this back section taken away I braided it off and just kind of clipped it off. I have a triangle section back here. And the reason I have a triangle section is because this is where the head shape changes. So I always like to section it a little bit differently so that I could just tell apart and just like uh, strategize a little bit differently there. So uh, I have this triangle section. I have a big mohawk section on the top. 
And I want to make sure that her part is somewhere inside this mohawk section. That way, when it does fall, the color will fall evenly. So make sure that this mohawk, their part is somewhere in the middle. And then I sectioned off her money piece. I wanted to just do weave, weave, slice. So what I did when I sectioned it is I just guessed, I just kind of took weave, weave, slice, and I just sectioned off behind it. So we're not foiling or doing anything with these sides here or the bottom. So we're only doing a few foils. And I did prep everything with the Defy Damage Pro Series 1. So if you did want to add this on to your tickets, this is going to be one of the ways you could double your business, okay? So if you're going to be focusing on average ticket, if you remember, that's one way we can double our business, you can always add on uh, Defy Damage or some kind of add-on service. And what that's going to do is it's going to help your average ticket grow. Make sure when you use Defy Damage, you shake vigorously and spray it out. And that's gonna protect the hair from breakage. It's gonna give you better and more even lift and it's gonna make the hair five times stronger. It's also gonna boost your average ticket and help you make a lot more money as a stylist. I love services like this that take zero time because they really build your ticket. Awesome. So now we're gonna get into the back here. our first section. Alright, so my first section is going to be a horizontal section. I'm going to take that. Now, if you notice, this is a V-shaped section. My initial section is pretty thick. If you can see that, it's a pretty juicy section. So remember, the bigger your initial section, the more depth is left behind. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do some stitch work. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, familiar with stitch work, watch me closely and you can create millions of stitches on your own, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go in and I'm gonna pick up Skim, 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 pick up. And I'm gonna create foil work that has balayage and baby lights built in. Because I took an initial thicker section, this is the dimension and depth that's gonna be left behind. If I wanted it to be brighter, what I would do is take a smaller initial section, hence giving me more coverage. So I'm gonna go in and anchor that. I'm using big foils that I haven't ripped yet. And I'm gonna glue where I want saturation to begin. So I'm gonna glue, glue, glue. I'm gonna get the product down. And as you can see, I did not move my hand. My tension did not go anywhere. As you can see, my left hand, my tension is still there. I'm gonna keep it there and I'm gonna back brush up. If you have a problem blending, if you have a challenge blending, what you're gonna to wanna to do is keep that tension until your blend is complete, okay? Once your blend is complete, you can go in and get new tension, which is plate. So I'm gonna grab my foil and use my hand as a plate. As I brush down, I'm pushing up. As I brush down, I'm pushing up. Now, if you have problems with uh, flipping the hair into the foil, I'm gonna give you a secret right here. A lot of the time when we try to flip, it has nothing to stick to, so it takes forever to foil. But if you have enough product down, all you have to do is flip it in. If flip has nothing to stick to, it's gonna take forever to foil, you guys. So make sure your mechanics are good so that you save time. So I'm gonna start with my double fold. I'm gonna fold once, fold twice. Beautiful. My next section is gonna be a baby light. So if I do a stitch like I did previously, the pick up, skim, 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 pick up, that is gonna give me a good amount of dimension and some pop. If I go in and do a baby light, that is going to lighten the background color. 
The purpose of a baby light is to lighten the background color. So I'm gonna go in, take my section. My initial section's pretty big again, but I'm gonna skim off of it this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. The more weaves, the more natural the result. I'm gonna pinch. Anchor. Glue where I want saturation to begin. Glue where I want saturation to begin. Make sure flip has something to stick to. Anytime you feather, I recommend a double fold and close. Next section. Remember, the bigger the initial section, the more depth is left behind. So if you take a big initial section and weave off of it, that is how you control your depth. And if you don't know, if you're confused about how much depth you're leaving behind or if you're confused about what it's gonna look like, watch this, okay? You're gonna go in. I'm gonna show you a new stitch, stay with me, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to tell what it's gonna look like. We're gonna go in, take this whole section. I'm gonna show you like five tips in one section, so stay with me, okay? We're gonna go in, I'm gonna weave lower, pick up, weave higher, skim, 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 weave lower, pick up, skim, 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 pick up. The higher I weave, the less hair goes in the foil, or the less hair I pick up. The lower I weave, the more hair I pick up. So this is gonna be a W. I did pick up, skim, 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 pick up, skim, 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 pick up. So this is gonna be, like if you were balayaging or painting a W. As you can see, get a little bit more dimension in here. Glue where I want saturation to begin. Glue, glue, glue. Make sure you have enough product. Use the product. Use the product. We've been told not to use the product. Don't waste the product. Just charge for it, you guys. Use it and charge for it. It is worth it and you'll get that result. You'll get that lift. You'll get everything that you want. Use the product, use it. If you are having a hard time sticking, this is adding 15, 20 minutes to your foil. Use the product. Beautiful. So I'm gonna double fold and close. So I showed you the Vs. I showed you baby light to lighten the background color, and then I showed you the W. What do you think I should do here? I'm gonna do a baby light. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, look. If I do baby light down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, look how much hair I picked up. Look at that, too much hair, watch. Now, I take my section and I weave higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I weave higher, now look how much hair that is. It's not the same, it's so much less. So just that, just where you're picking up is gonna make a huge difference in your look, right? So <clears throat> that little tip, if you're unsure of what to do, should help. So now I'm gonna go in, feather, feather, feather. Keeping that tension, look how strong my tension is. Now I need new tension. So I'm gonna use my plate and I'm gonna push up while I'm pulling down. Are you guys liking this class so far? Let me know, are you liking it? Are you learning something new? If you learn something new, say yes. I'm gonna fold that up, fold that up, close that up. Beautiful, amazing. So my next section is gonna be her money piece. This is my favorite money piece to do, you guys. Favorite, favorite, favorite. And I'm gonna also show you another tip here. So stay with me, okay? This is a really good one. Let's see. I'm gonna make this section just a tiny bit thicker. Beautiful. There we go. So there's my first section off her hairline. And I'm gonna go in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pinch, separate. And then I'm gonna go in. Now, before I go, this is the tip I wanna show you. 
depending on who the guest is, what they want, what their goal is, and what they have, it's gonna vary. You can always weave the front or the back, depending on what look they want. So if you weave the front of the section, they're gonna have that nice dimension and then a little filter over it. If you weave this part of the section, they're gonna have a bright blonde over it, okay? So just keep in mind, you can always weave either side of the section. Anchor. We're gonna glue where we want saturation to begin. Feather it up. Of course, this part of the head is always a little bit tricky, so we're gonna make sure our doll, we, we always know our guest, hair, our guest head moves, so we can move them around a little bit if we need to. sure we get nice and close to the hairline. You are only as good as that hairline, you guys. Just gonna go in, and anchor that, and close. So our next section is gonna be another weave. The pattern is weave, weave with a slice right behind it. Pinch. Anchor. Feather that up. Remember, if you're having a challenge getting that hair into the foil, just use more products. Give Flip something to stick to. The next section is gonna be right behind it. I'm just gonna clean it up slightly, make it a little bit smaller. You wanna be mindful of how much hair is going in the foil. You wanna make sure you can see through the section if you want that full saturation. If you're doing foliage and stitch work like I was doing in the back, you can get away with feathering as long as all the hairs are going in the same direction and you don't have any knotting that you're uh, highlighting over. Like, you wouldn't want you to highlight over teasing or anything like that. You wanna make sure the hair is going in the same direction. Beautiful. And that weave weave with a slice right behind it is gonna give her a ton of pop. Gonna go in and close. Now remember that slice is right behind that weave. There's no hair in between. The slice is right behind it and it's gonna give it a beautiful pop. Now the fact that this is here and we're not coloring it, this hair right here, as you can see, this is a vertical line that the money piece is gonna sit next to. So when we think about color placement and we think about we want this to be light, this can only be light if it has something dark behind it, okay? So make sure you're leaving some kind of section behind it for it to be dark. You can also apply your root smudge vertically this way to put a wall behind that color. My next section, and I'm leaving that whole section out. I want to leave depth, and I want there to be something for all of this beautiful blonde to stand next to. Beautiful. Next section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pinch separate. And the reason I'm counting weaves for you guys is because I want you to think about the number of weaves that you take is how natural the look is gonna be. So if I take seven weaves, it's gonna be more natural than if I did three weaves. If I do nine weaves, it's gonna be more natural than if I did seven weaves. So the more that you count for the weaves, the more natural the look will be. And I like to put in my notes what, uh, what my weave counts were. Because then I can ask my guests, like, oh, was your hair, how was your hair? She's like, oh, I want it to be a little bit brighter. And then I know, oh, maybe I'll use fives next time instead of sevens. It just helps you be super, like, uh, you know, consistent and mindful of your guests. 
That's gonna help you with your guest retention, which is gonna help you with your frequency of visit as well. So taking, taking really good notes and being consistent throughout your service, writing down your formulas, uh, so your guests can trust in that consistency, that is gonna improve your frequency of visit, which is one of the number one ways to grow your business. My next section is gonna be another weave. Pinch separate. Glue where we want saturation to begin and set it up. Make sure we're all saturated. Double fold. Next section is a slice right behind it. Remember, there's no weave in between. Right behind it. If you want a more pop and money piece, if the guest has like thicker hair and you want a little bit more of a pop, you can always do another weave behind this. You could always do another slice behind it. It's completely up to you. You can make it uh, thicker, you can make it pop more, you could do weave, weave, weave as a money piece. And remember, you can just drop it. You can drop that section down to see what it's gonna look like, which I forgot to show you, so I'll show you in a sec. If you ever don't know what to do, all you have to do is drop that section to see what it's gonna look like. Fold that up. Beautiful. Now my next section, and this is where we're gonna get a little interesting here. So if you want to see what the money piece is going to look like, all you have to do is drop it. So if I want, if I want to do weave, weave, slice, I'm going to go weave, weave, and slice. Let's just clean that up pristine sectioning, because that's who we are. So now, if you wanted to ask your guests, like, hey, Sally, is this popping enough for you? All you have to do, drop that section, okay? So you could drop that down and see what it's gonna look like. Obviously, I'm doing Weave Weave Slice, so there's gonna be some dimension in this money piece, but this is pretty much what it's gonna be. So you could really see what it's gonna look like. And if it's too much, if you look at it and it's too much, you can always adjust. Beautiful. Get cleaned up here. Beautiful. And then we're going to come over and just mix a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions so far about my placement? And then we'll do some Q&A at the end, but if you have questions, let's hear them. All right, remember I went one to a little bit more than one to make sure that product is thick enough, but it's still gonna spread for me. All right, next section. Seven weave. Remember you could uh, foil the bottom or the top of the weave, two different looks. Two different guests, right? I'm gonna pinch, anchor, glue where we want saturation to begin. Now remember, while I'm pulling down, I'm pushing up to make sure that my foil is not slipping on me, and I make sure I've got plenty of product down. 
so that my flip has something to stick to. Next section. Any good questions? Or Our people? mastermind is answering all of them before I can even say them. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mastermind fam. Thank you guys. Make sure we get all that saturation. If you're finding you're bleeding, splotching, any of that, uneven lift, any of those things, you guys, it's because the sections are probably not small enough. You have to make sure you take teeny, teeny, teeny sections because the smaller the section, the lighter the result and the closer to the scalp. So be sure, very, very tiny sections. Beautiful. Now my next section is gonna be my slice right behind. Clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. Put a little hair. Pinch. Anchor. Glue, where we want saturation to begin. Beautiful, love that blonde life. I love how it spreads. Such a good product. And it lifts. Beautiful. Weave, weave, slice, fave. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go into the sectioning here. Remember, we're leaving these sections out. So our first section is gonna be here. Next section is gonna be here. And we're gonna go baby light, baby light. And then we're gonna do our stitch work. Cool? So we're gonna be lightening the background color, lightening the background color, and adding some pop, okay? So that's gonna be our placement. Boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you wanna know if this is enough, you can always drop it to see what it looks like. So if you wanna know what it's gonna look like, you can always drop it down to see. That's gonna come from the top and give soft because it's on a diagonal and because it's a weave and because it's a baby light, tiny highlight. It's gonna lighten that background color and just break that up for her. Because I have a diagonal section here and I left depth behind, my money piece will pop, cool? Glue where you want saturation to begin. Ooh. Too much power. I don't know my own strength. Oh my God. So strong. Next section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pinch, separate, pinch, and go in, anchor, glue where you want saturation to begin, feather up, plate, plate, flip, close, reposition, refocus, Next section. You can meet these points if you want to. It depends on how much depth you want to leave behind. So if you want to leave a lot of depth behind, you totally can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go pick up, skim, 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 pick up, pinch, separate, pinch. Glue where we want saturation to begin. Feather it up. Mm -hmm. 
feather, feather, feather. Close, close. Done. Next section. Diagonal, diagonal. Try to keep those sections clean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pinch, separate. Anchor. Glue where you want saturation to begin. Now, so you guys are gonna see this one more time, this pattern, and we're gonna go into business. So stay with me. Go in. Close that off. And remember, we're going weave, and you can go Vs or Ws, whatever you want. Or you could do baby light, or you could just do sevens. You could really do whatever you want. Uh, and if you want to learn more about color placement, you need to take my online classes that are coming out, my five ways to foil one and two. If you want to learn everything about foiling for all levels, that is going to be your best friend. And just so you guys know, you can always click the link in my bio. I have a free two-hour class I'm offering for you guys. You just click the link in my bio, and it's a free two-hour class with me on getting back to work. Beautiful. And close. Next section. Now, you can always, because the hair falls like this, and because we're overdirecting forward, you can always take bigger sections as you go back and it'll build depth for you. So keep that in mind. You can always take bigger sections as you go back. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna meet those corners and I'm gonna do a W. So I'm gonna go in and go pick up, skim, skim, pick up, skim, skim, pick up. Beautiful. Glue where we want saturation to begin. And you can always glue lower and lower as you get to the back of the head. All right, so you guys have seen the pattern a few times. Now we're gonna go into those three ways to grow your business. And if you have any questions, please feel free to fire away. I want you guys to get the most from this class. Wonderful. So remember, we did weave, weave, W. Now we can go weave, weave, V or weave, weave baby light. It's really up to you. And as you climb back, you can take bigger sections. Awesome. So let's go into business. And there's three ways that we can grow our business. And this is with any business, you guys. This is uh, any business at all. So when it comes to business, there's three things. Average ticket, frequency of visit, and new customer count. So you always wanna be focusing on how you can get that average ticket higher, how you can get new clients walking through your door, and how you can get your existing clients to come back over and over again and stay in love with you. So the first thing is average ticket. I already shared with you guys that you can use Defy Damage to build your average ticket. You can also um, charge for the product that you're using, which I know tons of stylists have a challenge with. Uh, a lot of stylists have major fear, stress, and anxiety when it comes to adding on extra bowls and extra product because they're afraid to charge more than a certain amount. If um, that is you, my new pricing class that's coming out is gonna save your life, it's gonna be so helpful. But you guys, pricing is literally, pricing is literally product and labor. It's literally your time and your product. So make sure you're adding on your extra bowls. Don't forget to add on extra bowls because at the end of the year, 
all of that money is going into your pro use cost that could really be going into your profit column so make sure that you have time standards and product standards for every single service if you have time standards and product standards for every single service your ticket and pricing will be way better and way more on point if you charge hourly and a la carte it should all equal the same exact thing that's how you know your pricing is on point so if I charge someone for a six hour service or if I ring that service out a la carte, it should equal about the same thing. Beautiful. All right. The next thing that we wanna focus on is frequency of visit. And the number one way to focus on frequency of visit, you guys, is pre-booking your appointment. The best way is to just pre-book during the consultation. If you pre-book during consultation, it sends a message like, this is just how I do business. Um, if you try to get the pre-book at the end, it kind of sounds desperate. And if you pass it off to the front desk person or the guest care representative, no, it's your job as a stylist to be pre-booking your appointments. So many stylists complain that they don't have control over their schedule. So many stylists complain of so many things that they can fix simply by pre-booking and maintaining control of their schedule. So, um, my next section, it's gonna be here. Oh, we got a nice little uh, string. Pick up, skim, 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 skim. Pick up, pinch, separate. Glue, where we want saturation to begin. And as you can see, we're all out, all out. So we can pre-book our appointments during the consultation and all we have to do is say, hey Sally, what days of the week are you off? Do you like Mondays at five? Cause it's Monday at five right now or do you prefer a different day? And uh, leave all the questions open-ended. So don't say, do you want to pre-book? Cause if the answer is yes or no, they're probably gonna say no. So just leave it open-ended and just remember you're serving the customer by doing this. The last thing is new clients. And I, guys, I say this all the time like a broken record. The best way to get new guests is to focus on the ones that you have, have an amazing referral program, and really take care of your clients, okay? So those are my three business tips. This is my beautiful placement that I've, uh, that I've showed you guys. And I know that we have about two seconds before Richard's gonna come on. So all I'm gonna do, he should request to come into the live. All I'm gonna do is just finish off my last section. And voila, that is my 30 minute power placement. Just under 30 fo 20 foils, and it's gonna save your ass behind the chair, you guys, when you get back and you have to do these quick services. Hopefully I didn't make myself too much of a mess. Awesome. Is Richard here? Not yet. Is there a way we can add him? Let's see. Where's Richard? <laughs> We're gonna wait for Richard, but if you guys have questions, hit me. And I'm gonna go over the final result. Now that you guys have seen the placement, let me go in and do the final result with you. Richard says he's requested. Oh, so perfect. Gotta find. Hey, Richard. Hey girl! Hey, miss you! How are you? I'm so good, I can't believe I finished in the nick of time. Can I just say, that was like powerhouse boiling, man. You're just a machine. I can't Thank believe you. how fast you did that and how, how accurate you are and clean you are with your sections. So, so, so good. Thank you. It's like the thing I think I'm really good at. Like, you know, with hair, there's like something that you're just like good at. Boiling's like my thing. Big time. One of the questions, Gina, that came through um, was how can people at home, I guess, speed up the process of foiling? Because we know if you can spend less time, but still have a great impact on the result, you're going to have more clients, which in turn makes more money. 
How do you, I guess, start with encouraging or leading somebody to be quicker with foiling? Okay, so I have two answers, and one is a tough love answer, and one is just a nice soft Give it. answer. Okay? Give it to us. So the softy answer is make sure you take clean sections because if you have an amazing blueprint, you'll foil faster. Okay, that's one thing. Very good. Okay, the next thing is if you want to be fast, you have the option to be fast in a year or three months from now, right? You have the option of speeding up simply by practicing. So when I was a salon owner with employees, my stylists would come out of school and they'd be so slow at foiling. They would right. foil like in two hours a half right. highlight. And then one day they would be like, I'm fast. I don't know what happened. I'm like, you did 50,000 foils, you've leveled up. And they're just right. like, but they could have been practicing and going and doing those 50,000 foils on their own. So the thing is, is like, the, the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is successful people make the time to do things that unsuccessful people don't want to do. Great. So you want to make sure that if you want to practice, if you want to elevate your skills, put it on your calendar, get your mannequin out and time yourself. It's yeah. the only way. Or you can naturally become faster as your career gets further. That's great. That's great <laughs> advice. The, the, the next question I have for you is nag. Natural Ash Gold, you teach this all the time. It's a question that came up. Please share with us what NAG is all about. So it's just creating a balanced formula. So I was struggling with my formulation when I was just starting out in the industry. Formulation has never been my strong suit. So I always needed tricks to get me by. And I honestly use a lot of the same uh, formulas all the time because I'd rather focus on placement. So when it comes to nag, nag was always like my, if you don't know what to do, do nag because it's a balanced formula, natural, ash, gold. So I did 10 N, 10 N G, and then nine and a and i have all of the um, natural ash gold in one bowl um it's been a trick i've used for 10 years or longer than that it's something that my mentor taught me when i was at my first salon and it works all the time and it's a beautiful tone as you beautiful. can see just very even and it's nice and bright beautiful. without i just it's i don't like when it gets muddy and it really doesn't unless the hair is like you know unbalanced but this just balances it right out Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, we know we know as hairdressers, pre-liner can, I guess, damage it. How do you defy damage? <laughs> I always use defy damage, but we always use the Pro Series 1 and Pro Series 2, and that's gonna give you five times stronger hair, more even lift, and it's just gonna make your guests so much happier. Is that Joyka, defy damage? Joyka! Awesome. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Last question, where can people see the finished result? The finished result is right here. Oh, and I'll there post you it go. on my page. There you go. The finished result is right there. Maybe can you post it on your social media so we can also see it on your stories or something? Absolutely. I'll post that for everyone. And thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. And thank you, Henkel and Joyco and everybody for doing this. I'm so grateful and I'm so glad that you chose me to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. We all learned something and we all feel inspired. Thank you for sharing from your heart, from your experience. Thank you very much, Gina. Thank you. See you guys soon. Watching, Thank you. For everyone watching, you can jump on uh, either my link in my bio to continue with the education because we have some incredible educators coming up. Gina, on behalf of everyone here at Henkel, we love you. Thank you. Hey well, that was incredible. Talk about talk about uh, you know foiling really quickly. Gina's very thorough, such a great educator. Be sure to follow her on Instagram and just learn. This is the time to grow with the flow, not just go with the flow. Instead of doing nothing at home, let's maximize this time. Let's invest in ourselves so that we can prepare and propel ourselves into the next season to come. So use this time wisely so that you can grow and learn as many techniques as possible. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone who's just tuned in. My name is Richard Manor. Uh, I'm your host for the last segment of today's 24-hour education. Today, we're attempting to break the Guinness World Record by doing uh, the longest live educational stream ever. So you, you and I together are joining to be able to hopefully break this record. We still have hours left of amazing education. And don't forget to share this streaming link with your friends. Let's get as many people involved. Let's share the education with everybody. 
and uh, let's also donate if you can. Next, we have an incredible, incredible artist. He's a friend of mine. His work, I think, speaks for itself. His name is Lin Fan, or you might know him as B Seen. He has uh, 384,000 Instagram followers. He's Schwarzkopf's artistic team member. He specializes in Asian blonding, metallic pastels, long layers, lobs, and color corrections. Today, he's going to work on his signature Bob Lob Cut Slash Color. Over to you at BC. To the store and get the rest of the color works because it's discontinued, which is sad. This is one of my favorite things to use. But the Passa Olive has 15 grams of the green color works, um, and that's one to one ratio with the seven volume developer, uh, developer. So, screenshots. Okay, now to the cut. Again, I like to do this dry so I can see where all the hair falls. Just brushing it out. And I'm going to be using my arc shears and my YS Park cutting comb. These are like my two faves. And I'm using, I think this is a five and a half today? Six. Six inch shear. And when I'm looking at this bob, right, I like to look at where, a lot of my clients will say like their ends are straggly, kind of like this, right? So you can already see where that lob is gonna be. Look at that, you can already see that. And I like to keep the longest layers in the front pretty long. And I just visualize the line going up. So what I like to do is stand back and just visualize the line and just cut straight in. And when I'm cutting, I don't stop. I just cut straight through into the back. Um, I like to sometimes leave it a little bit longer so my client feels more comfortable with the cut. But in this case, she has nothing to say. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it where I see it, right? And you want the hair to kind of just lay in its natural, natural form, okay? So longest piece there. And when you cut, just go for it. Don't stop, don't get scared. Um, I think when you stop and start again, stop and start again, you start to mess with the line, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue and just keep on going. See how I didn't stop? Already you can see how pretty that is. So when I'm doing my bobs, I really like my bobs to have a lot of weight. Um, when your client wants like a, they like to say like a textured bob, the wrong thing to do is to go up on top and start layering the crap out of it. What's gonna happen is it's gonna, she's gonna have a ball on her head. All the layers will be sitting on top and you lose a lot of the weight at the bottom. I think what makes this cut so pretty is how heavy and blunt that line is. And what I do is I texturize from the inside, okay? So again, I just went and I cut straight through, okay? And you can already see that looks amazing on her. Now we're in the back. She's gonna look down a little bit and I'm just gonna continue. You guys see that? So this is just setting the perimeter. I'm gonna go back and show you guys how to texturize it. So now we're on this side. Can you guys already see how cool that's looking? Don't stop, continue the cut. And you can see how nice and blunt that, that line is, and it's nice and heavy. We're gonna go inside and texturize that. So don't be scared that, oh my God, what did I do? It's so blunt, you know. She looks great already, what do you guys think? That's the Instagram picture right there, shoot. All right, so after you cut the perimeter and your client likes it, I'm happy with it. 
she's like smiling right now. You can't see, but she's definitely feeling herself right now. Right? After you set that, oh, there's a little straggler right here. You're gonna go into the back of the knee. See, so now I'm gonna really clean up this line, okay? So what I do is I section out the nape, all right? And I'm gonna work on my interior, okay? So now I get to really detail this cut, all right? Wire spark comb goes in, point cutting to make that line nice and straight. You guys all see that? Okay. And I like to do what I call like a soft undercut. And I'm gonna, the nape is the part that's really bulky. Um, so what I like to do is section off the top of that nape layer, or nape section, all right? I'm gonna lift it all the way up 90 degrees and point cut heavy. So what I'm doing is I'm removing weight, which on a bob is usually the point that, that the area that's like really heavy. So go ahead and go in there and shatter that, okay? And when you first do this, it is a little scary because you're cutting the hairs really short. But what you're doing is you're making your client's bob fall really nice and it won't be too bulky in the back. That make sense? So when you drop all this, it's all just gonna fall over, okay? Free fall, and then you're gonna detail that line by point cutting. Okay, and then again, lift the next section up, point cut through. This is a super easy and fast haircut for you to do. Um, and because the look of it is so trendy and on trend, you can charge you know good money for a really fast haircut. Once again. Moving my way up, detailing that line, making sure it's nice and even. Moving up, same thing, point cut. You can already see how pretty this bob is looking. You added so much movement and texture without even touching these top layers. That makes sense? Okay, let's back a little bit. Take a water break. So if you guys have questions about the cut, I'm not done, I'm just taking a water break. Comment below and the host will pull the questions out and get to them later. So now that I've done a lot of my, you know, texturizing inside of the, around the nape area, right, I'm going to continue on to the left side. So I'm going to work the parietal ridge lower, okay? So underneath the parietal ridge, oh, look at that color, guys, can you guys see that? Holy smokes. Anyways, sorry, I got, <laughs> I got a little distracted by how nice the color is. <laughs> okay, so now the parietal ridge is sectioned out. I'm going to work the parietal ridge and down, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and brush the hair, making sure I detail that line to where I like it, okay? Take a small section about an inch thick. I'm gonna lift this up, and we're gonna do what we did when we did the soft undercut in the bottom. Go ahead and shatter that, remove that weight, and drop it down, okay? And another area that I like to work on is this corner right here. 
it's where the nape, the, cor the top of the nape falls really heavy. So I like to section that little part out. Okay, this right here. This always bugs me on a lot of bobs that I see. So I want to work right here. Remembering not to cut too much into the perimeter, working my way on the layers on the interior. That makes sense? Lifting it up, debulking and shattering. Okay. Boom. You guys see that? And I still see a lot of weight down here. I'm gonna do it one more time. And if you're watching, I'm being really careful not to get into the hairline because that is your perimeter and you'll cut holes in there, okay? Beautiful, look at that. That's really pretty, okay? And you can really see that color come out. And again, this is all interior, guys. Up here, I like to leave my top layers pretty heavy because I like the bob to have fullness um, and have long layers. A lot of my clients like to have longer layers around their face, um, longer layers for the bob. They don't like it too stacked up to the, you know, at the back. Okay, really nice. Now, I go ahead and just work on the other side, do the same thing, the parietal ridge. Section that out. Again, I'm gonna look at that color. Man, that thing is sweet. Okay. Point cut the detail. Taking a small section up top. Again, not touching the perimeter, okay? Anything around the hairline is going to be your perimeter. Lift it straight up, shatter, and drop it down. Same thing on this side. We're going to work again on this bulky corner of that nape, okay? Straight up. and bring it down, okay? I'm mimicking what I did on the other side, all right? Being careful not to cut into the perimeter, looking at the weight. You're not trying to remove all the weight. You still want the weight there. There's a, a nice balance where weight and texture kind of collide, you know what I mean? See that? And sometimes I just like to like, you know, run my hands through the hair to look at it. And I'm really liking the way that it's looking. Um, this has no layers up top. You see that? I'm barely gonna put layers up at the top. I do a little bit, but not too much, all right? So now we're gonna go up to the crown area, okay? This bulkiness there. So we're gonna section off half the crown to see what's going on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift this straight out from the scalp, okay? And I see that's where the bob is. I'm gonna go ahead and visualize, detail that, shatter that a little bit, make that blend, let it down, there you go. You guys see that? One more time. Right there, see some weight, go in, attack the weight, bring it back down. Right now we're at the crown still, you guys see that? Really liking the way it's coming along. Again, if you guys have any questions on this haircut, leave it in the comments and the host will get to you. Okay.
Back of the count again. I don't want to stack this too much. I'm not trying to get like a super stacked bob. I'm going for like a very textured, blunt looking um, bob. So now I work my way up to the top. So what I'm looking at is how heavy, like you know, some of the long layers are here. I don't want to chop into it too much where the layers are super short, right? I want to keep the layers here, but kind of go in and just touch it a little bit to make it match with the entire haircut. I'm going straight up, cut some triangles in there. There we go. That looks good. And guys, like these 70s bangs are really coming back where they're like really short. What do you guys think of if I did some 70s bangs, like some shaggy 70s bangs that kind of flare out a little bit? What do you guys think? I think that look pretty cool, huh? Kind of like that right there. So this haircut's all about feeling. Visualizing your cut, visualizing that line, movement. So for those of you who are joining in late, I prepped this color earlier today. Um, I signed up for a haircut to show you guys, but then I was like, why not just go ahead and do the color and I'll be able to show them something cool while I cut. Wow. What do you guys think? Final details, final touches. I want to give her some, some 70s bangs that kind of flare out. What do you guys think? I think so. So I'm going to slide cut this. Okay. I'm going to pull it over to the left. So she has the middle part. Pull it over to the left. Slide through. Same thing, mimic, okay. Slide through. That's super pretty. You guys like that? Give her the 70 shag bangs. Look at that. And that, I just kind of had a feeling that I just wanted it to flare out like the 70, so. Really in right now, really cool. Super easy haircut to do. Um, keeping in mind not to take too much weight off the top. Getting the weight off the interior where, you know, the heaviness lies around the nape, around the corners of the nape, um, coming up to the crown, matching up your shape. Don't cut into the perimeter too much, you'll cut holes in it. I have no idea how much time I have left. So again, we can talk about the color real quick, um, and we'll go over the whole thing again. So for this model, I, I did a mushroom brown, um, formulas right here. I used all Schwarzkopf Agora Royal Permanent, okay, for the mushroom brown, and you can see that right there. Okay. And the pastel olive is what I call this color. The reason I don't call it mint is because mint is a little more like, has a little bit like more of like a vibrant hue to it. 
Um, I added 7 7 7 um, to this olive right here to make it look like that succulent green. And I did my signature bob. And if you, again, if you guys are just tuning in, the formula is right there. I'm going to take a little off here. Look at that. You guys like that? Look at that pretty color, guys. And this is all short stuff, okay? And to get this tone, you just have to lighten them to maybe like an eight or a nine. Um, definitely have to learn to tweak your, your boosters and your formulas to achieve certain tones. And through experience, I learned to get this succulent hue of this like very beautiful natural looking green. Um, you have to add a little bit of this, uh, a copper color. So I use 7 7 7 right there to really bring out that olive tongue. If it was mint, it would look more like vibrant blue, vibrant green on the pastel side. But I wanted to make it muted and olive -y. What do you guys think? I need some hearts. Man, if this was a real mono man, I would take a picture of this thing right now. Look at this. Cool. What I'm doing now is just detailing, but I'm really happy with the cut. Love the color we cut together. This is like modern meets past. Look at that. She loves it. Again, so this beautiful color. Um, formulas in the back. If you guys want to take a couple seconds to go ahead and screenshot that. Cool. Super quick haircut to do. Again, I'm going to walk you guys through that. You cut the perimeter first without stopping. Don't be scared. Um, at first, it's really scary to do when you just go ahead and chop it. But I like to have my model look to the left a little bit so I can see that line, okay? Cut that one here. Match up this side, okay? Move to the back, and then you start texturizing from the inside. So, again, if you look at this haircut, it looks like it has a lot of texture and a lot of movement but there are barely any layers on the top. You guys notice that? It's all the inside. All the weight has been removed, so you have that nice heaviness, but not too heavy where it's laying super heavy on the back. So working um, away from the hairline, uh, working on top of that, below the parietal ridge, because once you get up to the parietal ridge, then you start getting into the layers, okay, and you don't want to get these too short. This has been super cool, seeing all the educators teaching the world, all around the world. I love that. I really, I'm really digging these bangs, man. It's almost like a, it's a, it's a curtain bang. That's why they're called curtain bangs. Because <laughs> it looks like a curtain. Well, I mean, that was it for the class. 
Um, I would love to you know, answer any questions that you guys have. Go ahead and comment below. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead. Um, I'll have my camera girl um, go ahead and read them out to me. Hold on, scrolling. Well, someone asked what the placement for your um, foils were, but you want to explain? Okay, so let me explain to you guys how I did the color. So if you look closely, right in here, it is a band, okay? It is like, almost like a headband. And it goes all the way through the front. Do you guys see that? So this entire section is sectioned off and colored separately after the base has been put in. You guys see the separation right there? So when you're doing this root melt right here, you wanna take that pretty low so, the, so that money piece can shine really bright. And you didn't use foils at all, right? No, I did not use foils. Um, this, this model had like a level eight, level nine all over. Um, I was lucky enough to get a model that was already blonde. So, you know, study your formulas to see what these colors do to someone that has a level nine. It's gonna be different from a level seven, level eight, even a level 10. Formulas change and you have to start learning how to play with that. Do you have any tips for lightening Asian hair? Tips for lightening Asian hair, yes. Um, it's, it's hard. It is very rare that an Asian can lift to level nine, level 10 in one process. So I always anticipate two sessions of lightening um, to get you to that nice level nine that you want before you tongue. How will this fade since it's permanent color? This will fade really nicely. It would fade more on the you know silvery platinum side. Um, underneath of this, she is really bright. You can tell by how, how bright that pastel color is. So underneath of here, she's pretty light, so it'll, it'll fade, you know, ashy platinum. So what was your starting canvas? Level nine. Mm -hmm. A clean level nine to yellow. Bleach out? Bleach out. Yep. Um, this is according for your cut. Do you use texturizing shears or razors ever? Um, I do use texturizing shears sometimes, but I can get the job done with just a straight blade. Uh, these have been my go-tos recently in the, the Arc Phantoms. I really love them for um, all my, my looks. Mm -hmm. I like to notch, use a notcher texturizing shears that have like big circles on them just to like wow my clients because they like seeing those crazy texturizing shears with like, big circles in it. Um, but I don't need them to create this look. Why do you add the copper? Okay, so the question is why did I add copper to my formulas, especially to the olive? If you don't add the copper, it looks very blue. So if you guys have ever attempted to create a mint or green, like a light green, using permanent colors, it comes out blue. Um, what the, the copper does is kind of cancel that and make it into a beautiful green. Um, it's almost like a beautiful accident. You know how sometimes you try to do silver and it turns green? You're doing it on purpose to create a pretty green and not an accidental green. If that makes sense. Can you see the hair? Mm-hmm. Pretty? Why do you choose permanent color over demi-permanent? Um, I like the richness of the permanent color. So if you look at this, it looks really rich. And sometimes I feel like if I try to do fashion toning with a demi, sometimes it goes a little hollow. Um, I like the like opacity of the way the colors look using permanent. Mm. Why E1? Why E1? To make it smoky. Um, E1 by itself looks like a dusty level seven purple um, by itself. So when I add that into my formulas, it makes it really um, smoky. 
How many minutes do we have left to go live with Richard? You now? have four. Okay. I'm just going through. I haven't talked to Richard in a long time, man. I miss you, buddy. Can't wait to see you. Were you worried about bleeding when rinsing the color out? No, so this is not a direct application. So when you rinse it, you don't give it barely any time to um, process. So that's another uh, reason why I love using permanents because I know that the brown isn't gonna melt into the green because once you rinse it, it doesn't even have any time to, to process. How long do you leave the toners on? Uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I think, is it Richard Mana? Yep. He says, let's jump on. What's up, man? How what are up, you? dude? Wow, it's been so long, man. Dude, I don't think I've seen you since Chicago, man. Like a long time ago. Like four years ago, Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. This is awesome. I love this. Dude, you. I just want to say from the get go, I love, love, love your work. You know, it's not just about color choice. It's all. About, it's also about color placement. And your pastels and your vivids are so tasteful. And that's Thank something that I always kind of like share with whenever I do education. Technique is important, but taste is just as important. Can you talk to us a little bit about, I guess, what inspires your taste? Um, I, I, I really believe that fashion tones are definitely in, and they've been in for a long time, but I, I there's like a, I'd say like a very clean, classy way to bring them um, to life. Yeah. They don't have to be super bright and bold all the time. Sometimes people just don't like seeing it too harsh. Right. And I wanted to find a way to, you know, bring it tastefully, like you said. Yeah. 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 And you do. You do such a great job. We've had so many people asking so many questions. So I'm going to shoot a couple of questions at you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tell us, I know you talked about this mushroom brown formula, but can you do a quick little recap? Because I think a lot of people missed it. And that color on that gorgeous haircut is just to die for, man. Just you, to man. die for. Can you just do a quick recap on the actual tones and products that you use? Yeah, so for the mushroom brown, if you guys can see really closely, it's a really good balance between gray and brown. Um, it's a really hot color right now. Uh, I use all Schwarzkopf USA. Let's see here. Right there. There it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Scorch Coffee USA, Agora Royal, to achieve this beautiful brown, mushroom brown color right there. So, you can find all of these in the Schwarz Coffee Agora Royal line. Um, would, you, would you take a screenshot of that later and put it on your story so people of course. can actually check it out? Of course, of course. That would be awesome. The next question I have for you is, what could substitute green color works? Um, right now, to my knowledge, there is no substitute. So it's pretty sad. I would say run to the store right now before they're all gone. Okay. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. What, what is the, um, what is the best toner to maintain that color? Because one of the questions that a lot of people, one of the concerns a lot of clients have is they walk out with this beautiful vivid color or this beautiful pastel color. One, two weeks later, it's just washed out and it's just blonde. What do you recommend for those clients, for those hairdressers to recommend to those clients to maintain that beautiful color that they've walked out with? Um, I just recommend not shampooing uh, too often. Right. Uh, you know, these colors, they shine really nice uh, with a nice conditioner. So, you know, very gentle shampoo and don't shampoo too often. But okay. they shouldn't be toning too much at home. It adds a lot of buildup to the hair, so... I like to make sure they come into the salon. I was going to say, do you have a service for, for them just to come into the salon and you just you just put a toner and charge them purely for maybe that toner and a, a blow dry? Or for a retone for this, it's it's a full service. You know, they get their roots done, they get the whole 
to get the works. So beautiful. Last question for you. You are kind of known for doing incredible, amazing colors, but you're also an incredible cutter. I think you've shocked a lot of people by doing a beautiful haircut today. And I think it's been an inspiration for a lot of people because sometimes they could be one dimensional. I think you've come out the box and just done a beautiful haircut and explained beautifully what you did with the color. How, what, what, what was your thought behind that? Like, is that something you do now more cutting education? Well, when I first got into the industry, I was a very passionate Vidal Sassoon inspired hair cutter. So right. I was obsessed over cutting and I actually, how ironic that I actually didn't like color because right. all the girls in hair school were doing color. So um, I told myself that I, you know, this year, 2020, I would take cutting more serious. So I'm back to the cutting. What, what a perfect time to master your art right now during quarantine, man. Yeah. Well, listen, on behalf of everybody, thank you so, so much for just sharing your expertise. If you don't follow Be Seen, follow Be Seen, because he's incredible. And for those who are watching, if you want to continue with the education, click on the link in my bio, because it's going to be incredible education of the next few hours. Bro, so good to see you. I hope we yes. get to catch up when this pandemic is over. Yes, of course, man. Thank you so much. Everyone take care, stay safe. Thank you so much, man. Much love, brother. Yeah. Guys, that was Lin Fan or at B Scene. If you don't follow him, follow him. His work is incredible. Not only is he amazing with the technical side, his taste levels are on another level. So we've still got so much incredible education left for you. So wherever you are around the world, whether it's in Australia, it might be the morning there or in Europe or in America, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have so many more hours left of incredible artists and incredible education. Don't forget guys, share this link with everybody because we're trying to raise as much money as possible in addition to what Henkel is giving to be able to help those in need and struggling during this quarantine season. You know, we're a community and whenever we face any challenges, we obviously stick together and this is what we're doing with Hairdressers United. Next up, we have the incredible Paul Wintner, or at We Host Stylist is his Instagram handle. He's based in the USA. He's the Alterna Global Educational Manager, and he's a corporate trainer as well. Today, he will be sharing some hairstyling and braiding tips. Over to you, Paul. Do you have something fun that you can do and try on them? So we will go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna bring in um, well, before I bring in my friend, I just want to let you guys know that I haven't actually been fully quarantined, um, so don't judge me, but luckily we did both get tested for COVID-19 and we have come out negative, so are you ready to come? Okay, so sh she's ready. She's a little shy. She's not going to be very talkative, but this is Catherine. Um, so Catherine, um, she has already been a little bit styled for you guys, so I'm just going to take her off the thing so you can see. I've kind of went ahead and prepped her so that we can get right into the style so that we can complete this within the allotted time slots uh, that we have. So just to kind of give you an idea of how we started off sectioning. So I started off sectioning her hair at the recession balance point. This is like where the, the comb leaves the top of the head on her left hand side. And I just followed that line all the way around and then around in the back as well. And this is what we call the upper crown ridge in Alterna. It's actually where the comb leaves the top of the head. So that's coming around the back and then again coming around the side up to the recession balance point on the other side. So that sections out the top section of the head. And then I sectioned out the sides from the back by coming just behind the ear, we call that the ear base, at an angle backwards. Um, we're gonna do some fun rope braids, French rope braids on this section. And I did the same thing on this side. And you can see I've already styled her in a French rope braid on this side. Um, and uh, brought it back in. And then on the back side, I brushed all of this down into a ponytail, then did a topsy-turvy ponytail. And then I took the rope braid, and I'll show you on this side when I do it, and just tucked it around the ponytail and into the ponytail. The fun thing I love about this technique is it's actually a fun up style that is not gonna actually utilize, well, it's gonna utilize one bobby pin, which is one thing that I've really loved about Alterna styling and braiding techniques. Um, when I started as an Alterna educator back in 2012, I actually hated uh, 
upstyling. It was probably one of my least favorite things to do. Um, but at my first uh, education conference for Alterna, um, I learned some of these amazing techniques that I'm sharing with you guys today. And I actually was able to, for the first time, do an upstyle that actually looked great, that was done effortlessly, that was very easy to do. So the fun thing about this is that once you learn these techniques, you can take your own creativity and really make it your own. And really it's something that you can utilize in several different ways. So don't just the focus on the style that I'm doing for you guys today really take the time and just understand these techniques as I go through them so that when you go back you can actually be creative and find your own creative ways of making a fun hairstyle or upstyle or braid for your clients so um, just to give you an idea so when you can see like down here her hair is very textured so I actually set her last night with some air dry balm I used uh, the new My Hair My Canvas air dry balm. It actually is just launched. And it's a, a really great air dry balm that really helps the hair to dry quicker. Um, and it just gave, I did a little rope braid with the hair in the back to really give these nice, soft, textured waves here. So that's why this already has that texture. And then I went in and just pinned, blue dried this all back. I infused it with our. Um, Soaring High Volumizing Blowout Mist to help to set some volume in the hair. And then I just did a nice blowout. And then I went in and did some volume rolling on the front two sections. So I'm gonna show you a technique called volume rolling. So volume rolling is a technique in Alterna that actually is a way to create volume in the hair um, without having to have to go back in after you've styled the hair and go in and like back comb or tease the hair to kind of build that foundation into the style. Because a lot of times clients will want some volume in the crown before they leave, but then you go in and you build that in and then they leave with this like rat's nest in their hair and then the wind blows and they see it and it doesn't look really great. So this is just a fun technique that you can actually do where it actually will build that uh, foundation into the hair but out it feeling like a big rat's nest. So I'm gonna start. So I've sectioned this top section into four sections. I've actually used about a one and a half inch section per section because the barrel that I'm using is a one and a quarter inch. So you really don't want to use um, anything larger, too much longer as far as the spacing in your uh, sections than the width of the iron that you're using. So I'm gonna just come in and I'm gonna take my comb and I just wanna smooth out this section first uh, to get all this hair nice and smooth. And I'm gonna use a curling iron to actually build in and heat up some topage. So topage is a, a word that we use in Alterna, which is another word for backcombing or French lacing. Um, and it is just a simple technique that helps to build a foundation of topage in the hair. Before I do, I'm gonna actually come in and spray the hair with our new City Slay Shielding Hairspray uh, from My Hair My Canvas. And I'm just gonna spray it in the direction of the way that the hair cuticle falls. And I'm just gonna spray it in both directions. I love this because it actually has a uh, heat protection to it, so it protects up to 450 degrees. And I'm gonna move her this way a little bit so you can see me. She's not the star. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you want to hold the hair at about 45 degrees angles from where it lives because when you hold it at a 45 degree angle, that's going to allow the curl to land where? On base. So before I actually go in and show you this technique, I want to just show you my comb up close to the camera, the technique I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to hold the comb. Uh, so if you can see this comb, it's very, the teeth are very fine, close together, and they're also very short teeth. So the type of teeth that you use in a comb does matter. If you were to use a comb, say like this, with wider teeth and actually longer, um, it would just give you a different effect when you're doing the topage technique. So you wanna make sure that you find, um, these are just like the basic combs that I got at Sally's that are just like these you know, cheap plastic combs you can get for like, you know, 10 for $10. Um, but it is actually a really great uh, comb for doing this method. So you're gonna come in about two inches from the uh, base of the hairline, and you're gonna start with the comb parallel to the hair with the, the teeth facing up, and you're gonna do a scooping motion in the hair, and then come down. And then you're gonna do another scooping motion, and then come down. So this is the movement that you're actually doing with the hair. 
And again, um, if you're tuning in, please ask questions. Just know that I can't read them because I'm blind and I can't wear my glasses because uh, the reflex off of the ring light. So if you have questions at the end, we will have a couple questions come in and I'll be sure to go back through and answer any questions at the end of this. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your support and for being here uh, through this. And so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start two inches from the top of the hair with the teeth facing up. Let me get a little closer so you can see. All right, so I've got it at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna come in with the teeth facing up. I'm gonna do a C-shaped motion and push down. You wanna make sure when you're doing this that you're actually pinching the hair at the top so that it actually is holding the hair taut. And then you can see like when I turn her that it's actually like a nice triangle section that you're pinching that hair and holding it up. And then when you come in again, you wanna make sure that you're not going through the front of the section with the teeth but you're just staying on the back side of the hair, creating a nice foundation of topage on the back of that curl, the back of that section. So if you look at the front of the hair, you can see it's super smooth in the front because I didn't come through, but has all of that texture in the back. I like to say party in the back, smooth in the front. So then you're gonna come back in with our uh, City Slay hairspray. Just hit it one more time with a shot. And then you're gonna come in with your Marcel iron you're gonna come in and heat up at the base of that curl really nicely to really get that hair nice and hot. You wanna do one twist around the curl to really heat that up, just to make sure that that topage is getting nice and heated through on the hair. Um, and if you're worried about burning your client's head, you can actually come in with a carbon comb and slide that right underneath to make sure that she's not burning uh, her head with this technique. So I just like to slide the comb in. And then once it's heated up, I'm gonna just clamp a few pieces out and then continue to curl and wrap it around. And then I'm gonna just continue to clamp, release, and then curl around. And once you've got a few pieces in, you can actually take the comb out because you've got that hair as a buffer between the scalp and the iron. So you just continue to click and circle it around until it gets nice and hot. So you can see it looks very smooth on the outside and it's all that texture is inside the curl there. So once it's actually fully heated up, you should just be able to twist the iron and that will hold that curl in place. And then you just wanna come in and hold it all together with a long duckbill clip and let it cool. So I think things are always best learned in repetition. So I'm gonna just show you guys that one more time. I'm not gonna spend the whole time on volume rolling, but um, I've already done these front two here, but I wanted to really just give you a great uh, idea on how to set this in. Um, the nice thing about this technique is you can do this just in the crown if you just wanted to build some volume in the crown of the head. You can do this all over the head if you wanna get three-dimensional volume throughout the hair. It's a really nice set to do if you do it all over the head as a nice set for like doing up styles because it kind of builds that cushion and that foundation in the hair without the need um, to go back in once you've already done the set and uh, put topage or, or back combing into the hair. So, I just touched my face, you know. Are, is it just me or are more of you guys aware of like every time you touch your face, you're like, ah. So luckily I washed my hands before this. Uh, so anyways, again, you're gonna come in about two, uh, two comb lengths above the hair. You're holding it at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna do that c shape motion so you're going to do a scoop with the hair and then come down a scoop and come down a scoop and come down and you just want to do enough to it's about one wrap around the curl and then it's again smooth in the front if for some reason you mess up you can just take that long tail comb and just bring it across the front of the section and that'll help to smooth out that front section to make sure that you don't have the party in the front right so come back in with the city slate hairspray give it a nice shot and then again, you're gonna come in with that Marcel iron, heat it up at the base, get it nice and hot. You don't wanna clamp down right away because you don't wanna put any clamp marks in the uh, hair if you clamp it. So you wanna do about a 360 spin before you actually clamp the hair down. So as I'm pulling this through, so just to kind of give you some background, like I said, I've been an Alterna hair care uh, educator since 2012. And the thing that I love about our industry is that, um, you know, 
is that we like to share ideas. Um, we're not selfish. We're not trying to like just come up with the best things and keep them to ourselves. And it's through the education and through hairstylist education that we actually are elevating our craft um, and helping other people to elevate their craft. And I love that we give it away and just help other people to become better hairstylists and to become better in their industry because when we elevate each other, we elevate the industry. And you know, I wish that I could take credit for these techniques that I'm teaching you here today, but I didn't come up with them. Actually, these are techniques that I've learned, um, I've perfected, and then I've gone on to teach, and that we do teach uh, in Alterna. Um, shout out to my mentors, um, Michael, Sean, and Rita. You know who you are. Um, but you know, the great thing about uh, these techniques is that anyone can use them. You can take it back to your salon and you're going to see amazing results um, and you're going to just hopefully be a little bit uh, inspired to be able to go back and do something like this on your clients when you're back in the salon. So you can see on this one, I don't actually even need to put a clip in here. It actually is just sitting nicely on the curl behind it, but I'll go ahead and do that just to set it in. All right. And now I'm going to bring you guys to the side. So on this side of her hair, I've actually flat ironed all of this hair to make it nice and smooth um, because I actually want to do a rope braid. And guys, did you guys see the infinity braid that happened like, I guess it was two or three sessions ago? It was incredible. It was gorgeous. I was like, I was getting self-conscious because I'm doing a rope braid. I was like, I don't know if mine looks that good. Um, but you know, I, um, I've just, again, I've been super inspired by all the artists that are, uh, have been on already and super uh, excited to actually be a part of this event and share this with you guys. So I'm gonna show you guys something called the organic braid. And if you have heard of the organic braid, you're screaming. And if you haven't heard of the organic braid, your brains are about to be on the floor because uh, it happens every single time I teach the class. Um, if I've shown someone's never seen the organic braid, Guaranteed, mind blown. So I'm not gonna build it up too much, but because her hair is super shiny and silky, I actually wanna add in a little bit of texture spray just to the bottom of the hair because I wanna to help to have a little bit of grit in the hair because I'm gonna show you something called the organic braid where the hair is actually gonna naturally braid on itself without the need of a hair tie at the end. Because so many times you actually uh, will be, at, you know, on a Ladies, if you've ever been out and about and you want to just get your hair off your head and you don't have a hair tie, um, so you know the only option is a bun, well now you actually have a fun, you'll have a fun uh, braiding technique that you can use to be able to braid your hair and not need a hair tie to kind of hold it together. There's also so many different ways that you can use this with any kind of other upstyles. You can use it on several different braids. You can use it on a uh, French braid, a Dutch braid, a fishtail braid. Um, pretty much any braid that you have three, uh, three or more strands, you can actually finish the braid with this technique to uh, lock that braid in place. So what I'm gonna do is actually take a clip and I'm gonna actually clip the bottom of the hair, if you can see. The reason why we're clipping it is we actually don't want to separate the hair all the way down to the bottom. And as hairstylists, when you're braiding or anyone when they're braiding, you're just so used to separating the ends so that they don't get tangled. So we're actually gonna do the opposite of what you're inclined to do. So you're gonna clip it at the end. Now where you clip it will be where the end of the braid is. So if you clip it up higher, you'll have more hair at the end. If you clip it down here, you'll have less hair. So basically you're gonna just take three strands and you're gonna separate them out like this, right? And you're gonna just open it up all the way down to the base of the curl. And I just wanna make sure you can see this. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. So uh, again, you're gonna just take it back a little, bit like that. a little bit like that. All right, so you're gonna take these three sections and you're gonna just braid the way you would normally braid hair. You're gonna go right to center and open it up all the way to the bottom. You're gonna go actually left to center and then you're gonna go right to center, opening it up all the way down to the bottom. And you're gonna go left to center, just the way you would normally braid, but you're just opening up that braid so that it opens all the way to the bottom where the clip is. So right, to, left to center, right to center, left to center, right to center. And you're really just gonna be focusing on where your fingers are braiding. And what you're gonna notice is that it's actually gonna start braiding from the bottom of the clip to the middle of the hair, which is pretty interesting. You're like, okay, that's interesting. I'm, I'm following you, what's happening here? So then you're gonna keep rolling. You're gonna keep braiding right to left to center, right to center, left to center. And eventually you're gonna get to this place where you can't actually braid any further. So you're gonna get stuck. Like you're gonna be like, oh no, what do I do? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out the clip 
And if uh, you just let go of this right now, it would just come unraveled. So what you actually have to do is just take this entire braid and stick it through one of those holes, like so, and you're just gonna pull it all the way through and lock it in place. And that actually will lock the entire braid in place so that it's not coming out. It's got some fine hairs right around the bottom that are holding that braid in place and keeping it nice and taut. Right, mind blown, right? I know. Uh, so, the, you know, uh, you're not here in the room, but I'm just assuming there's just brains on the floor all across the world. Um, so again, you've got uh, just a fun braid. So again, just for this, this is just for an example. I'm actually not doing this right here. I am gonna do it towards the end of the style so you can see it again. But you just open up this braid and you, it allows you to kind of just have some fun and play with the texture. So you can actually create a nice soft uh, braid. The fun thing too though, is that if you come to the bottom, you can actually, since there's not a rubber band holding this together, you can find a piece of that hair that's actually gonna slip on the strand and you can actually cinch it all the way up and create some fun textures with those braids as well. What? I know. So the cool thing about this too is like, say someone has a ton of hair in the back of their head and you wanna do an upstyle, I will do a French braid and then uh, fit, do an organic braid on the end, cinch it up and then pin it. And then I'll use that back section as a cushion to actually use for pinning when I'm doing my upstyles and bringing things back. So it's a pretty fun technique. Now, if you do not tell a client or someone how to take out an organic braid, they're going to hate you. So you wanna make sure that you show them how to take out an organic braid. And all you need is something pointy, an end of a tail comb, a nail, um, a pen, something. You wanna just come through, and there's a couple of hairs at the bottom here that are holding this braid in place. And if you pull down at the bottom, eventually you're just gonna clear those hairs away. And once you clear those hairs away, it's just gonna naturally unravel like a normal braid with no kinks, no uh, tears in the hair, no ripping, no breakage. If you do not clear away those hair strands, it's game over. You're gonna lose like a lot of hair. So make sure that you show your clients how to take out an organic braid if you're putting it into their hair. So that is the organic braid. Now I'm gonna jump into a French uh, rope braid. So a French rope braid is the, similar to what I did on this side here. Um, we're just taking this back to kind of create a nice sleek look on both sides because we want it to be um, voluminous on the top and sleek on the sides. I'm gonna lower her down a little bit just so she's a little bit more at my level. And so what you wanna do, this is where I take out my pinky ring. I'm gonna basically just section this off. All right. And I'm going to divide this into two sections. If you can see, and I'm gonna just do it at a diagonal. So I've got two sections of the hair. And I went ahead beforehand and just used our Glow For It Universal Gloss when I flat iron the hair, because this actually helps to create a, um, a nice shine to the hair. It also protected up to 450 degrees. So you're gonna take your two sections and you're gonna start on the uh, right side and you're going to twist to the right. So whenever you're doing a rope braid, you don't wanna just twist the hairs around each other. You actually need to have like two ropes that are roped around each other. So the way to do that is you really are just gonna focus, if you're on her right side, you'll focus on her right side. If you're on her left side doing this as a French braid, you'll wanna focus doing the opposite. So you would do the opposite of what I'm doing. But I just wanted you to say out loud, twist to the, twist to the right, cross over to the left. Say it with me out loud. Twist to the right, cross over to the left. So again, you're gonna to twist to the right for this first section on the right, and you're gonna cross it over to the left. And again, you're gonna then take this section and twist it to the right, and just give a nice twist, and then you're gonna cross it over to the left. And you wanna hold the hair in the direction that you're actually going to be going with it, because if I hold it out here, I'm gonna be over directing it. So I'm actually wanting to be holding it in the direction that I want it to travel as I'm twisting the hair. So twisting to the right, crossing over to the left. I'm gonna pull her at a little bit of a diagonal so I have a little bit more control when actually doing this. So again, you're gonna take another section. You're gonna add this to the hair. And again, what are we gonna do? Twist to the right, right? Cross over to the left. Okay. So you're gonna twist 
to the right, cross over to the left. And it's gonna start to create this nice flat rope braid across the surface of the hair. So once you've done that twist, you're gonna grab another section and you're taking full sections here and I've got my little nail parter. You're gonna add it to that right side and you're gonna again twist to the right and cross over to the left. And you can see I don't have to focus on twisting the entire hair because if you twist the entire hair, then you're gonna just get your hair, uh, your fingers all tangled up with the hair. So then I have finally the last section. I'm just gonna add that to the last section there. The entire section I'm just twisting to the right and I'm gonna cross it over to the left. So again, you've just, now I'm coming off the head. I'm just done here. So now I'm just gonna finish this rope braid by twisting to the right, crossing it over to the left. I'm gonna twist it to the right, cross it over to the left. And that's just gonna to continue to finish out the rope braid. And instead of boring you guys with this mantra of twist to the right, cross over to the left, um, you know, I, I like to say this all the time because when I learned it, that's how it was taught to me. And so now that it's like locked in my head, I can never get it out of my head uh, whenever I'm doing this. I'm constantly thinking twist to the right, cross over to the left, twist to the right, cross over to the left. Um, but what this is going to allow you to do is to be able to create a nice rope uh, texture in the hair. And if you do this right, if you actually do a rope braid correctly, instead of just twisting the hair, when you get to the end, it's actually going to just stay together. It's not going to come apart. So again, you're going to just twist to the right, cross over to the left, twist to the right, cross over to the left. How are you guys doing? Yeah? Thank you guys for sticking with me. You know, I um, <clears throat> was worried when I got on here that I wasn't going to have anybody following me, but it looks like we've got a pretty good number. I'm actually up to like 58. So that's not bad for, uh, for myself. So if you look, I just finished the end here. You can see that it just will stay right in place. It's not coming undone and it just created a nice flat, as you can see, texture on the hair. So once you've finished with that, you're going to take this section and you're going to then bring it back across the head right where the ponytail is. Now in the ponytail, I did the topsy-turvy, so that's gonna be the anchor for the hairstyle. So basically, you're gonna just wrap this around the top of the head, and then you're gonna bring it around underneath the ponytail, and then you're gonna just take this piece and tuck it inside the ponytail, so it's underneath the ponytail. And then if you can just find the rubber band, and you just need to pull one of the pieces of the rubber band, not the entire rubber band, because you don't want to lose the entire ponytail. But you just want to pull one piece and tuck the tail of the rope braid into the rubber band elastic so that it'll actually lock it in place. So once you've got that locked in there, it's going to stay nice and tight. It's not going anywhere, and it's going to just give a nice, fun texture to the hair. So now you've got all that. Now you're wondering, like, well, what's going to happen up here? So with the top section, I'm going to take out now the, now that the curls have dried, I'm going to take out the volume rolling. So you just want to take out the pins. And now I've, as you can see, I've got all of this topage in the hair, but I don't want to leave that in the hair. So I'm going to go with our Glow For It Universal Gloss. This again is a nice uh, shine uh, oil. And I just did about one or two drops through my hands, I'm gonna emulsify it, and then I'm just taking it through each section from roots to tips. Um, the nice thing about this oil is it's lightweight, it's not gonna weigh the hair down, it's gonna leave the hair nice, silky, and shiny and smooth, and it's also gonna allow me to brush out that topage. So I'm gonna start in this back section, and I'm just gonna start, because you layer in that topage, it's gonna allow you to be able to quickly and easily brush it out instead of being a nice ratted mess in the hair. So you're actually brushing that topage out because if you use heat, you break the hydrogen bonds. So then now you've got that volume in the hair, but she can actually come back in and stick her fingers through her hair. So again, you're gonna just brush out each section. Boop, boop. And you wanna make sure that she keeps her head on. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm full of jokes, people, full of jokes. All right, so uh, so you're going to keep brushing that out. Look at all that volume as I'm brushing this out, just how much it actually maintains 
the texture of that topage underneath, but as you can see, it's nice and smooth on top. So again, I'm brushing this out. And once I've gotten through this whole section, I've got all of that hair that's nice and brushed out, right? And look at all that volume that it builds into her hair. The nice thing about this is that now she's got all that volume built in. Now I can come in and kind of create a fun texture to the hair. So I'm gonna put her forward because y'all are gonna be my mirror. All right. So once you've got all that texture in the hair, then you can actually come in and start to play with this and start to create the movement that you want in the hair. And because you have these uh, sections on the side, you wanna make sure that you actually work with uh, hiding those sections by allowing the hair to come down and not necessarily completely be uh, fully straight back, but have some like nice movement uh, to the hair. So you're actually gonna kind of cover up those part lines, but just still create some fun texture in the hair. And then what I like to do is actually come in with some hairpins and if you like the way that things are looking, is just kind of take some hairpins and lock in that hold for the hairpins so they actually hold that style just temporarily. Um, let's see how she looks over here. Yeah, how's she looking to you guys? So once you've got like this foundation for how you want the hair to look, it's also important to look at it from the side because you want to see how is it going to look when it's coming back. So once I've got this and it looks nice, I'm gonna actually now come in and do an organic braid on this entire top section. So I'm gonna just split the hair into three sections right here at the back of the hair strand. And I'm gonna just start doing the organic braid that I showed you earlier. So I'm gonna just go from left to center, keeping all of this volume in the hair here, making sure that it's actually kind of looking nice as I fold in that first piece. And then I'm gonna go uh, right to center making sure that I have all those part lines covered, and then going left to center. Because it's a shorter piece, it's not gonna actually have as much way to go, so I'm only gonna do this probably about two or three times, uh, going left to center, right to center. I can't go any further, as you can see. And now what I'm gonna do is, again, just take this hair, push it through, and lock it into place. So that has essentially locked that uh, up style into place. I'm gonna come look at it. See how she looks. She looks good. She's not, she's not hurting, right? Um, and then, because I have this fun braid in the back, now what I'm gonna do is come open all this up, kind of make it more soft, so it looks a little bit softer. Come in with the hairspray to help to set it. Now y'all are wondering, well, what are you doing now? You have this like braid in the back here. How is that gonna work, right? So what you wanna do is get this nice and set, and then what you're gonna do is actually take this braid, again, you're gonna take it through the topsy uh, tail. So you're gonna come through, grab the tail of that braid, pull it down through the braid in the back. So now you've got it pulled through. So this is now becoming the texture or the movement of the back of the style. And then you just take the tail of this braid and you can just smooth it out. And then now you can use it to wrap around the the ponytail to help to cover up the rubber band and once you've got it fully wrapped this is where you're going to come in with your one bob pin and i'm so blind i can't even see where my bob pins are all right so you're going to come in with your one bob pin i'm going to take one long bob pin and i'm just going to find where that uh end of that piece is and i'm going to just stick it in uh, let me see if i can find it i'm just going to stick it in and just set that ponytail Ooh tight to her head. Let me bring this up a little bit. So now you can see that it's all set in place. You can't really see any of the things that you brought in. So now you've got this poof down here, this ponytail. So it's got this nice texture in it, but it's kind of flat. So that's when you can come in with the Anyway Texture Spray and just give a nice couple spritzes and it's gonna help to fluff up that ponytail and give a nice fun set there and you can just come in and lock it in with the rest of the set so that is it uh, that's basically the fun techniques you learned volume rolling you learned a uh, French rope braid the organic braid 
Hello. And just a fun technique. Now, you, I encourage you guys to take your own tech, tech creativity, take this back, do something with it on your own, and just I'd love to see the ways that you can actually do this when you are back in the salon. The fun thing about this too is you can actually take this if you wanted and turn it into a chignon, where if you don't want the ponytail, you can actually just now take this chignon, take this ponytail and wrap it around the back of this base and actually create a really nice smooth out chignon on the back of the hair as opposed to having something that is a little bit more disheveled. So that is also another option. You would obviously at this point need hairpins or bobby pins, um, but that is essentially how you would uh, do it if you wanted to create a fun little up style. So um, that is essentially how that works. And I think that we're coming to the end of my time. I don't have my glasses. Let me grab them because I can't see if Richard is trying to come in or not. Um, are you there, Richard? <laughs> um, but let me see if there's any, oh, here he is. All right. Hey, Paul, how are you, man? <laughs> good, Richard, how are you doing? I'm good. It's so nice to see you work, dude. That was so, so nice to just, the way you shared was so, you made it look so simple, man. Oh, I love it. I love what you said, but it was a twist to the right and cross over to the left. Yeah. That's something yeah. I actually wrote down because sometimes yeah. when you start a braid, you don't yeah. know where to start. Do you cross over this way? Do you twist it that way? Yeah. I think really simple one-liners like that, like you said, stick with you. That yeah. actually help you when you don't have the groove on, you know, when you're starting off. Yeah. Is that something that you share a lot with a lot of the braiding and techniques? Yeah, so you know, that's kind of, honestly, I wish I could take credit for it, but like whenever we've learned an alternative, repetitive phrases that really just stick in your brain are really just great, great ways to help you remember how to do certain uh, techniques. So like that is one that is constantly sticking in our brain. Um, walk, 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 walk is another one we're doing certain uh, hair cutting techniques. So there's a lot of different fun <laughs> phrases that we use in alternative. You know, was, walking to one of our classes, it's kind of entertaining. I think it was so nice to watch you. And you know, there's a real balance when it comes to editorial hair or updos yeah. and braids. It's a balance between being technical and being visual. And, and yeah. it's, having, it's having that balance. If you're too technical, you can miss what you're actually creating. And if you're just being visual and not putting any technique in there, it might not last long or have structure. How right. do you create that balance with all of the updos that you do? Uh, so for me, the biggest thing whenever I'm doing up styles is preparation. And for me, preparation comes with the proper product. So, you know, right. before she even, uh, you know, I even had her, I basically made sure that I was using great products that were actually building the foundation into the style. So I blew her out with a volumizing mist to really help to give that support um, yeah. to keep that volume in the hair. Also used a texture spray and an air dry balm. So it wasn't just smooth, but also I wanted to have some texture in the hair as well. So really, I think it's about picking the right products that you want for whatever specific style that you're doing. And then making sure that those products will complement the techniques that you're actually going to be putting into the style and helping you instead of hurting you. Absolutely. Um, one, one, one side note, could you please, before we all end up, could you please post some of the images? It was, yeah. it was so interesting. But yeah. because of the lives, you got everyone's words going up. I'm like, I ah. want to see exactly what you're doing. That um, ah. that braid you did blew me away. When you said bang, that's exactly yeah. what happened yeah. to me. I was like, what? I've been around for a while and I've seen so many different braids. And I do a lot of different braids. I've never seen a braid where you start from top, you braid from the middle and, you, and it meets in, in the, the middle, middle and you just put it in like that. That yeah. was incredible. Who created that? I honestly don't know who created it. I learned it from Rita Tornello or Michael Sean Corby when I started with Alterna Hair Care back in 2012. So, um, you know, I can credit them for where I learned it, but I don't know who actually created it. It might have been Michael Sean Corby. Um, Amazing. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. So, if we want to find out more from you and learn more from you, because there's a lot of hairdressers out there that are great cutters, yeah. that might be great colorists, but their weakness isn't, their, their weakness is doing braiding or long hair. What, what steps yeah. would you recommend for them to start? And secondly, where can we get more education from you? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, more education for me is coming. I am the global education manager for Alterna. So uh, this whole month, I'm going to be on our Alterna Hair Care um, education page, Facebook page, doing live education. Along with our educators, we'll be doing workshop Wednesdays. So all of this that I taught was actually part of our core, our Alterna core foundational uh, styling and braiding techniques. So. They're, 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 the videos are out there either from myself or from our educators. Um, to be honest, Richard, this is my first time going live on Instagram. So uh, so I'm gonna probably start doing more of this and really start to just share and connect more with people through Instagram. So It's been a pleasure to watch you. You're a great educator. You've got a beautiful spirit. I think what you shared with us today is gonna help a lot of people. So thank you on behalf of everyone in the industry in Hankel, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Richard, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. What a great, great session with Paul Wittner, or as we know him, we host stylists from Alterna. We're gonna play a short video, Alterna video right now, and then we're gonna get back to you, and I'm gonna introduce someone very, very special. Hey everybody, my name is Richard. I'm your host for the last few hours of this incredible day today at Hairdressers United. I'm gonna introduce you to someone very, very cool. Her name is Sophie Pock, or you might know her as a, at Stay Gold 31. She's based in LA, USA. She's got almost 400,000 Instagram followers. She's a men's groomer barber specialist. She is an incredible educator. I've had her at my show. She's humble, she's technical, she's an inspiration. Let's go have a look at Sophie Park. And it'll go right into Larissa after this. So we're gonna talk about tools first. Tools is a really important thing. So I'm gonna give you the most basic setup that you would need if you are going into barbering or you're transitioning over from the salon world, which is what I had to do. So I had to learn everything from scratch through trial and error. But now with the great part of technology and YouTube, there's so much available that you can learn where it's kind of shortcutting you through that process and getting you to the things that you need much faster. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the Black FX Clipper. You need a good clipper, you're gonna need a good trimmer, a foil shaver, and let's see what, those are the main three of tools that I would highly suggest. Uh, when it comes to tools, I've tried everything under the sun to kind of understand how it works. And one of the easiest systems that I use today that I teach people when I'm doing classes is having something that has locking detents on the side, just like this. You can kind of see the little pockets. So what that does is your clippers kind of sit in those pockets as you move versus one of the first clippers that I used didn't have those locking detents. So as I'm working and fading, it's almost like I, I don't really, I don't really know where I'm at. I'm still kind of uh, figuring it out and, and building that muscle memory to know. know where I'm sitting it. So now having this locking detent it makes everything easier because you know how everything connects into the next gap. And so when you are doing haircuts, I work very much in like a typewriter motion, right? So I move across at the open, right? Whenever I'm doing haircuts, and I'll explain it in a diagram, so I'm gonna draw it out for you guys so that you guys can kind of see. I would start with the first, which is the longest stretch part. And as I move through each section, then I move this up one notch and I follow right underneath it or above it, depending on if you're fading up or down. And I constantly am just moving this one at a time and I stay consistent. Consistency is gonna be really important because as you're doing skin fades, the better you are at staying in your guidelines, the cleaner it is. Because if you bounce around here to there, 
the, it's going to be really easy for things not to connect and you're going to get a lot of chips in your blend. So for me, it's just to completely follow through until I see that blend kind of happen. Now, if you are going into skin fades, this is something I learned once I worked in a barbershop, which is learning how to do a zero gap. And what the zero gap means is that you pretty much have two blades, right? One of your blades is the outside blade, which is this part right here. And then you have your inner blade. Anything you buy out the box is usually adjusted a little bit further apart, just for probably safety purposes, I would say. And what we do in the barbershop is that we take that blade and we loosen it and then we move it up. You don't want to surpass the blade on top, but you basically want to sit it underneath. And if you've seen any of my videos I talk about all the time on Instagram or my YouTube is how to adjust it to pretty much if I could describe it, it's almost like a hair strand below that top. You want to sit it right underneath. And the reason for that is because when I can press the blades closer and I'm moving into doing skin fades, it's going to be a lot easier to connect into my tools. So after this, right, to go tighter than this, you're gonna need also a zero gap trimmer. So in this demonstration, it'll be the silver effects trimmer here. And what I really love about this, if you guys can see, this part of the body is cut, is cut uh, lower. So that means this blade is more exposed. Right, and I adjust this the same way that I would adjust my clippers and everything kind of goes into each other really nicely when you do both of the zero gaps. Um, and if you don't know what that is, uh, you can again, go check out videos on my page, on both pages, YouTube or Instagram, and you'll find a way how to do that. But when you have a more exposed blade, this is gonna be really great when you're doing beards. So for example, anything right here, tied around the ears, you have a nice, free blade to squeeze in really tight areas, especially if you're doing beards and they have like a back, uh, the back of this part here, this squeezes in really tight and nice because it's kind of sitting by itself without this getting in the way. Cause you know how sometimes some of the trimmers have a bigger body here. So you got that little bump. So when you're cutting, it's almost like you have to scoop over it. So now you have a lot more uh, maneuver you have a lot more power to maneuver into tighter spots so that's kind of why I really highly suggest something like this and then if you want to take that down even further so say you want to now move into foil shavers or a straight razor is that you're gonna want to use something like this this is a foil shaver uh, in this particular demo this is a single foil shaver most single most foil shavers that you see that are the box style usually have two this is just a preference because uh, with traveling, I like something a little bit lighter. So with this, for example, if I were to skin this all the way down, you could probably still feel the stubble, right? And you can absolutely finish just like that. For some people, they want it a little bit more natural. So that means I would just tap and drag it down and leave it a little natural with a little bit of stub. But say they're like, you know what? I want it as clean as possible, but I do want squared sideburns or anything like that, or skin taper, is that if you finish this over the spot that you did with your trimmer, this is gonna take the hair down probably like three days longer. Three days you're gonna get uh, a little bit of length with the haircut before that hair goes back in. So using this is gonna bring it all the way down to where it's basically flush with your cheek and it'll feel really smooth. So those would be my recommendations. So a really good foil shaver. This has got a really nice weight. The clipper and a really good trimmer. Now on top of all of this, if you guys do skin fades, then you know that every, every client is gonna be a challenge, right? You have head dents you gotta think about. You've got, um, different densities of hair. Like you guys have seen like some people's sideburns, right? There's areas in the hair where this could be lighter and this could be darker or vice versa. It happens all the time. So a way that we are able to smooth it out and get it as even as possible is we use a, a technique called corner blending, right? And what that means is instead of using the whole entire flat blade on the head, cause sometimes what happens is if you're running this with the head all the time, and they have really heavy dents, it's super easy to create waves in their hair, right? 
So you always kind of want to detail. So I'll knock everything down, but then I got to use the corners to kind of dig into those extra spaces so that I can match the colors, right? And when I look at fades, I see, I see gradients of color, of grays, right? And I'm trying to match. So if this one in the middle is darker than these two over here, I'm gonna lighten this shade right here to the neighboring color so I get that nice consistent blend. All right, so that's, so on top of uh, using corner blending techniques, there's actually one more that I really like. Um, this is a really great thing to also add to, to your fades is having one of these. It's texturizing shears, these are from Mizutani's, but texturizing shears that have chunky, uh, more of a chunky teeth versus like the one that's super fine. Because what I find that it's really nice is when you're using this for those dark spots, you're actually lightening the shade versus removing so much hair off the head. Which sometimes it's like if I'm, if I have a certain amount of weight on the haircut, I don't wanna lose the, the darkness of how much hair I left. So all I need is just a little bit of something like this where it's creating gaps in the hair and, the, and lightening the hair without removing, removing the hairs because you don't want it to look like a little divot, right? Does that make sense? Uh, this is a really nice one to use. Um, all right, let's go into a couple of things. I see you guys saying your hair is getting out of control in quarantine. Me too. I haven't had this cut in a while, so it's it's been a bit of a stress, but I'm I'm going through it with you guys. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about this. This is always fun. I love. I don't know if you guys tried the new iPad yet, but it's really great for um, video editing and photos. So I want to talk to you guys about it, uh, just some differences, because I think when when you're doing haircuts. What's really nice is if you know what it looks like, it's a lot easier to kind of gear your haircuts towards that visual. But when you don't know what you're aiming for, that haircut fade or uh, taper can just keep going and you kind of lose it, right? So lear learning the differences between different types of tapers and fades is really crucial. So I'm gonna go over some of those basics with you. Uh, let's see, cause I think when I think about when I first started learning how to cut hair, I remember doing a taper, but I didn't really ask or know, okay, do you want a low taper, mid taper, high taper? I would do just whatever I thought. I thought there was just one. And I would do it, and then before you know it, by the end of the haircut, they're like, that's not what I wanted. I wanted something higher, or they didn't want the arch, or whatever. And I had to learn how to like ask better questions. So in this diagram, it's going to show you the differences of how everything works so that when you're going through the process, um, you're not gonna have to backtrack or feel like you didn't ask enough. All right, so first one we're gonna talk about is low tapers. And I'm gonna take you through what, a, what the difference between a low taper, medium taper, and a high taper. And to me, tapers are the foundations of blending because when you have to learn how to taper in really tight sections like this, it's gonna translate to you the same way that when you do uh, fades and you're doing the entire head, you're gonna know exactly what the steps are because you were able to do it in such a tight space that it's gonna make sense when you do it on a wider scale. All right, so we're gonna do, the, this is the low taper. I'm gonna show you guys this, okay? Now, instantly you see with the low taper is that it has the arch still, right? And the blend of the taper is super low. What we call this is a condensed taper, which means when you are blending, each of your guidelines are, are smaller versus a stretch blend, which you have, uh, the contrast is, is, is much of an even more gradient. This is condensed, so each of your guideline zones are gonna be a lot shorter, right? And I'm gonna show you what, what this looks like. So when I'm choosing between low, medium, or high, this is gonna be my guide to you guys so that you guys can kind of have a visual. Let me see, make sure this is high enough so that you guys can see. Okay, so right here, this is gonna be my starting point. It's always gonna be my starting point. I'm gonna always start the same way because the thing you gotta be careful with when you're doing tapers is that you don't wanna take this 
you don't want this part where it starts to go too far back because that because then you took the taper too far into the back right this is just a finishing taper tapers to me is a reference point you have it finishes off on the sideburn here and then it finishes off on the back and you keep the frame right versus if you do a fade this entire frame is gone because you removed it past it right so just the difference between both of those and that's really important too because uh, depending on who you cut they might have a different experience with the previous person that said you know this this is what they called it and that's happened to me before so I always show people pictures I'm like okay if you want to taper let's make sure that we're still talking about the same thing and I always pull out photos to kind of just double check okay so that's my starting point right when I'm doing low tapers this is my guide right I don't know if you guys can see that little pink spot okay so strong arch right that didn't change with low tapers they want to keep that frame but they want to keep the blend really low okay so that's your low right now if we do a medium I'm gonna do a medium taper now again we're gonna start Same spot, the same place, right? Where I started the other one. And now I just move this a bit higher. So you see the difference between low and taper? And with medium tapers, you still have this arch. It's just lighter. It still exists, but it could be a lot lighter than what you see right here. Now, if we do a high taper, same exact starting spot right but now we're moving it up and now my guide is almost to the recession point to the corner and when you go into your high tapers this arch is completely wiped out so no more arch high tapers high fades think about when you do a high fade that's more like your military high and tights right they they wipe that edge up all the way up they don't want that so think about those two things and it kind of helps me remember like high tapers okay so you guys seen what a low taper looks like I'm gonna show you guys a medium taper that's a little more stretched there's your medium taper right you still got the arch that arch still exists right but the stretch is the blend of the stretch is bigger right you don't have it condensed and building up this is a nicer even gradient into the rest of their hair. And then for the final part is the high taper. It's good to see you guys, Patty and Herb from the team. All right, so let's see my high taper now. High taper, right? No more arch. We took the blend even higher up, right? You see the difference? So, this is a really important thing because this has helped me tremendously in making sure I was doing the right cut. But also, more importantly, is that you can visualize what you're trying to aim for. This is something that I saw a shift when I was doing a couple classes and people were learning how to do fades and tapers for the first time, is that uh, they didn't know what to aim for. So what happens is you start at the bottom right, you do your skin line, and then all of a sudden you just keep chasing that line higher. So now when you have a visual of what you're aiming for, it kind of at least like as you're going through the process that you're gonna notice, okay, this is starting to look like it's going too high. Let me stop here and, and kind of fix this and it will help you. So knowing the differences, asking those questions, it's gonna be really helpful in your consultations. Super, super important. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through a process that I use pretty often. Uh, if I have enough time, I'm going to talk about two different techniques that I normally use. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far and that it makes sense and that it's helpful. All right. So yeah, I agree barbering is a lot of precision and the way that everything has evolved until now is just beautiful to watch because I remember 
barbering, what was it, like 10 years ago, it was not the same. People didn't respect it as much. And until you actually get into it, you'll realize it's it's so hard because you you can't even blend a line. And if, I mean, when you're blending a line, if, if there's any flaws in it, you can see it all. There's no way to hide it. And I think that is something that was so challenging for a lot of people to do, but that's where you really see people change the way they feel about it because once they try it, they realize, wow, this is actually a really hard skill to acquire. But you know, again, the more you do it, the better it is going to get. All right, so I'm gonna take you through this process that I do for tapers. Okay, we're gonna do a taper. All right, let me draw this out. Um, and when I do any haircuts, I mean, of course, uh, at different stages of your career, you're gonna go through a different process. Sometimes, depending on where you work, it's under a certain time frame. Um, you know, I've done like every single place you could think of, and I'll save that for another video. But the way I'm most comfortable now is to kind of take my time with uh, a lot of the work that I do. So in this process, it's not gonna be a fast shortcut way, but a, a way that um, really helps you detail the haircuts. So this is the neck taper, okay? I'm not the best drawer, but you guys can kind of understand. Okay, this is the neck taper. So say this area here, that's gonna be your skin foil line. Now, whenever I do any guidelines, always remember, if you are light-handed, this really helps a lot because the lighter you are with putting your guidelines in, it's gonna be a lot easier to get out versus when you're super heavy handed, um, the lines are indented into the skin a lot more that it could create a harder way for you to remove that line later as you're blending up. So from here, after I did my foil shaver, I'm gonna use my trimmer, right? And I personally like going this way to the head because you can softer do a C-scoop out of that versus the only time I'd ever do it this way is to create my guideline. And I mean like a soft guideline. I'm not pressing this super hard into the skin. It's just enough to where it's touching the skin and removing the hair. And then I turn this around and I remove all the hair and then do the foil shaver, if that makes sense. Okay, so as I move above that, I'm trying to remove the skin foil line, right? Which is the, uh, the single foil that I was talking about earlier. And the way to do that is that you see scoop those areas out. So I'm gonna softly, move it through and then once I get into my clipper work this is kind of the process that I take is I'm gonna create a new guideline right this will be my new guideline and in that guideline I always do an open guard first because for me the hardest thing that I had to learn was how do I not chase my lines higher and higher right you don't want to go like this person said, you know, let me get a low taper and then you do a high and tight by accident because you didn't know how to stop it. This is a way for you to really check yourself every single time you move those sections. So from here, I know some of you guys have gone through that because I have to, all the way open, right? Your longest stretch of your clipper and I'm gonna work right up to that new line, right? It's gonna be a soft line. I run the, this to the scalp, and when I move that top piece, I scoop out, right? So if you look at it from the side, I run it, scoop out. And then I'm gonna, and that would create a very soft line here of where, and to me, the, the, the line that I stopped at, that's gonna be my stopping point, right? That line I made, so I can visually see, okay, don't go beyond this point, and now blend back down before you move on. So 
So from there, using the locking detents, right? One down, I'm gonna follow underneath it. Now I'm working backwards. So I created a stopping point and now I'm working backwards to connect everything to the previous area first. Move all the way through, follow the same steps, right? And now you're gonna have everything connected to that. So before I even moved on, I made sure that all of this was, was together first. Uh, good question, someone said, do I prefer a taper blade or a fade blade? I personally probably prefer a fade blade at the moment, but in the past, I've actually used a lot of taper blades often. Um, I think I just like the, the, the tightness that it has. So this is a fade blade for anyone that's wondering. It's a more flat blade. Taper blades have more of a bevel and you know, you get two different, the bevel blades are great because it helps with the softness of the blend versus a fade blade. You're running this a lot tighter to the scalp. So that's kind of the main differences. And I go over that in another video. If you guys want to check that out. Um, okay. So now we're in the next section, right? So we finished everything. We connected all that. Now we do another guideline. So next guideline at the moment, I didn't use anything yet. So the next guard would be my 0.5 guard, right? So this is gonna be my 0.5 area. Same exact thing. I put that 0.5 guard on the clipper and I start all over again. It's literally repetitive. All the way open, create my new guide zone, right? Up to that point, that's telling me don't go beyond that. Now I blend everything back down again and then I apply the one guard, the one and a half, the two guards. Um, the most important guards that you would need is the 0.5, the one, the one and a half, and the number two guard. Anything beyond that is a choice. Uh, for example, anything beyond a two, I prefer to do clip over comb, but if you feel comfortable, I always suggest people to try different ways and find one that works best for them. So if you don't wanna do two with the clipper over comb technique, you can go from a two to your three guard to your four and just move up that way. So you have multiple um, ways to get it done. So that's one technique and I'm gonna briefly go over this other one that I do also. So say for example, now you're in that situation where your clients are here, you're running behind, maybe he was late or something happened with the previous customer, but you ran over time. So obviously as a barber, you need some shortcuts, right? Everyone's got shortcuts of some sort to help them get on track. For me, that's something that I've, I've stressed over from the get was making sure that if people had an appointment at, if someone's appointment is at five, I made sure they were in the chair by five, no matter what. So I would do whatever it takes. Um, and if someone really was late, I'd let them know ahead of time before that, that actually, um, before that appointment even happened, if it was too late, I wouldn't even take them because I don't believe in going over my time frame and having the next person suffer because the first person in front of them couldn't get there on time. And it's up to me to kind of keep everything on the schedule, right? So, all right, I'm gonna go over this other one. We've got a couple more minutes left. All right, so this is my time saving technique. Let's see, where's my pen? Okay. I don't know why this is the way it is, but I see it saved me time. So the same way, right, that we were talking about with the taper before is you, you do, this is where you would normally put in your line, right? But, but before I even did that, my second way to save time was to actually not carve through, right? So my first step and the other one was to go this way. So in this next piece, I grab my clipper first, close it all the way down, right? To the closed position and I work above it. So whatever needs to be foiled or uh, used with like a razor, I left that at the end. I didn't even touch it yet. So I'm actually scooping, if you could see, I'm scooping the hair from there and, and creating a line above that with my clipper Blending up the same way, not having to worry about the, the skinning part, and I would say that to the end. And for some reason, I don't know how or why, but I saved about five minutes. So it's exactly the same steps. Um, does that make sense so far? Let's see. Okay, 
This is uh, another question. Uh, someone said cordless clippers or plug-in, which works better? Really great question because technology has evolved a really long way. When I first started using cordless clippers, this was years ago, the, the myth is that when you unplug it, right, and you're using it, and then the battery starts to die, the RPMs or the motor, or whatever you wanna call it, starts to slow down where you can hear the power look, like go slower. And that's not a good thing to happen because what happens is, you know, you're moving at a certain pace, and if that blade slows down, you're actually tugging the hair and pulling it out of the follicles. So it's almost like you're plucking some of your client's hair sometimes. And I'm sure some of you guys have experienced that or not one or wondered why that was happening. That is exactly why is that the RPMs are not moving fast enough for the speed that you're going for anybody that's wondering. These are two hour battery life on full charge, which is really great because if you're using multiple clippers, it usually lasts me an entire day of work because I can shift back and forth. Um, but the new thing with, with clippers that are cordless is that you have newer technology. So for these babeless ones, there are lithium batteries in here that when you charge it and you're using it and it's dying, it actually doesn't slow down until it dies. So when you have about 15 minutes left, this light will start blinking and that'll let you know that your clipper is about to die so you at least have a heads up before it happens mid haircut. And then when it actually dies, it'll just shut off versus you having something that's gradually getting, uh, you know, like the power starting to slow down, which you don't want, which is my favorite Babeless tool. It's probably this one. This is the one. Thanks, Herb. Uh, let's see, we are getting to about, let's see, we gotta finish this off with three more minutes. Okay, uh, let's see what I got. What else I got for you guys? Oh, this, this part. Uh, this is the teaser uh, sneak peek of something that I've been working on. Let me pull this up real quick. Just wanna make sure I, I get this right. Uh, I'm excited. This is something I've actually been working on in secret that I could not talk about, but I can kind of give you guys finally a uh, quick teaser. But as you all know, when it comes to barbering haircuts, you want options when it comes to products, right? So you want something that is a more shiny product for clients that want maybe more of a pomade kind of look. Then you have texture products, which a lot of my clientele is a lot more um, loosely styled, really messy, effortless kind of looks. So you want something more of a dry kind of texture type of powder. So I can't really talk too much about it, but there is something coming soon and uh, it's launching in three to four months. So if you guys want to see what that is, make sure to stay tuned to my page in three to four months. I can give you a lot more information on it. Uh, me and my partners have been working on this for a while and it's just crazy that it's coming to life finally. And I'm excited to share that with you guys when it comes out. And so now we are at the last part of this. So if you guys have any questions, I'd love to take those questions now. Thank you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm glad these uh, tips were helpful for you. I appreciate, you guys already know, I, I love the feedback because it kind of helps me gear and learn stuff about you guys too and what you guys need or are looking for that I can help you guys with. Custom FX drop mid-May, guys, mid-May. That app is coming out to where you guys can create your own. This is so exciting because you can literally build whatever color clipper you want. Um, and on top of that, you get to choose what kind of blade you want. And I think fade blades actually come in another colorway as well, so you don't have to get the black. But if I have to recommend it to you, uh, I think the graphite blades materials are the best. They're the best quality. Even my clients notice the difference. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed too, back in the day when the, you know, blades were really basic, it was, uh, sometimes when I used to get designs, like way back when, and there was certain times where I felt like my, my follicles were hurting or that my scalp was hurting from the way that the metal was like rubbing against my scalp. 
And so I know what that actually feels like and it's just the friction of certain metals. So now that we have more updated things like graphite blades and DLC blades and diamond coating blades and all this other fancy stuff is that you, uh, you notice the difference right away. Like the clients will even tell me like, oh, it feels like the, the quality is better. It's really smooth how they describe it. So it's, it's really exciting to know that that's improving also the client experience as well. How to choose better hairstyles for clients? This is a great question. Uh, for me, I try to kind of just stay on top of different trends. And, and what's great is, you know, remember guys back in the day, we had to choose hairstyles out of a really old book that sat on the table. And it's like, all right, we'll pick one of these. But now you have the internet to, you have the internet to choose so many different looks from all parts of the world, right? And what it does for me is that because I'm, you know, a lot of times we are just scrolling through, I'm scrolling through, I'm looking at so many different haircuts and it's almost like I save some of those too. So when I see certain clients and I see certain features that are similar, I always just tell them like, Hey, this would be actually really cool on you. You have a really cool jawline or I try to, I try to, I try to paint a picture for them. And usually if you can do that and kind of like, because they don't always know what they want. So it's up to me to kind of help uh, gear them towards an area that I think would work nice. So I'll be like, okay, so this haircut would be really cool because you have this type of hair or it lays this way. And that was a way for me to, to pick better haircuts for certain clients that were just used to one thing. And it's, it start, starts with baby steps until you build your reputation and then people would be like, okay, they trust you. You know, cause I think from the beginning when I used to uh, recommend haircuts for clients, they didn't fully trust me until now because of the reputation that I've been able to build that they now believe and trust my recommendation for uh, something that they could get. Let's see, this is, for sure. uh, this is a good question. Let's see, you, someone was having a hard time understanding the C motion to fade or people say flick your wrist. Uh, flicking your wrist, I personally don't do that. I know some people do. And maybe for me, it's cause my hands are small that I'm just really particular in my motions. Cause I've seen some people where they can work like this. I, I can't work like that. And this is, might be a habit that was formed from when I first started cutting hair because I was using a super heavy clipper. So over time I felt like my wrist was getting worn out. So what I do is when I'm working, it's easy to do this, right? And if you're not paying attention, look at the way the angles shift, right? You're not getting a consistent um, stroke every time you use it. So out of habit from what happened back then, when I cut hair, it's basically like this. I always bring it back down to one. All right, so in just a second, I'll be bringing on Richard, who's going to be joining us. It's good. Hey, hey. Sophie, how are you? Good to see you. You too, you too. How's everything? Good, great. We just finished this course. I felt like I was talking at a million miles an hour and just got out as much as I could. I'm excited it, for this uh, this Guinness World Record we're trying to do. This is pretty cool. Big time. Can I just say, that was incredible. I was just listening to every word that you were saying. And it's not easy from a hairdresser's point of view to talk for so long without having a model and doing some hair. but. The way you just taught men's grooming, barbering, fading is seriously mind blowing. I, I just learned so much about the fade, the low fade, the mid fade, the high fade. I didn't even know the difference to be honest. Oh, thank you. Dresses. And I've held shows in New York and had you over there and never oh. even heard about that. that I know. Incredible. Thank that you. Incredible. Thank um, you. I got, I got a few questions for you. Okay. For those people that are, I guess, barbers or men's groomers, you know, a lot of them are very, I guess, they specialize in more fading with clippers. But when it comes technically with, with, with like, uh, when it comes to being technical with the top layers, a lot of them are kind of scared to pick up the <laughs> scissors and be technical. And a lot of their clients actually go to them for the fade and maybe go to a hairdresser for, I guess, the layers. How important is it to learn both as a men's groomer, the, the art of fading and the fact of being really technical. 
The great thing about now is that you get more of that cross hybrid, right? Before, when I first started, it was like the barbers were the barbers and the cosmos were the cosmos. Right. But in this, in the shop that I first started at, what I saw was um, the cosmos that were working there were more willing to learn the other half. And what slowly started to happen in our shop was that people saw that the people that were able to do both were getting yeah. double the clientele because wow. at that time, the guys weren't getting short haircuts anymore. You know, when we first started, it was like number three all over, buzz it down in a taper. But now it's like, right. no, I, these guys want to start combing their hair. That's so they right. would go to the people that were, that were, uh, that had better understanding of both. And I think the more, you know, the more versatility, the more types of clientele you can bring in. And that is something I personally like doing is, being versatile in different styles because that means you can just cater to more people and you can see it in your work obviously um the other question is razor when you actually pick up the razor you explain how you use the clippers for the bottom half how do you go with the razor and another question with the razor when someone's got a little mole and stuff how do you work around that because we're not plastic surgeons mm -hmm. right right well <laughs> you've got to be aware of where the moles are because the last thing you want to do is cut them off but right. uh when it comes to like moles or any kind of like skin tags or anything like that i just carefully uh i definitely obviously do not razor that but you want to use either your trimmers or a really tight closed clipper and kind of maneuver around it softly because I mean, we don't know if it hurts. So I'm always really gentle around those areas. And then when you are using a razor, um, when you're using it on the neck, especially back here with straight blades, you can usually only go with the grain. There's right. not often times you're going to want to go that extra work unless you're doing a bald head shave. But you're right. not gonna you're not gonna taper the bottom of the neck in reverse and go against the grain because that's really rough and that's right. why people love to use the foil shavers because you can do all of that in one stroke without having to any of the skin prepping and stuff like that so you get the same effect using this and also it's just an efficient way to do it brilliant brilliant well listen thank you so much it's so good to see you i haven't caught up with you for you a very too. long time hopefully Hopefully when this uh, pandemic dies down, you'll be able to fly back to New York or in LA, we'll be able to catch up. But that session yes, was just that. so, so uh, thoughtful and very educational and inspirational. You, you are an inspiration. You're so humble and you're so amazing at what you do. So on thanks, behalf of everybody at Henkel, Sophie, thank you so, so much. Thank you and thanks for having me a part of it. Sophie Pop, make sure you follow her at Stay Gold. 31. She is incredible. Great imagery, great videos, such an inspiration. Guys, if you've just tuned in, we've still got two incredible artists, but we are here to support you and giving you education. We're attempting to break the Guinness Book of Records to have the longest live education festival online. And we're also raising money to help with the people that are suffering through this COVID-19. As a reminder, Henkel has already donated an astounding 2 million euros to a few different COVID-19 related foundations. Henkel North America has announced that the company will donate $200,000 to the Pro Beauty Association. In addition, they are giving 100,000 euros to the charity, which receives the most votes from you today. Red Cross, United Way and Pro Beauty Association. Next up, we have my partner in crime. Her name is Larissa Love. You all know her as Larissa Doll or Larissa Love. She's got almost 600,000 Instagram followers. She's Joico's brand ambassador. She is today sharing with you some incredible time-saving foiling techniques. She is so good to watch. You're going to learn a lot from this session. Over to you, Larissa. 7 free education on demand with tons of techniques with tons of incredible artists and that is on joyco.com slash education on demand um, I highly recommend that you guys go and get that also if you guys want to donate please donate to an incredible charity PBA charity and how you can do that is probeauty.org slash hair best so you know I think it's really incredible that the PBA is doing this together. A lot of different artists are doing this together. So many different companies are doing this together. And we are here, just here to empower and inspire and elevate you. So when we get back to the chair and behind the chair, we are gonna be so ready with so many techniques. Okay, so today what I'm gonna be teaching is 
different ways of, fold, uh, of foiling. These are kind of like my secret techniques and um, and it took me a lot of time to actually come up with these techniques. This is not something that I just like come up out of my head, out of nowhere. Like, I mean, I guess I do, but I actually really put time and effort into it. And so I'm not necessarily teaching a technique today. I'm teaching all of my techniques in one, if that makes sense, all of my folding techniques. Um, and this is to make your life easier, especially when we get behind the chair, there's gonna be a lot of clients running to our door. So we're gonna have to figure out how we can take in all these clients, beautify them in a certain amount of time, right? So I am here to make your guys' life easier. I want you to work smarter, not harder. So let's do this. So I'm gonna be teaching um, with one doll head for the front and then another doll head for the back. So you guys can literally get all of my knowledge that I'm sharing and I'm gonna throw it to you so you can take these uh, things that I'm teaching and you can take it behind the chair. All right, so first we're gonna focus on the back on this beautiful doll head that I shouldn't have a name yet. <laughs> I name all my doll heads, but not this one. So um, as you guys can tell, I have done quite a bit of color on her already. Um, I, I believe I did the money uh, face framing on her a while back, but then I cut her hair so we can shorten it up so I can teach you guys all my techniques with the amount of time that I have. So I'm gonna show you guys my way of sectioning and I have four zones. And this is my way, this is not the right way or the wrong way, this is my way. So I'm teaching you on what, how I do it and you guys can take it or leave it or recreate it into your own version, all right? So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna section her out and we're gonna take a straight section all the way down the center towards the back. Okay, and then I'm still gonna section her out with all the zones that I normally do. So in the front, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do about one inch away from the hairline and take a diagonal back section. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and clip that right out of the way. I'm gonna do exact same thing on the opposite side and you can take the opposite side as your guide so everything is aligned correctly. And so that way, when you map road correctly and have all your sections nice and cohesive, you know you're gonna have a beautiful, uh, cohesive um, color that you did on your client. And when you section out the client, you have a much better roadmap and kind of direction of what you are doing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and section that out of the way. All right, now this is zone one. Zone two, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your comb, you're gonna pivot your comb. Can you see that? Go ahead and pivot your comb. And then that's where you're gonna take it from ear to ear. Reason why you pivot your comb and take that section as your zone two, instead of taking it from above the crown, is because that way, when you take it a little bit lower below the crown, this hair will fall back, so even though you're doing a partial, it will look like a fool when her hair is down. So this is how I always section all of my clients. So that way, even if I'm not doing a fool, it can still look like a fool. All right, you guys see that? From ear to ear, pivot the comb, and you can take a nice section. gonna do exact same thing on the opposite side. Now, I welcome you guys to ask questions um, and I will be answering as many as I possibly can. So if you have any questions, please ask away. Gina Bianca is saying that's her favorite tip you've ever taught. Oh her. girl, just wait. <laughs> this whole technique today is gonna be your favorite tip. <laughs> Love you, Gina. Thank you guys for tuning in. All my people, always supporting. I love it. All right, so now the back, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a one inch around the hairline. And then just kind of follow that hairline all the way around.
And this is gonna be also another zone. So you guys see, I would say about a one inch. It really depends on the density of the client. With her, her hair's pretty fine, even though she has a lot of it. So I'm not taking a full inch, um, but it just depends. But this will be your, uh, your other zone. So you have zone one, zone two, this is zone three. Okay, split that down the middle. And then this is zone four. So let me repeat that one more time so you guys all have a visual. Zone one is around the hairline, which is basically gonna be her money piece. Zone two is um, pivoting your comb and taking a day and then taking a, a section all the way diagonal forward from ear to ear. And then zone three is basically like around the sipital bone, all of this. Um, and then zone four is around the hairline on the back. And I'm just gonna go ahead and split this down the center and just clip this out of the way. Okay, so first we're gonna start in the back, right? So before I do any of my clients, I always prep them with Joyco Defy Damage Pro One. Um, I love this, it's like magic in a bottle. Um, and I'm just gonna shake it vigorously and I'm gonna spray this section. What you do is you just shake it and then about two, three inches, you're gonna spray downwards and then next section, spray downwards, all the way down and then you're gonna comb through for even saturation. This is a bond builder. It is the next generation of bond building. Um, it's gonna make the hair five times stronger. It's gonna decrease 80% uh, less breakage um, and it's gonna make the hair 90, maintain 90% more color vibrancy and just overall, it's an incredible product that I highly recommend all of you guys to use. You don't have to adjust your formula, your timing or anything like that. All you do is spray and go. And my favorite thing is that it gives you greater and even lift. Um, and then I am using Joyco Blonde Life Powder Lightener. What I love about this lightener is it gives nine plus levels of lift. It's super gentle, has exotic oil, so it's gonna keep that hair nice and moist while keeping the integrity of hair while lifting it to its highest level. All right, now because I'm not necessarily teaching you guys a full technique, but more of my uh, placement and my folding of foils, I'm just gonna be using level 10 developer all the way through. And the ratio to this is one to one. All right, you guys ready for me to make your life easier? So that way you guys can really bang these clients out when you get behind the chair and they're satisfied, you're satisfied. And you know, I think that sometimes we overcomplicate, overthink. Sometimes with all our, um, uh, all our foiling, all our sectioning, and I'm here to not overcomplicate it for you. Alright, <clears throat> so before I even start, I want to talk about the foils that I'm using because the size of the foil matters. And these are from R, and they're pop-ups. So you can get them at your local Cosmoprof. I don't know what other Cosmoprof, I'm sorry, McCall, and um, I don't know in other countries where you can get them, but you can get them on like from R.com. Um, and these are pop-ups. They're really great if you don't have an assistant and that way you don't have to cut them and that way you don't have to like take them out. They're just here to pop up for you. Um, and then the size of these is five by 11. So that size really matters. And I'll put in all the info later for you guys to be able to see at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And also the foil is incredible because it has embossed texture. So the minute you apply any color on here, it's gonna stick and it's not gonna slip. Okay, so in the back, so what I did is instead of having to like take tons of different uh, sectioning and highlights and all of that, I decided, you know what, let's just do it with one foil and make our lives easier, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that full slice section around the hairline. Now I understand that her hairline is definitely like perfect and like has like that perfect nice straight hairline but almost everyone does have a shaped hairline pretty close to that. A lot of them have baby hairs and all that, but it's very similar to that. 
right? I feel like a lot of us forget about this part and I am one of those people, that's why I'm saying that. I feel like sometimes you focus so much on like the around the face and like full placement in the front that we don't really worry about the back, but our clients wear the hair a lot in the back. I mean, <laughs> wear the hair a lot uh, up. So I think it's really important for us to really focus on the back. Why? Because even though you might might not do anything for you in the long run, it will. Because when a client was wearing their hair up, someone else will be like, oh wow, you have beautiful big blue lights underneath. Who does your hair, right? So then that's a great way of getting more attention of clients. So really focus on the placement of highlights in the back. Even if you're doing a partial, I will always go back in and work on zone four to create just a little bit of like dimension in the back when they wear their hair up, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just weave out baby highlights. Now this is not really about the type of highlights I'm weaving or anything like that. This is all about kind of the folding tricks of my, uh, 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 folding foils, uh, tricks of folding foils. Wow, I can't even talk today. Um, <laughs> but I would recommend doing just microwaves or baby weaves so that way it doesn't look chunky when they wear their hair up, all right? Then what you're gonna do is, I call this the V shape, is you're gonna just take your bottom left hand and then your bottom right on top corner and then you're gonna just make it into a V like this. Okay, see that? And then that way it can go gracefully right against that hairline. So you're saving so much uh, time because one, you're doing one foil, but you're also saving foils because, I mean, you're saving money because you're literally just doing one foil. Right? And then you're gonna go ahead and apply your lightener. Now, whenever I'm doing any type of highlighting, um, balayage or anything like that, whenever I get close to the root, I always go against the grain of the hair just to soften up and blur out that line a little bit so it's not a harsh line. So you never wanna just go in and dig like that. You just wanna give it a little bit of softness going against the grain of the hair. All right? Now, since our hair is short, what you can do is you can just put that up and then finish off laying lightener on that end. On those ends like that. But if her hair is long, what you can do is you can take another foil and place the foil like that and then put another foil over and lap it. But because you're taking such a fine weave, I think it's just easy just to do it this way because it's not a lot of hair in a foil. All right, then what you do is you're gonna actually fold it up with the shape that you placed. So it looks like that. Super simple, right? So I'm gonna do it one more time for you guys to see. If there's any questions or anyone that's saying anything, may please they're read just away. shook. Yes, I love <laughs> that. Shook. I love it. All right, so again, I'm gonna show you guys. So instead of you know taking a foil like this and then take another foil like that, it's just too much time, too much everything. So I'm just here to make your guys' life easier. So what you're gonna do is go with the shape of the head. I'm gonna clip this out. You're gonna take the highlight underneath. So instead of above, you're gonna take it underneath. So that way you can see the highlights when she wears her hair up. Okay. And then you're gonna take your pop-up foil. Again, these are by, these are five by 11, I believe. Yeah, five by 11. Uh, and you can get them at like from our app. All right, so what you do is you put your hand on the bottom left corner, your, your right hand on the top right corner, and then just shape it into a V shape. And then you're gonna take your highlights and then just apply it gracefully on, straight to the hairline. So super simple and super easy and very efficient. And again, if you guys had a lot of hair or if it was really long, you can place another foil on the bottom. But I feel like even if it was pretty long, you don't necessarily have to because you're not grabbing a lot of hair. You want it to be almost like micro highlights, in my opinion, so it doesn't look chunky. It just looks very sun-kissed when she wears her hair up. This is 
so genius. Everybody's just like basically blown away. Yay! <laughs> Good. I love it. All right. And again, when you get closer to the root, always go against the grain of the hair. And then you're going to just fold it with that shape that you created. And voila, voila. And with two foils, you did the full hairline. So even if you're doing a partial, these two foils matter so much in the long run because your clients wear hair up a lot, much more than you probably think. All right, so now we're gonna go to zone three, right? So normally, what we would do is we would flip the hair down the center, right? Do one side, one side, or go, keep going back and forth, back and forth. Well, not anymore, and this is actually my chair just because it's so efficient and so easy um, so let me show you guys a little fun tip so instead of doing one side and then the other side what I do is I take a full slice section and I go with the shape of the head so I'm gonna take a moon shaped section like so so you guys see it's a moon shaped section it's not horizontal it just has a nice moon shape to it. And reason being is because when you're applying your highlights, you're gonna know how it's, the hair's gonna fall because you're taking sections with its natural shape. All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your foil, okay, and you're gonna do the exact same thing Kind of like my V shape, but not so dramatic. So you're gonna place your right, left hand on the bottom left, your right hand on the top right, and then you're gonna just shape it into a moon shape. So that way it goes gracefully right against that root. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me show you what I would do. So I would take my highlight, you can take a thick weave or a baby light, microweave, completely up to you, slice if you want. Um, what I normally do is when, how I work in the back is I'll take slightly thicker on the edge and then I'll take baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light. And then when I come to this side, I'll take another slightly thicker edge. So this creates boldness more towards the front hairline or the front center or the front of her face and then more baby light and dimension so you have more brightness towards the front and more dimension towards the back because I want to focus more brightness around the face always and then I want her to have a lot of dimension towards the back almost with any technique that I do unless we're going like a solid blonde color or solid color so you guys can see slightly thicker you don't want it to be too bold where it's super dramatic and noticeable uh, but you also in my opinion you want it to be still kind of shown so you can see that so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your moon shape section. What I like to call is, I like to call this the glue. You're gonna apply a little bit of glue right here on the end. You're gonna take another foil and apply it right there. And then it goes gracefully, perfectly against the root. Gina is asking a really good question. Do you pre-foil these foils or do you customize them? Great question, you Gina. So I don't um, pre-fold them because I have an assistant. So for those of you that don't have an assistant, I would highly recommend pre-folding so that way it's really easy and you just go, go, go. But even if you don't pre-fold, you still save a lot of time because you're not having to do multiple sections. Right? And then if you don't want to get close to the root here, you don't have to. You can do it in a more of like a V formation. But with her, I'm just gonna, I'm just more showing you guys the foiling technique and not necessarily a cover technique. So I'm just gonna go close to the root. Okay, and you're gonna do it one more time. Let me show you guys. Bottom left corner, top right corner, and then just shape it into a moon shaped section. I mean foil and place it gracefully right on the root and then go ahead and just fold this one like so 
and voila, super easy peasy. And I'm not kidding, I literally use this almost on like more than half of my clients because this technique is just so fast and so easy and you can really create this, the results that you want with the type of uh, highlights that you're taking. All right, so let me show you guys one more time. I'm gonna take a moon shape section. Right? And obviously you can take these highlights and go really pack them on back to back to back to back if you want uh, to get have a lot of brightness um, with her. I'm just showing you guys the technique. So obviously I'm skipping a pretty large section, but you can skip a pretty large section if you want to create lots of dimension and depth and just have a little bit of brightness in the back. Um, so completely up to you. And I want you guys to take in all these techniques and the folding of the foils and make it your own with the techniques and the blonding that you want. This is not like one way shop. Completely, you can completely redo it and have it your own way, right? So let me show you guys one more time. What I would do is I would take my foil, I mean my highlights, and again, I'm gonna take a little bit of a chunk here around the edges, and then baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light, baby light, and then a little bit more chunk here and fold her on the other side. So you guys could see that. she's having a little bit more brightness around closer to the face and more depth and dimension towards the, the back. Uh, someone said here, uh, any tips on slip and foils? I would recommend an embossed texture foil in general. Um, I find that when there's a, a little bit of texture to them, it does it helps a lot with the slip. I never get slipped with these foils. Um, so yeah, and also, uh, tension. I think tension is really key. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. So when you're applying the foil, make sure that you apply the tension and you, I'm really holding that highlight very close to the shape of her head and having creating that tension. So that way the slip won't, the foil won't slip and have that tension and then apply your lightener. And the minute you apply the lightener and have a pretty good build up a product on there, then you can let it go because it's not going to have any of that slip anymore. So you guys can't get embossed textured foils, then at least make sure that you have the right tension. I think in general with the, these type of folding techniques, um, you want to have tension so the foil doesn't slip. And in general, especially if you're trying to get really close to the roof. People are loving the folding techniques, the yes. baby light and bolt pieces combined. Yes. That's genius. I love that. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you can either apply glue and then apply it uh, together or just take that um, foil and then apply it underneath after you apply. So there's not a right or wrong way, but I normally will glue it and then apply it together so I'm, I'm done and I have to keep going back and forth, back and forth. All right, people are saying they can watch this all day. Yes, I love it. All right. Okay, now the last foil on top, it obviously is not a moon shape section, okay? So what you're gonna do is, I call this my UFO shape section. I don't know where these names come from. This name has really <laughs> been here for like years to come. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your foil, you're gonna bend it halfway like that and create a little tent. And then you're gonna take the top and then you're gonna fold the top. So it kind of looks like a little UFO. I don't know where I got that from, but it's been there. It works. Right. And then that way you can go gracefully against from one end to the other on top. Now, if it's a little bit more longer and you need to widen your foil, all you do is just fold it a little bit more and then you can go gracefully on the top like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish this one off really quick so you guys can see what I mean. I'm gonna just take my highlight, nothing exciting about that. But you got your UFO prepared. You are gonna apply your glue. And then that way it can go perfectly against Perfectly against 
the root of the hair like that. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna go ahead and just apply my lightener. Again, I'm using uh, Draco Blonde Life Powder Lightener, which is uh, volume 10. Again, let me show you. You're gonna bend this side, and you're gonna bend this side. Right, so this creates a little tent. Bend the top, and then just go ahead and fold it right over me, like that, like that. All right, so that is my techniques for the back. Now let me show you three more techniques for the front. Right, so we're gonna work on another doll hen. Do you have a name for her? No, I just met her today. <laughs> <laughs> she was blonde, and then I colored her down, so. You guys can see the color a little bit more dramatic, but I don't think you'll be able to see the finish result anyways because it's not necessarily a technique. So again, I'm always gonna section for the most part the same way. I'm gonna do zone one, section that. Okay, then I'm gonna take my comb and then I'm gonna pivot it. And then take it from ear to ear, bottom of the crown. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. You can use the other side as your guide so all the sections are nice and aligned. So these techniques, you really, you guys can really utilize them behind the chair right away, especially when we come back after quarantine, everyone's gonna need their hair done. So the front is where you're probably gonna be using a lot and then zone four as well. Zone three, I feel like we're gonna be leaving out a lot because it's not necessarily like a, a must need to, um, color right there because it can just add a little bit of depth and dimension. All right, so, for this side, we'll go ahead and start on this side. What I would normally do is I would work on zone one first, and I like to work on zone one first for the most part whenever I'm creating any type of highlighting technique because the hair is more, um, it's a little bit more, I guess, not necessarily damaged, but um, the integrity of the hair is not so strong because we touch the hair, we add a lot more heat, we just focus more towards the front of what we see, right? So it has a little bit more, uh, less of integrity. So I like to start in the front with a lower developer so I'm not hurting the integrity of the hair even more. And I would do either a highlighter or a baby weave and slice to slice. This is a totally different technique, but um, I would just focus on the front first and then start on zone two after. But this is just regular highlighting, so there's nothing exciting about this technique. But we're gonna focus more on my folding foils, okay? So then we have zone two, right? So normally you would either section the side into two sections like this, um, so that we can do this side and this side. So this is um, one of my uh, techniques that I call that it's just a diagonal shape to folding technique. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a diagonal back section like this. You're gonna put this out of the way, okay? You're gonna take your highlights, whatever it is that you want, slices, baby lights, and you can probably fit a full foil here, but as you move towards the top, it's gonna get longer, and you're not gonna be able to fit a full slice, a full foil from one end to the other, right? So let's go ahead and show you guys this on right here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your highlights, and then you're gonna take your foil, so let me show you. If you put it from one end to the other, it, it obviously does not fit. There's still room left, and you're not gonna be able to take this full section as, um, as one section. So you're gonna take your rat tail comb, and then put it right here on a corner. You're gonna angle and fold that corner, and this will be able to stretch that foil a little bit longer, so you can go from one end to the other like this. You guys see that? Apply your lightener, 
And again, you don't have to go straight to the root. You can apply in a teardrop formation or you can go straight to the root wherever look you're going for. And then you're gonna, how you're gonna fold this is you're gonna fold this in half. Then you're gonna fold it over the top, that slice that you did, section. And then you're gonna fold that towards the bottom like that. And then fold this section right here. So you see you're folding every corner so it doesn't slip and has a really nice, strong um, non-slippage performance. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's saying that way of folding is a game changer. Good, I'm glad you guys love that. Now I'm gonna show you guys another way of folding. How many minutes do we have? Four minutes, Four okay. Minutes. <laughs> All right, so when you're doing a partial, this is also another way I like to fold, and this is actually my first time showing you guys this, and I'm kind of excited about this because I found out this way of folding, and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't think about it earlier. So same thing, you're gonna do the, um, the uh, zone one, baby lights, whatever it is that you wanna do for around the face, for that face framing. And then you're gonna take a, a deformation shape, like this, okay? You're gonna clip this out of the way. And then you're gonna take the hair from underneath and then go all the way underneath from here. Again, this is like a partial, we're working on zone two. You're gonna clip this out of the way. And the reason why you're taking it from underneath is because that way when she wears her hair up, she'll be able to see all those beautiful baby lights, right? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it into a V for nation. So this is a V for the front, like this. And you're gonna put it right underneath the shape of the head. So grace, it goes gracefully against the shape. You're gonna apply your lightener. Okay, then you're gonna apply another foil underneath. And that way you can go from one area to the other. And also what I love about this folding method is that this folding diagonal back is pushing the hair forward and this diagonal forward is pushing the hair uh, back. So you know, you have that guarantee that when you're doing a partial that you'll have some highlights towards the front and then some highlights towards the back. All right? And then you're going to just fold it how you sectioned it. And then just fold this like so. Voila. Okay? And then my last section is called the arrow shape. So this is gonna actually be taking zone one and zone two. So for those of you that are in a huge hurry and they want just a quick partial or something around the face, but they don't only want it around the face, they want something towards the back, this is gonna be the technique for you and it's called my arrow shape technique, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take zone one and zone two and take a full horizontal section like this. Okay, now you're gonna take your foil and you're gonna just fold one half and then fold the other half and it looks like a little arrow or a tack. Okay, and then what you're gonna do and what I mean by zone one is zone two that you can take both at the same time is what I love about this technique is that you can take a pretty thick section but then you can go around the hairline for that money piece and like grab that section for that thickness, for that brightness around the face. And then go ahead and take your baby lights or whatever it is that you're gonna wanna be doing, right? And then you're gonna take your arrow and where it's pointing, you're gonna place it gracefully right underneath. Tension is key. And then look, you guys can do zone one and zone two all at the same time. So much knowledge. We can't even fit it in like this little time, right? Yeah, so these techniques, I'm actually gonna go really in depth on my next two lives. So stay tuned for more info on that. And then, yeah, so basically we're done with that. Just take these folding oils. I have ways of folding. So 
the Richard. We're waiting for I Richard. I'm waiting for Richard. I hope you guys enjoy these techniques because it took me literally hours, if not days, on thinking about how to shape these foils and how to make them work. Hi, Richard. Hey, Larissa. How are you? I miss you so much. I miss you more. <laughs> How's everything? Oh, everything's going, you know? Well, We're all moving. You. We're surviving. We're living. Absolutely. Your positive energy is like flowing through the camera. Thank I've, you. I've got to say, firstly, I miss you. Yes. Secondly, that session was incredible. I've never seen foils folded in so many different ways. And I think it's so clever, but I've never seen it before. Is this something that you've created or something that you've seen and adapted in your own personal way? Thank you, Richard. Um, all of these techniques I have created myself. So I literally spend hours, if not days. Last week I spent nine hours consecutively in one day just of thinking of ways to fold and how to make our lives easier, right? And so it's just kind of having that brainstorming and just thinking of ways to like fold, you know? I think we get so complex in like just the same way of folding that we kind of lose that inspiration. And, and I'm here to like re-inspire and re, you know, Make, make everyone just better and greater. You know? you know what you do? You, you, you've got a really good way of making something look so simple. And I, I've worked with you for a couple of years now. And what I love about your work, it's um, minimal effort, maximum impact, right? And it's so important to have that in the salon because like yourself, you're so busy in the salon. You've got to squeeze every client in. Do you exactly. feel like these techniques save you a lot of time in the salon? Absolutely. All of my techniques and it's like, you know, before quarantine, I feel like I was kind of known for quick application with powerful results. And now more than ever, I'm here to educate and come up with even more different techniques to do the same. So that way, when we come out of quarantine and we're super busy behind the chair, not just for the busy stylist, the stylist but for all the clients are going to want to be coming in. If you're not that busy, you're going to be busy. So you can really take in all of these techniques and um, use them right behind the chair right away. Absolutely. Now, I know you work for Joyka, obviously. You're the brand ambassador, Joyka's brand ambassador. And Joyka is all about joyful hair, healthy hair. Do you prep the hair with anything before you put any color in it just to, I guess, protect it? Absolutely. And that's what I love about Joyka is that they are the, health, the company of healthy hair. And I think every artist believes in that as well. And I always prep, like I mentioned earlier, with Joy Beautify Damage Pro One. It's gonna make the hair five times stronger, maintain right. the 90% uh, color vibrancy, decrease 80% breakage. And it's just like the most incredible bond builder that all you do is spray and go. And then I finish off with Pro Two. Once they're done, uh, I'm gonna wash them out and then I apply Pro Two for five minutes and that's gonna restrain and rebuild. It's kind of like mom and dad, they go together. Brilliant, so it's like a Pro One, Pro Two. I get that, that's exactly. amazing. Um, another question for you: uh, How how do you keep um, so do you how do you keep up with the ever changing demands of fashion? What inspires you? Where do you look for inspiration in terms of colors, color placement, color tones? Well, you know, like I was speaking earlier, right now is a time where we actually have time on our hands to go walk around and really explore nature. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go; just don't stop and look. And there's so much beautiful colors and just dimensions around us and textures. And I get my inspiration from the earth. The earth is the best inspiration, especially during spring. Right now is the time, like I was saying earlier, go for a walk and then just stop and look around and you'll be surprised how much inspiration is really around you. Absolutely. Now, you're not just a, a global educator. You're not just a brand ambassador. You also own a salon and you're a team leader. How do you juggle all that? And how is it going to look like when you get back to the salon? Uh, well, I have a really fun surprise for everyone that I don't want to mention yet. Okay. But how you juggle is just like you, when you really love what you do, I don't necessarily believe in like, um, like you have to have like st uh, standards, I guess, or like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, balance. I don't really find balance in life because my balance is just doing what I love. And so I love to travel, I love to educate, I love to be behind the chair, I love to be a mentor. So for me, that's my balance, is just being happy and finding what I love. So 
I just been doing it and I love it and I'm not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> Absolutely. You should have because we all love you. We all love watching you and we love your work. So on behalf of everybody, and thank you, Georgia, everybody. Larissa, thank you so much for sharing that power folding foil techniques. It was incredible. Thank you. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And again, if you want to donate uh, to PBA Charity, it's probeauty.org slash carefest is the place to go. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys awesome. later. Awesome. See you later. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. You too, babe. Bye. Well, that was incredible. Larissa Love, Joyco's brand ambassador. What a great session to be able to learn different ways of foiling. I really and thoroughly enjoyed that. Guys, if you've just tuned in, we are almost at the end, but we have got one more incredible artist that's coming up next. He's based in Canada, and he's going to be sharing some really incredible techniques with you to inspire you today. Hairdressers United has been all about supporting you, the hairdresser at home, to educate, to inspire, to motivate you during this season. In addition to that, we're trying and attempting to break the Guinness World Record by having the longest online education stream than anyone else ever. So we're all in this together and we're going to try our best to break the Guinness Book of Records. Thirdly, we are also raising money to help those who have been, I guess, uh, you know, without a job that are struggling financially. The cause behind today has been great because, you know, Henkel has already donated an astounding 2 million euros to a few different COVID-19 related foundations. Henkel North America has announced that the company will donate $200,000 to the Beauty Association to the Professional Beauty Association. In addition, they are giving 100,000 euros to the charity, which receives the most votes from you today. Professional Beauty Association, if you wanna vote, if you wanna donate there, go to probeauty.org forward slash hairfest. Every dollar counts. Now, let's go to our last and most incredible artist. His name is Samad Najem, or at Hair by Samad. He's based in Canada. He has uh, over 500 Instagram followers. He's Schwarzkopf's digital artistic team member. He is famous for his color transformations in some of his videos that have been seen by millions of people around the world. Today, he will be sharing some hand painted balayage techniques. And I hear he speaks Arabic, so him and I might speak a little bit Arabic next. Welcome, please, Samad Najem. So this is not a mannequin, this is actually uh, a wig. So, you guys love the shape. Who wants this hair? So I'm gonna be uh, showing you the technique and how I created this. Um, okay, so, so this is why I created. Do you guys love this? So what I get, what I'm gonna do is flip. So this is the back of the wig. This is actually a wig, it's not a mannequin, again. And this is the front. So, I did left, uh, I did leave the sides and the front to show you guys how I create my signature blended balayage. And we're gonna be hand painting. So, first of all, I'm gonna wear my gloves. I love some pink. <laughs> Okay, so, and I did mix a developer and lightener. Uh, this is one to one and a half. And again, I'm hand painting, so I like my lightener to be kind of thick. You, you guys can see, right, how thick it is. So, okay, uh, we're gonna start with the sides, with the side first. Can you guys see well? Okay, 
So this is the size. So I'm gonna take my first section very thin because this is kind of like on the side and I want to take all the fine hair around um, you know like her side because we all have this kind of fine thin um, hair around the side so what I'm gonna do and if you guys know that that the front is thinner than the bottom so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tease a bit so I'm gonna be teasing the back first and then so from the back I went a little bit like down like always almost to like um, three quarter of the length and then here I'm not gonna go that far okay because I I want her um, front piece to be lighter so I'm gonna go higher than why when I did from the first one so see like it's kind of all even and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna so this is the lightener no 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 so you gotta clean your brush first so clean your brush. So just a little bit lightener. So I'm gonna start with the front first. Okay. Then I'm gonna go upwards here. Then I'm gonna take my um, it's like a, my and just paint the whole thing and if you guys have any board it's fine um, this is uh, to be honest it's a little bit small because I I am home everything I have is all in the salon so I cannot go to the salon so here we just painted the front we leave here okay no paint and whatsoever just go as as like just you have to feather through and I'm gonna bring it closer so that you guys can and I'm sorry I have no one to film with me here I'm gonna go a little bit lower and do not be cheap on the product so you have to put a lot of product and saturate the hair okay so now I'm done, so I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put it on a foil, just like that. And then another one right here. And then the next one. So if you notice here, I have like a triangle. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weave and leave that and take this again then I'm gonna do the same thing do not tease the front again so where I am right now is right here so if you guys cannot tell because she doesn't have a nose or eyes so it's right here okay and we want this to be nice and blonde and kind of thick so no teasing here okay do not tease here please so here again, I'm gonna tease that. And then here, so you see me here, I tease. So right now I want more blonde, so it's kinda from the middle, not from here. So from the middle, I teased. Here, not from the middle, okay? More like, I don't know, like just from here, to be honest, just to take the the breakage you know if your client has breakage if your client has a lot of thin pieces to be honest personally I do not like to um, like paint that if, if she has thinner pieces or you know her hair is like kind of very like dry so it's better to leave that alone it's better than to um, lighten the hair and then it looks like kind of breakage it looks like you know like very damaged so it's better to leave that alone so if you notice now my slice is all even. You guys see it's all even. So you need to secure your teeth. Your teeth cannot come 
uh, down, okay? It's either with the comb or if you have, you know, everyone has a clip. So just clip that just to be safe. And again, I, I don't have too much product on my brush first. So we're gonna start from here again, paint, paint, paint. So again, what I'm using is um, the lightener is Agora Vibrance. Uh, no, sorry, it's Agora, uh, it's Schwarzkopf Agora uh, Vario Extra Plus with 20 vol, one to one and a half, because I like my lightener to be thick, right? And again, I do prefer the lightener to be thick so that I don't have like a runnier, you know, lightener. And... So again, I'm gonna go here, just like kind of create as a as V, right? And then feather that. You guys, I want I want you guys to see it really well. I want I don't, I don't want you to um, waste any time. And again, when you come to the bottom of the hair, I want you to put a lot of product again, because we want that, um, we want the, the bottom to become really light, lighter than anything else, right, in the hair. Um, so a lot of product here. You guys can see how clean it is, right? I, I'm gonna focus here. So you guys see how clean it is, right? You see, you guys see very clean and to be honest you can just throw it on the top of the other foil and then put more product and then put another foil very gentle don't do don't do that because uh, what, what will happen is we create a pattern. We created lines, we created feather. When you do that, it's gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be messy. Or um, your pattern. So here are the weaves, right? We, we took the weaves. So why did I take the weaves? Because I wanna go really high with my lightener to create that, um, like, um, like, to create that dimension. So you see like how her hair is kinda thinner on, on the front? Leave that alone. We tease that, and then a tiny bit on the front. Here we go. And to be honest, when you create highlights, like, you know, when you weave, You don't have to feather. I mean, you don't have to hand paint. You can just put your foil on top and then just in the bottom and then just go right from your foil. And then here again, so I want to build bridges and then feather through those bridges. So I'm going to create two bridges and I'm going to tell you how. Let's come closer. Yes. Okay. Can everyone see me? So. Not the whole highlight. Okay. Uh, just a bit on the front. I'm going to leave that alone. And then another one right between this one. and then feather everything. Make sure your foil here is clean, okay? You can make this, you can bring this higher and then clean the foil. And then, so I'm done with this side. And I'm gonna show you the back again, okay? This is the back I, I did today. How is this, guys? You like it? Tell me. 
Are you in love with this or what? And of course, this color on a natural light, it looks good. Today here is 10, uh, it's 10 p.m. So everything is, uh, this is not natural light. That's why you can see the shadow, I'm sorry. But this is a little bit cooler than what it looks like uh, on, on a camera. So I'm gonna turn on this side, the other side. This is the other side. And again, I'm gonna do exactly the same what I did with the other side. So you just take at an angle. Okay guys, so same thing. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna leave the front. This is again, this is quite a like, it's like here, the temple. It's like here, okay? I'm gonna leave that piece alone for now. And then tease that. Tease that and then secure your teeth. The, the teeth cannot come uh, lower because if it comes lower, it's gonna be just mess. Like it's gonna be very messy. So again, this is the front. I'm not gonna tease it as, as, as the back. So just a tiny bit on the front. Here. And then I want to be, I want to have even, like even slice. This is an even slice all over from, it's like from here to here. Is all even sliced. If you if you have usually if you tease all at once, what's gonna happen uh, here on the front is gonna look thinner. Okay, okay. But when you do balayage, you don't want to uh, you have like more blonde. Uh, no, I see less blonde, more blonde in the back. I'm gonna show you an example. So I created this uh, uh, last week, okay? And if you can see here on the front, I have more highlight. You see here, the sides. You guys see the side, right? It's more, and when, when, you, when I flip her hair, you, you guys can see that. Like from here, she has more highlight. You guys see that, right? And same thing in the bottom kind of high and then the second one is lower so when you start your balayage and when you start from the bottom it has to come high and then you start lower you guys see that see here is higher and same from all her side like it's all the way around and then of course this is her money piece and it's kind of high and this is the highest point you guys see right this is the highest point and again, I flipped her, and then this is how she look like right now. You guys see that, right? Gonna, and you can see she has more highlight on the front. Okay, let's get back to this one. So same thing, secure your foil, uh, I mean secure your teeth, either with the comb or, because sometimes comb does not stay like that, right? It's gonna fall. So better is just to do the clip here. This is kind of low, so I'm on a high, so just secure your teeth, okay? You don't want your teeth to come down. And again, this is the lightener, not too much product. Here, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna start from the front. Okay, I'm gonna start with the front, and then come down, and then not too high on the back because I like this this part to be dark, okay? For dimension. And then feather through. Then, you know, you can just see if you... The, that doesn't need too much, to be honest. But we can just focus on the front pieces because we want to be blonde there, right? Everyone wants to be blonde there. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring my board. Then, on the bottom, because I like to have solid look, okay? Solid, solid look. And then feather that. Feather that. Don't be scared with the feather. The more you feather, the better it is. Okay, we're gonna put more lightener here. 
I like lightener. I love lightener. I love product. So I put so much product on the hair. Okay, now another foil right here. So if you guys are asking why I, I am not um, securing my foil, like, you know, so what happened with this wig? So this wig arrived to me level nine. Yeah, so this wig arrived level nine and I'm gonna tell you what I did with it. So that's why now with the lightener, I just, you know, like whatever you put is gonna come back to level nine and maybe 10. So that's what, uh, what is happening. So I don't have to skew my foils because the color is just gonna lift. So again, take that. See, this is all the teas. This is all clean. So guys, again, this is very clean teas, okay? You know, like you wonder when you do uh, teasing and then when you are foiling, the teas comes down to the foil and then you kind of like, you know, you put product on it or lightener here. It's not good because that, so if I put product here, it's not gonna go level nine. It's gonna go level seven or six, orangey, right? So that's gonna clash with the color you're creating again, you know, no, no, no. So here again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna weave. So one, two, three weaves. Yeah, three weaves. Am I saying, saying it right? Weaves. <laughs> Weaves. So English is not my uh, first language. So I, uh, I speak two languages and then my English is my third language. So please give me a break. Okay, so here we go again. Do not tease this. This is the front. So this part is this here, okay? Is where your V line is. I have a big, big V line here. Uh, so this is the, 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 the V line. Where right here, this is that, okay? Leave this alone because it's always, it's thinner. So here we go, tease that. We're gonna tease that. Secure the tease. Secure the tease and then you guys see, I'm just gonna tease a tiny, tiny bit on the front line, like the, the front piece. Because that front piece, it was very, very thin again, right? We do not wanna tease it too much. So, so again, see how even is my slides is. It's very, very even, okay? Okay, so, same thing again. Not too much product. We're gonna start right from the front. Right from the front. Then we're gonna do a V, just like a V, right? Like just think of V. Just think of V, guys. So I'm gonna bring my board and a lot of product again. And you can always lift here and see how you did, right? And sometimes you see like there is product here and there is no product here. And that's no, no, you have to be careful. And um, you know, if uh, from the top it looks great, the bottom has to look great as well. You don't want your client to come back and then she will say, oh, I have a dot here and then there is orange, right? No, no, no. <laughs> because it, do, it does happen with me. You know, everyone, everyone, we all have those kind of client or us, right? Nothing is perfect. We cannot create perfect things every single day, right? We do make mistakes, we fix them. And I just want you to know that no one no one is perfect. We all make mistakes, but we learn from them, okay? 
And that's what happened when I started doing hair is I was so impatient that, you know, I learned something and then uh, I want to go and try it and do it. And then that thing, um, it, like it turns to something that I never expect. And then I, I will just be like mad about it or, you know, and then in time you learn that you, we make mistakes. We just have to practice and, 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 you know, do them again and again and again until we uh, be perfect uh, uh, with those, with, with whatever, you know, like hair or anything, anything in life. Patient is the key. And again, more product. Because I like product, <laughs> especially lighteners. Or if you call the bleach, the same thing. Okay. So, gonna put the foil here. Mm -mm. Get his hair here. Just gonna go higher with it. Away from her face, because again, this is a human, right? So if you're uh, dealing with a client, the foil has to be um, away from her face. So this is the slice that I did, the weave. So again, we're gonna tease those two really high and then the front piece. So again, I have even, right? See how even they are. So you don't have to hand paint, you can just go directly with the foil. You can just go all the way here. And then you, you, we're gonna create bridges again. And then between those bridges, we're gonna feather, okay? Feather, feather, feather. Feather here. And then you're just gonna go through that. Then again, make sure to clean your foil. You don't want that lightener to go here. No, no, okay. So we are now done from the sides. So now I wanna show you again the back because I'm so happy of how it turned out, to be honest. You guys see the dimension and everything. And my model, she has an ama she has amazing hair texture, if you know that. You see that, look at that, ah, yes. Okay, I live for these colors. So now this is the most, most, most important thing uh, when you are doing a balayage is the front and the, the top because your client sees everything there. So if you do a mistake here, here, back is fine. But when it comes to the front, no, you have to be perfect there. You know, there's no perfect, but here, when your clients see your hair, you have to be perfect there. And I'm actually sweating, I don't know why. Okay. So. This is the front and this is her top. So here, this is her bangs. This is her nose. So her nose is here, <laughs> okay? So what I'm gonna do, a thin, thin, thin. Because this is a wig, you guys see, this is very, like, is you know, like she has a lot of breakage. It's not a breakage, just because she is a wig. She's awake. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so. Okay, so this is the front. This is, I'm gonna create the money piece. Okay guys, the money piece is kinda important. So, so you see her hair is not even, which is not my fault, or it's just the wig is like that because she has so much breakage. Look at that, look at that. This is the, um, what they call it? The, this is the lace wig, right? It's, so the laces, they have to enter the hair and then sew it there and then 
this is the end of the hair and then this is the so tease here slightly a bit not too much and then go that much and you guys can see all those pieces that we don't want to do this is all the front to be honest i do want to do that because it's quite a lot of hair to not do right so again we have to be very careful here i'm gonna make it closer okay Okay, the money piece is the money piece and the key. And I want you guys to practice that. Practice, practice, practice. A million times, a million times to, 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 to really get it. So, um, I can do that. So again, with your brush. So, sides. Just feather through. Feather the whole thing. You guys see that, right? You guys see that? 